a young man and a girl were sitting on the beach. The young man asked the girl, addressing her as a hero, whether it was true that her name was Alice, then holding her shoulder, and holding a sword in her hand, the girl Alice wanted to know what the young man was going to do with her. In front of her was Merlin Lucifer, who was the king of demons and the best monarch, so he introduced himself to Alice and then wanted to declare. Alice thought to herself that Lucifer wanted to announce her execution and she remembered her whole life. Since childhood, Alice followed the instructions of her teacher, who was known as the master of the blade. It was because of him that she began to study magic and master combat skills. When she turned 17, she, as the 233rd candidate for heroes, threw mithril armor on her shoulders, picked up her sacred sword and had to kill the demon king. But right now the girl has been captured by this very demon king. She will have to give her all to escape from him. Alice thought, clutching her sword, turning to the icy void, the blade that pierces everything. Her sword suddenly transformed. It surprised Lucifer. The girl rushed to attack him with her ice sword, but he stopped the sword with only one finger. Taking the girl by the chin, he gently whispered to her that from that moment on, her body belonged to him alone. The palace of the first demon king, the main hall. Lucifer was sitting on his throne and after much thought fell asleep right on the throne in a sitting position. A girl with pink hair came up to him and called her brother Merlin. Looking at what a cute face her sleeping brother had, she came up with an idea, and she decided to move even closer to him. It was such a rarity for a girl when Merlin's brother sleeps so well that it's a sin not to take advantage of such an opportunity. She thought and reached out to the sleeping face of the demon king. Then someone shouted about the goddess of light, the holy army that was invincible. Lord Lucifer, the demon king, was called to come out and accept his death. Wishing health to the goddess of light, the army of knights stood at the palace. The sister was very angry, because these scum of the holy sea were in the palace at the most inopportune time. When the Holy See enters the battlefield, the grass stops growing. Until the Demon King dies, they will not stop their sacred campaign. They will give all their hearts in the name of the Goddess of Light. All these were the words of the army that stood near the palace. The sister, however, decided that it was not worth her attention, decided to continue from where she left off. But then a young man's finger touched her lips, and he asked what the girl was doing. Turning to brother Merlin, the sister explained that she just wanted to, but without finishing, the brother asked her to beat a little more seriously, because the people of the Holy See were already here, as Merlin heard. The girl, sulking, said that a little more and she would have kissed him for sure, but the young man, smiling, hugged her and calling her stupid, asked her to remember that there were no people in this world who could just sneak up on him like that. The girl hugged Merlin's brother and said that the young man was the best of all. A holy army at the gates of the demon king's palace wanted to fight Lucifer again. The girl began to get angry and, taking out her weapon, tried to figure out when these soldiers from the Holy See would finish, because they prevented her from enjoying spending time with her brother Merlin. She asked Merlin to wait for her here, because she would go kill all these church fanatics and come back to him. Merlin, hugging his sister, asked her not to waste her nerves on these cockroaches. He decided that he would have to personally bury the army, since they themselves are getting into trouble. So much the better for him. So today may be the last day of his tenure as the Demon King. Asking the girl to follow him, he went to battle and she, happily bouncing, ran after the Demon King. Coming out of his domain, he saw a battle between humans and monsters. It seemed like a contented hot battle to him. Looking at this battle, the girl dreamed of completely different things, talking about it out loud. Then Merlin's gaze fell on the girl with the sword, and he was surprised to see her and wondered if the girl was from this generation of heroes. As he continued to admire the girl, he thought that she looked very weak. Although she held a sword in her hands that smashed monsters with one blow, others thought that Lady Hero was very strong and the way she beheaded this monster with her sword was very impressive. People said that they were ready to follow the lady hero anywhere. They were ready to enter any battle with her. At that moment, a monster burst out of the ground and the guys were scared. Using an ice spear, the hero attacked the monster and after winning asked the guys to be more careful if they did not want to die on the battlefield. Looking at her, those believed that Mrs. Alice seemed both strong and gentle and beautiful at the same time. She was just the perfect girl in everything. Alice Claudia is the 233rd of the generation of heroes. She was announcing here and now the beginning of a holy campaign against the demon king, Merlin Lucifer III. Everyone, running at the monsters, shouted that it was for the lady of the hero. There was a fierce battle of monsters against people. Watching the battle from afar, the lord sitting on the throne believed that these useless soldiers from the vanguard came from the common people. How dare they drag the hero's mistress back so that she could save them. 
It was a crime that deserved severe punishment. Addressing the bishop, his subordinate asked him not to be angry. After all, these outcasts from the vanguard are just useless cannon fodder. After all, they have not yet used their main trump card, the pride of the Holy See. These peasants are just expendable. When most of them die, their main holy army will join the battle, and after that they will take all the fruits of victory for themselves. But the subordinate was worried about whether the lady hero could really become a worthy opponent to Lucifer. The bishop asked the subordinate not to worry about this. Even if the lady hero cannot become a worthy opponent to Lucifer III, then he will have another option. In the end, their secret weapon was located in the sky. Lady hero saw that the monsters had surrounded the vanguard, it was bad and then looking up, the bishop said that it was an elaborate siege fortress that the Holy See had been preparing for hundreds of years. It had unprecedented power. It was the largest fortress on the mainland. She is the most beautiful, the most amazing weapon. The Holy See presented its supreme masterpiece. This fortress has gathered all the knowledge of countless sages. The hero looked up and saw a terrible monster floating across the sky. And at that moment the bishop was telling everyone that they should have been happy. After all, they will witness the triumph of the first powerful weapon in the history of the Holy See. Here and now, the hero saw that the old man had gone mad. Because people from the vanguard, namely the common people, could also die from the blow that the bishop was going to inflict on the enemy. It was already too late, and the hero didn't have time to do anything. Merlin, looking at all this, thought of the bishop as a very bad person. There was an explosion. The bishop, sitting on his throne, spoke of making everyone tremble under the iron hooves of the crown of their holy see, addressing Lucifer III. In the name of the goddess of light, they had to send all the monsters to hell. The hero stood up and saw Lucifer, as well as the fact that the rest of the people did not die. Addressing the scum, the demon king asked to meet him, because he arrived here in person. The bishop, seeing this, shouted that such a thing was not possible. The power of the crown of the holy see is simply unimaginable. Absolutely nothing can block it. The subordinate informed his eminence that the demon king was very strong and asked what the proposals for retreat would be. The bishop commanded not to be afraid, because they did not know what fear was. The body of the white whale is made of various rare materials and all the materials have even been blessed and soaked in the blood of the goddess of light. This is the most perfect creation of the holy see. It is the most powerful siege fortress on the entire continent. Even the strongest saint attacks won't be able to damage the saint whale's body. Based on this, Lucifer logically simply could not resist the attacks of the white whale. The bishop commanded the holy white whale to crush Lucifer III. Merlin thought it was a joke, because in front of him was just a weakling. But since the army spent so much effort on such a detailed story, he decided to thank the bishop a little. The young man considered the whale really too weak to defeat this fish that was right in front of him. He only had to draw his blade. After cutting the whale in half, all the girls looked at Merlin Lucifer III in amazement. All the people, monsters, including the bishop were surprised and even shocked by what Merlin had done. The whale, cut in two, fell to the ground, and Merlin sheathed his sword again. The sister rejoiced at brother Merlin, saying that he was the strongest. The hero was surprised by the guy. Smiling, Lucifer wanted to take care of the garbage. Addressing the lords of the Holy See, he, as the first demon king Lucifer, grants them true death in his name. The bishop turned to Mrs. Hero, asking the girl to save them all, because if she did not come to their aid, they would all die. The girl knew that they were right, because she was a hero. She was the only one who could stop the demon king. Taking her sword, she ran at the young man, in the name of the fallen on this battlefield. Alice was ready to condemn the demon king here and now. The young man only smiled and, drawing his sword, attacked everyone who was objectionable to him. The hero was thinking that the guy didn't even pay attention to her. His power was so powerful that it demolished everything in its path, and the hero fell unable to stand it. This was the last battle that marked the final reign of the demon king Merlin, and the story between the unemployed demon king and the hero officially began. Merlin Lucifer, an otherworlder who was forcibly summoned to another world due to the fact that from birth he possessed powerful strength, Merlin became the third owner of the demon king's castle, his proud patron. However, due to the fact that Merlin was born with a curse of the heart, cardiac atrophy, his life is accompanied by a sharp pain in his chest, which is getting stronger and stronger every day. But not everything in this world was bad for him. Merlin has a magical demonic blade, nicknamed Vintion Gallo. This sword provides Merlin with miraculous magic. It consisted in the fact that it increases the lifespan of the carrier as long as he kills powerful enemies. Thus Merlin pacifies the pain of the heart curse, and the stronger the enemy was, the better the effect. That is why Merlin is looking forward to in hopes that one day he will be able to fight with the strongest creatures of this world. 
Merle believed that if he defeated the strongest in this world, he would be able to completely remove his curse. And when that happens, he will be able to finish his tenure as the Demon King. Feeling the pain in his chest, the young man thought that this fat whale was not worth Lucifer pulling his sword out of its scabbard. The pain in his heart only subsided for a couple of seconds. Looking up at the sky, the young man thought that it was finally over and the Demon King's palace no longer needed him. Now it was time for him to look at the outside world. After the great battle, it's time to say goodbye. The girl called Merlin's brother and then he called her a stupid girl again, asked why she was so sad. Today was the last day of the Demon King's tenure after Lucifer left. The girl had to take good care of herself. Lilith, without ceasing to shed tears, called Merlin's brother and said that she would feel very lonely. After all, she has always been with her brother Merlin since birth. Lilith asked not to leave and not to leave her alone, shedding tears and looking at her Demon King. The young man, looking at her tenderly, said that even though Lilith had grown up, she still continued to flirt and be naughty. Holding his heart, the Demon King said that if he stayed in this place, sooner or later he would die from his heart curse. Therefore, the young man asked Lilith if she wanted her brother to die. Lilith threw herself into Merlin's arms and screamed that she didn't want Merlin to die, but she also didn't want him to leave her alone. If the next time the brother's heart aches, then he had to kill Lilith so he can continue his life. At that moment, the young man flicked his finger on Lilith's forehead, calling her a stupid girl. Lucifer could not do such a thing with his chosen one. Lilith said again that she didn't care about herself, it was better that way than Merlin would die, leaving her alone. As long as he was around, Lilith was willing to do anything for him. Even if Merlin becomes disabled, she will still take care of him and protect him. My brother said that he also loved Lilith, but he had to leave anyway. This is the only way he can deal with the curse of his heart. As soon as the young man dealt with him, he swore to Lilith that he would return back to her and then they would be together with her forever. Lilith had to believe him, and when that moment came, nothing could separate them. Even death will be weak in front of them. Lilith and Merlin will be together forever. The girl was flattered that her brother loved her. Falling to the ground and covering her mouth with her hand, Lilith thought that brother Merlin was really shameless. He said such words to her so suddenly that he loved her or something like that. In that case, Lilith, of course, could not continue to be naughty, but before Brother Merlin left, she wanted to give him one piece of advice. There are a lot of girls in the outside world who will want to get the attention of Merlin's brother, but the young man should not be tempted by them in any case. Otherwise, and smiling, Lilith said that it would not matter to her how many of them, many or few, she would kill them all and not a single one would remain. She will tear their hair off by the roots and will do many terrible things with them. After hearing all this, Merlin wondered to himself if Lilith had been like this all this time. And after saying goodbye, the young man told Lilith that they would see each other soon. Lucifer walked past and drew attention to the sleeping girl who was a hero and still fainted and lay on the ground. Picking her up, I decided to go on. But then Lilith noticed it and asked what Merlin's brother was doing, she was burning with anger. It was incomprehensible to her how he could be so quickly seduced by some stranger whom he sees for the first time. The young man said that Lilith misunderstood everything. This girl was just a slave for him. Looking at the sun, which was at its zenith and holding the hero on his shoulder, Lucifer thought that he knew too little about the outside world, so this journey would require painstaking efforts. But even in extreme cases, the young man needed a guide to the outside world. Although the girl on his shoulder was weak for a hero, but she had good physical strength and willpower, so he decided that the hero would be useful to him. Lilith was sulking at the guy for not killing the hero, even though he had to do it. The young man reassured Lilith that everything was fine, because he didn't have to do it. He was no longer the demon king. That was all, and wishing her good health, the young man went to the outside world. At the same time, he waved his hand to Lilith and said that he definitely would not fall in love with a hero for anything in his life. So he left. Lilith looked after him and thought only that brother Merlin would definitely come back to her someday. And when that happened, he would definitely fulfill his promise. She remembered Merlin's words and it sounded like a real confession. Brother Merlin really left and said such beautiful words, now she couldn't wait to meet him. Looking at the castle, she realized that she had to justify the trust of Merlin's brother. No wonder the young man confessed to her. Well, until he returns, she decided to study well all the ways a good future wife should behave in order to hit Merlin's brother in the heart. Meanwhile, an unemployed demon king and a hero girl named Alice were taking through the forests. The young man did not know anything about the outside world at all. The hero was lying on his shoulder and sleeping peacefully. So they walked and it was interesting what awaits the heroes on their way and whether they will be able to cope with it. The girl thought to herself whether she lost or not, because from the moment she came down from the mountain, nothing good happened. 
The bishop met her and said that their affairs were completely based on the lady of the hero. The girl heard only a couple of praising suggestions in her address and stupidly believed these people from the Holy See. The girl also thought that she could defeat the demon king, but as a result she did nothing to him. He did not even notice Alice, being with a teacher who told her that spiritual practice is still too weak. The girl did not reach the right level. There are a lot of strong opponents in the outside world, so if you go down the mountain right now, you can face many difficulties. It was only when Alice really disgraced herself that she finally realized that her spiritual practice was really weak. The Demon King saw the ships that were destroyed in front of him and put Alice under a tree. Merlin was thinking about how he could get a whole ship now, while he walked away thinking about the ship. While he was walking around in search of a ship, our heroine began to wake up from the fact that something was dripping on her face. Waking up, the girl saw a demonic wolf in front of her. The wolf was very close to the girl, and she could not have time to escape from him. The demon king came to her aid in time and with one wave of his hand stopped the wolf, asking the beast not to be ugly. Looking at Alice out of the corner of his eye, he informed the wolf that this girl belonged to him and he had no right to eat her. Alice was embarrassed that Merlin had saved her again. Her heart was beating wildly with the realization. After bickering with the wolf, the young man and the beast were already behaving nicely with each other. Lucifer stroked the wolf, and he was pleased and even stuck out his tongue with joy. If you look at his cheerful expression, he didn't look like a villain at all, Merlin thought laughing and stroked the wolf like a dog. Alice, watching this picture, tried to stop her heart and told herself only that there was a demon king in front of her. He only saved her because of his disgusting and dirty intentions. The young man at that moment said goodbye to the wolf, who ran away into the forest. Turning to Alice, Merlin turned to the hero and asked for her name. The girl immediately stood up in a stance, drawing her sword and trying to find out what Merlin wanted from her. The young man began to ask what he needed from her, as she herself thought, what he wanted when he came face to face with such a gorgeous girl. Alice thought that the guy liked her appearance and he wanted to defile her soul calling himself Merlin Lucifer, the former owner of the Demon King's palace and the former magnificent monarch. He wanted only one thing. At that moment, the lady hero used her ice sword and thought that she would never allow such a demon to defile her, and when she tried to attack the young man who stopped her sword with just one finger, she was greatly surprised. Turning to the lovely lady, Merlin wanted only one thing, so that from now on her body belonged only to her. The girl was surprised and had already succumbed to his charms, but caught herself in time and removed his hand from her face. Alice screamed at the demon king not to dare humiliate her. She was a hero and therefore would never bow her head before such an evil and disgusting creature. Merlin, spreading his hands, tried to explain to her that dear Alice, apparently, did not fully understand him. It was not a request or a negotiation, and even more so his plea, it was time for her to accept reality. Merlin kidnapped her. Coming closer to the girl, he informed Alice that he had kidnapped her and hoped that she would serve him well. Dumbfounded, Alice stood leaning against a tree and looked at the demon king in front of her. And to be honest, the young man said that he was quite gentle in such matters, which confused Alice even more. Turning away, she said that if he wanted Alice to be obedient and not resist him, then the young man could not let her know exactly what she needed to do for him. First, Merlin said, he had to check on Alice. For a while, he will have to use Alice's body to do something very unusual and absurd. The girl tried not to let the king get too close. For demons, this kind of activity is quite common and familiar, but for people like Alice, it might seem inhumane. Alice couldn't believe what she had heard from the demon king. She remembered hearing that some demons force human women to get pregnant and use their bodies as a breeding ground for the next generation of demons. Alice was horrified to think that she had never even fallen in love and now she was going to be used as a tool for the continuation of the kind of demons. While she was thinking, the demon king took the girl by the hand and asked her to go with him. Alice broke away and asked the perverted demon king to remove his hands from her. He, who had already lost patience, picked up Alice in his arms and carried her. The young man asked not to blame him for such methods, because the girl herself forced him to do it. The next moment, Alice was already in the boat that the Demon King had found. Now they could begin. Alice asked the Demon King not to approach her, because if he took another step, she would jump into the water. The girl was serious, because she already knew from stories how demons behave. They were in a boat. Alice, taking out her sword, turned to the Demon King and asked him not to think that since he has such power, he can do whatever he pleases. The girl thought he was not the best and if he dared to take even one more step in her direction, she would kill him. 
Seeing the oars lying next to the girl, the hero stepped on one and thereby disarmed Alice. The paddle hit her on the head and she dropped the sword, clutching her head. Merlin, on the other hand, looked at the girl in front of him and thought only about how she could become a hero if she could be so easily disarmed. Alice asked the Demon King why he was so rude, because it was possible to do without it if he couldn't stand to defile her body. Marilyn also asked the girl not to be so stupid, because in his whole life he had seen a bunch of gorgeous girls and she would not be interested in such an unremarkable girl like Alice at all. She asked why he addressed her like that, because she looked good and was still growing. But Merlin asked her not to lie, because she planted some kind of iron thing to make her shapes bigger, and when Merlin carried Alice on his back, it almost killed him. Merlin pointed at her with his finger and asked her next time to put not iron but soft cups for her forms. The effect is the same, but it will be much easier for him and her. Embarrassed, Alice said that it was her mithril armor. Starting to laugh, the demon king was surprised that in order to increase her shape, the girl used mithril armor. If the predecessors of the heroes had found out about this, they would have turned over in their coffins. The girl asked me to stop laughing. Alice asked if he didn't need her to desecrate her body, then why did the demon king kidnap her? The young man pointed to the ship and said that on this ship they would cross the Orkney Strait, then conquer the sea and get to land. Alice thought he was joking, because it was simply impossible. To cross the Strait of Orkney, the Holy Sea needed the strength of several hundred sailors rowing at the same time, and also under the magic of the blessing of the wind, and they did it for one day and night. In addition, they were very lucky, they did not meet enemies on their way. Well, it also became possible because they smeared the warships with dragon excrement. There are a lot of sea monsters in the Orkney Strait. They are invincible creatures in the whole ocean. They have no equal. Even the strongest saints will have a hard time defeating them. Alice told the Demon King, following from the above factors, even if they will replace each other in rowing, they won't be able to get out of the Orkney Strait alive anyway. Moreover, when they encounter these monsters, their physical strength will be exhausted by rowing, so they will not be able to resist them at all and they will easily be eaten. Did the Demon King understand all this? Alice asked him. Merlin, addressing Miss Hero, told the girl that she had misunderstood everything when he said that they would replace each other on rowing. The young man initially told her that he was going to use her body for inhuman purposes, so only Alice will row here, and the young man himself will stand on the edge of karma and enjoy the sea breeze. Alice was shocked by his statement. In three days, it was very strange, they had been sailing for three days, but for some reason the sea monsters still did not attack them. Alice did not understand why this was happening. The sea is a terrible place, and if someone decides to attack prey, then immediately risk dying by running into someone stronger, the demon king replied. Alice couldn't understand what the young man meant. He also said that one big guy had been following them for a long time, so the other weaker sea monsters did not decide to approach. Merlin asked Alice to hold on tight, if the shaking starts and she falls out of the boat, he will not be able to save her, because he does not know how to swim. Alice, surprised by this fact, told Merlin that she heard how he tore up the sea devil with just one hand. The sea devil found his own death, Merlin replied. It was like this, he wanted to get his stock of fresh canned fish, so he lured himself to earth. But on earth it was not difficult for the demon king to deal with him. Here, by the way, Merlin added that the sea monster swimming behind them decided to attack them. Alice, surprised by his calmness, saw a huge splash of water. The young man added that compared to the sea devil, this monster was bigger. The boat flew into the air and then landed on its bottom again, and our heroes landed on it. There was a huge monster in front of them. It was a sea serpent. Alice wondered if this sea serpent was the lord of the Orkney Strait, which swallowed up the Imperial fleet and two holy magicians, and in the whole ocean it had no equal. Although Lucifer was very strong, Alice wondered if he could stand up against the sea lord. Sitting in the boat, the girl asked what they should do now. Lucifer was silent and looked at the sea serpent. Alice thought that even Lucifer was shocked by such a monster and covered her face with her hands in despair. The guy, pointing at the snake-like sea dragon, talked about how ugly he was despite the fact that he had a long and thick neck. But the head still remained small, for Lucifer it was very funny, and he pointed his finger at the snake. Alice shouted to the demon king that they were deciding the question of life and death here, but even in such a situation, he laughed and said such bad things at the top of his voice in front of the snake. He was a sea lord, and addressing Merlin, Alice asked if he had ever heard that his opponent should be respected. At that moment, the snake disappeared from everyone under the water. The boat was rocking again, and Alice was thinking about how they could fight with such a giant snake. 
The young man, holding on to the boat, said that now the snake was forcing him to take extreme measures and apologized for excessive cruelty, taking his sword out of the scabbard. The snake fully showed its true appearance, emerging from the water and ready to attack our heroes. The snake rushed to attack the small boat in which Merlin and Alice were sitting. Merlin drew his blade and was also ready to attack. Getting off with one blow, Merlin removed his sword and pulling the girl asked her not to stand in a stupor, but to row faster, because time was ticking. Alice, pointing at the snake, said that he had not yet, but it was at this moment that she saw that the snake had been defeated. Merlin didn't ask anything else. Then Merlin began to explain that the blood of this monster will attract a bunch of man-eating sharks and if they don't leave, they won't mind eating Alice and Merlin. At the same time, the young man asked the girl if she wanted to become fish food. Looking overboard, Alice took an oar and began to row. Looking at the Demon King, she thought that this guy was strong not only on land, but also in the sea, it was just incredible. If someone like him gets into the human state, he can easily do a bunch of unimaginable things, Alice thought to herself. Alice decided to ask Lucifer why he left the palace of the Demon King. The young man asked not to call him Lucifer anymore. He left the palace, so he was no longer the Demon King and therefore ordered the girl to call him Captain Merlin. There was an awkward pause at that moment. Merlin sat down and asked if the girl understood humor because it was very boring with her. He became the strongest demon in the world and in that world he was no longer equal. Wasn't it logical that he wanted to leave the demon king's palace to find other opponents? The guy thought to himself that he would be too ashamed if Alice found out that the council of demons expelled him and he left because of lack of work. Alice wondered if it was true that he had the power of a saint rank, but the young man replied that he did not know the answer to this question. His strength couldn't be measured using their standard set of rank criteria. If you look at it that way, then Merlin also had to make an incredibly huge effort to gain the power that he currently possesses. Genius is 9% hard work and 1% talent, Alice said, looking at the board Merlin. Merlin even jumped up and asked if the girl really believed in such stupid statements. Asking Alice if she guessed that this was pure nonsense, the guy said that only mediocre and mediocre people like her could believe in this parable. This parable of the ball was invented in order to make people desperately pump out all their efforts and efforts so that they would make at least some contribution to the development of this world. Merlin said that he thought that mediocre people like her had to live a life they liked and do what they could. Then, Alice wondered how she could become stronger than him. The young man took out his sword at the same time and said that of all the demons, only he was able to pull out this demonic sword. That's why he became the successor of the demon king. This is what everyone calls a natural talent and no amount of effort can compensate for it. Then the drooping Alice asked if Merlin could tell her how he could become so strong. Then Merlin remembered his childhood. He was born as a king. Royal blood flowed in his veins and he thought he could live a quiet life. He will only eat and wait for his death, simultaneously having fun with his younger sister every day. However, his mother is the second magnificent monarch. She is known to Alice under the name Lucifer II. In the 197th campaign of the Holy See, his mother died during the battle. At that time, Merlin and his sister could only rely on themselves, because the society of demons lives on the principle of the meat of the weak is the food of the strong. At that time, Merlin decided that he had to protect his sister by any means, so he had to become stronger than everyone. The young man took a sword and killed the king of ancient trolls in the snowy mountains, defeated the head of the minotaur in the deadly forest and even entered the magma to kill fire demons. The young man constantly trained his sword skills. I waved it until it was covered with rust. Every day, the young man found himself on the verge of death countless times. In the end, when he became strong enough, the first thing he did was kill the demons who oppressed him and his sister, and then took the throne of the demon king rightfully belonging to him. At that moment, Merlin realized that he had become invincible. That's the whole story. This is his past an epic poem about the prince's revenge. Alice, analyzing the story of the demon king, said that judging by his story, it is safe to say that he achieved all this thanks to his efforts. The young man said that he did not pin any efforts, he just aspired to his dream of living a life just to eat and wait for his death. It's just that from the moment he was born, he was already the strongest. Then why was this story about the sad past? Did Merlin invent it to make fun of Alice? The girl asked. Merlin did not invent a story. His past was really quite tragic. He had a huge power that he couldn't use, so he wasn't much different from the trash. But soon I realized how to use it and after that I became the strongest in an instant. This can be compared to the fact that he was asleep, and when he woke up he became invincible. Something like waking up, Merlin said. But it still won't reach Alice, he thought. Therefore, she had to row with oars, she was a useless flat-bottomed hero. 
The young man lying down reasoned that as soon as he left the Demon King's palace, he immediately encountered a sea serpent-like demon of the holy rank and the pain from his heart curse softened. It won't be for long, but at least it's something. Of course, leaving the palace was the right decision, Merlin thought. He didn't know if it was a deceptive feeling, but when he was next to this stupid hero, the pain from his heart curse became softer. Having washed ashore, the demon king looked at the land of Bretonia, where he landed with Alice. There were high rocks and white sand everywhere. The demon king asked Alice where they were and didn't he tell her that until they reached the lands of Bretonia, she shouldn't have stopped the boat. Why Merlin did not see any villages, he also asked Alice a question. Alice, getting out of the boat, asked if Merlin himself could not see where they were. The girl barely got out of the boat, because Merlin himself was cooling off all the way, and forced her, the girl, to row the oars alone. At that moment, Merlin approached Alice. To herself, Alice thought about how disgusting and disgusting Merlin was. And inwardly she asked him to wait a little while until she learns the secret ice technique of the teacher. Then she will become the strongest magician of the holy rank. And then she will beat Merlin's face until he turns out a rotten watermelon. The young man approached Alice and asked her to watch her manners. She hadn't realized her position until now, as Merlin understood from her words and reaction. Now Alice is his slave, who does she think she is, since she dared to openly say such things to Merlin. And when she saw how the guy started to raise his hands, she prepared for the worst. But he only patted the girl's cheeks. Alice asked not to mock her, because they really arrived in Brittany, only they did not get to any port. But to the northern coast, Alice said in horror, after the guy tortured her by stretching her cheeks. Merlin thought that, apparently, the girl had done a good job rowing alone. Perhaps he should have rewarded her somehow. Evil Alice sat on the ground and told the demon king that she didn't need his encouragement. In this case, the young man was saying goodbye to the girl. It was very pleasant for him to travel by sea with her. Alice was angry at the demon king and swore that when she got stronger, the first thing she would do would be to take a sword and chop off his head. After walking a couple of meters, Merlin thought about the fact that money was needed to live in a human country. But he, who had lived in the society of demons all his life, did not have a penny in his pocket, because he left the demon world and he had no money at all to exist in the human world. Turning around, the young man looked with burning eyes at Alice. When he carried this hero on his back, he felt that her iron chest lining was nothing but mithril armor that had been passed down from generation to generation by heroes. The inside of this armor should be covered with various runes, which represents magical protection. That is why this armor should be a kind of armor of the highest quality. In other words, it is very valuable. He, the demon king, needed to take the mithril armor from this girl and then he would definitely be able to get a whole bunch of money from her, and he would become rich. At the same time, the demon king imagined how a mountain of gold and boxes of this very gold lay in front of him if he sold the hero's mithril corset. The young man quickly headed back to Alice and began to play the prince. Merlin, addressing the girl as a charming lady, told her that parting with her in this way causes him mental suffering, so he needed her to leave him her most precious thing. Asking with horror what the demon king wanted from her, the girl waited with bated breath. Merlin ordered her to undress. Alice fell off her feet from this order and said that the demon king had previously said that he was not interested in desecrating her body, so why did he want this now? Merlin just said that he changed his mind and went to Alice. The girl asked him not to approach her, and he in turn asked her to be an obedient girl. Hiding behind a rag, she asked to be careful with her, because it was her first time, to which Merlin, holding her mithril corset in his hands, asked what Alice was thinking. And since they were talking about different things, he said that Alice needed to grow up a little, and all he needed from her was a thing that he already held in his hands. Alice was surprised again. The young man, holding the mithril armor of the hero in his hands, said that he certainly had to cost a fortune. And when Merlin left, he talked about a girl who was saving on cups for her forms, that was all, and he said goodbye to her. Perhaps they will meet again if fate brings them together. Alice cursed the demon king with all sorts of words that she only knew, because he only took this thing from her, crying. She hoped that she would never meet Merlin again in this life. At that time, my sister was preparing various potions and learning to be a better wife, while Merlin was walking around the neighborhood in the hope that in the near future he would be able to meet strong and entertaining guys. A year later, Breton, the outskirts of Wells, one of the men was sitting on a tree, and the second was under it and said that the hillbillies had become smarter and decided not to walk this road anymore. Did the boss really think that they would be able to catch someone here? The boss, sitting on a tree, asked not to hurry so much, but just wait patiently. Maybe they'll come across some uncouth impulsive young man. Here the subordinate informed the boss that someone was walking along the road. 
This someone looked very shabby, as if he hadn't eaten for several days. The boss, seeing a young man who seemed familiar to him, said that although the guy seemed to be a beggar, he was actually of great value. At that moment, a piece of paper flew out of his hand, which he had been looking at for a long time. Merlin, leaning on a stick, was thinking about how he wanted to eat, and then a leaf that a young man sitting on a tree had previously held flew at him. On this piece of paper was Merlin himself, and the reward was listed at $5,000 for his head. The young man believed that this was a problem, because after he ate in a restaurant and did not pay for the food, he immediately became a wanted criminal. The human world, according to his reflections, was simply terrible. If you ran out of money, then you can't do anything else. Why is there no simple job in this world where you can earn a whole bunch of money without making much effort? Merlin pondered. Here the young man was asked to stop. In front of him was the heavenly Lord Gaty who in this road belonged to him. Ignoring the strange people that met Merlin on the way, he went further, which really angered a new acquaintance who really did not understand whether our hero pretended not to notice them or not. Turning around, Merlin asked if the young man had called him. He was called and asked to turn out his pockets and give away all the most valuable things, because it was a robbery. The most valuable thing this guy had was his life, said Gaty. After all, 5,000 coins were given for the wanted. It was a gold mine and thanks to him, Gaty and his friend could become rich. Licking his blade, Haiti advised the young man to surrender without resistance. If he is disobedient, then this knife, smeared with dangerous poison, will end up between Merlin's ribs. Merlin decided to clarify whether Haiti really wanted to rob him, because at the same time he advised to think twice, grabbing the hilt of his sword. After all, if Merlin pulls this sword out of its scabbard, then both guys will definitely die. Gaty was not afraid of this, and he told the young man that he was forcing him to show what he was really capable of. Then his partner threw an apple into the air that he had previously held in his hands and with one swipe, Gaty peeled the fruit from the peel in the air. The boss's technique, which the subordinate was talking about, had no equal in this world. He is capable of striking twenty daggers in the blink of an eye and he asked the young man if he was already afraid of his opponents. Seeing the apple in the air, the young man's thoughts were occupied only with him. Gaty was furious again, because the young man ignored him and he considered the guy arrogant, wishing him a speedy death. Gaty went to attack the young man, but he only looked at the apple, which he was eager to eat, and taking the sword out of the scabbard, he immediately defeated the enemy and already happily ate the apple. The subordinate, seeing the boss on the ground, immediately rushed to him, and then seeing the condition of the guide ran away in fear, asking not to kill him. While eating an apple, Merlin thought that he was bored of fighting with weaklings like these two. But then, looking at the body that lay in front of him, it began to change and for the place of the guide there was no longer a man, but a goblin. Merlin thought that this goblin had indeed taken human form in order to arrange robberies on the roads. Perhaps the reason was that he was afraid of becoming a target of the royal army. The guy didn't care, but the most important thing was that he was fine. After throwing the apple, he decided that he still needed to find a job to earn at least some money and buy food. Meanwhile, the goblin that was with Gaty ran to his own. When he met the guardian goblin, he asked him what the other goblin was doing here, he also asked not to kill him. Introducing himself as cause, the goblin said that he was the one who pretended to be a human robber and asked for a reception from his majesty. The goblin guard allowed cause to go inside because his majesty was there. However, he knew the consequences if his majesty did not like something about him. Cause was well aware of this and went inside. There was a giant goblin on the big throne who asked cause why he had returned, but he had no money with him. The king asked how cause could not get the money. Then why did he return to the house empty-handed and enraged? He ordered the execution of Cause. Cause said that everything was wrong and he would never have come to his majesty empty-handed. He needed to tell a very important information. Then the king asked has to speak. Cause reported that Gaty was beheaded by a simple man. Then Cause began to remember in more detail, because that guy didn't even pull his sword out of its scabbard. Cause saw only a glimmer of light in the boss was already lying headless. The king believed that humanity was going to break off relations with the goblin tribe and for such a special occasion they sent a master of such a high level. Merlin strolled through the bazaar, thinking that he had given the last two copper coins in order to enter this city. Therefore, it was here that he had to find at least some work that would bring him closer to the dream of just eating and waiting for his death. Who knew that money was so easily spent, it was difficult to even feed yourself at the moment. Last year, Merlin robbed Alice. He stole her mithril armor to live a happy and rich life. 
he bought his own estate and hired high-class butlers and maids, hired a chef from a fine restaurant and ate three times a day with chic dishes. He often attended horse races, bet a lot of money, but did not win anything. By the time Merlin realized what he had done, it was already too late, he had spent all the money he had received from the sale of the mithril armor, and then he picked up a lot of debts on his neck. Merlin, accustomed to a happy and carefree life, often visited restaurants with fine cuisine, even when he had no money. As a result, Merlin naturally became the most wanted criminal, for whom a generous reward was laid. In this regard, Merlin's life turned into a wandering life of a restless runner from debts and guards. When he came to the village, the young man asked everyone not to pass by and not to miss what was about to happen. In their city, as the young man said, this happens for the first time. He is a traveling actor and he had no money at all. He told all passers-by. This way he will be able to earn his own food, and they will get a great performance. Today, the once great demon king from the palace of the great demon king, got into a difficult situation and decided to give street performances in order to earn a piece of bread. The young man called the gentlemen and ladies. If they had money, the young man asked to reward him with his attention. He's a penniless traveling actor. Everyone perked up when they heard the young man's speech, which was only to his advantage. Merlin decided to show his technique and started with super fast jumps. He moved so fast that everyone could barely keep track of him. With their mouths open, everyone was obliviously watching the young man. Someone asked if the young man studied martial arts, because his movements had just incredible speed. Merlin asked everyone to calm down because it was just the beginning and there is still a lot of interesting things ahead. The next technique was one where there were a lot of young men, as if he had been cloned. Everyone stood and applauded the young man, because it was the first time people had seen such a thing. Then, smiling, the young man said that since he had managed to cheer up the people and give them beautiful smiles, could he ask people for some money? No matter how much they gave, it will still please him, because the life of a traveling artist is full of difficulties. But everyone turned around and went about their business. There were shouts about the supreme goddess of light, who was the embodiment of immortality, greatness and eternity. It was one of the ministers of the church and the government who praised the goddess of light. Everyone gathered faster, because the Holy See is beginning to preach, so all people had to join them as soon as possible. Merlin also asked for at least one coin for putting on a show for everyone, asking where people were running to. Then he saw a child eating a lollipop and stroking the young man on the head. Merlin said that he noticed the young man's talent for martial arts. The young man asked the kid for two copper coins, and in return he would teach him techniques so that the boy would become as strong as his older brother. The boy, frightened, said that he had no money and turned to his uncle. Merlin did not understand who the uncle was here and, taking the boy by the shoulders, said that with his refusal the kid just took and offended the most powerful swordsman this world has ever seen. And Merlin told the boy that if he refused him, he might accidentally die. The boy was scared, and Merlin continued, deciding to ask what the baby's name was. The boy introduced himself as Henry. Then Merlin, taking the hilt of the sword, asked Henry to listen to him carefully. Although the boy insulted Merlin, he was a very merciful person, so he would forgive his ignorance for just a couple of copper coins. Henry also said that he really didn't have any money. Then Merlin asked the young man not to be greedy. The young man told the boy that he was quite richly dressed, as it was about the young man bringing him money from his house. And then Merlin added that he had figured out Henry. With all his heart, he decided he wanted to learn his martial art technique. Therefore, he asked the boy for a couple of copper coins, and he would teach him the invincible sword technique. Hearing about the invincible sword technique, the boy's eyes lit up, and he asked if Merlin had deceived him. Merlin also said that the absolute sword technique is the very embodiment of invincibility, capable of destroying the whole world. He would have discarded thoughts about his training if he didn't have all these important qualities to learn this technique. Henry was overjoyed and asked what techniques this technique specialized in. Merlin replied that the main technique is to pull the sword out of the scabbard and immediately behead the enemy. Hearing this, Henry calmed down a little and was skeptical. Ordinary techniques, the boy said, warriors neglect to study this technique because it is too inefficient. I didn't think that Merlin's invincible sword technique, praised by Merlin, would disappoint the kid so much. Merlin began to say that his technique of rapid decapitation is universal and completely different from its kind. But Henry was no longer interested. He shamed the young man and asked how he could try to deceive a child with some low-level technique of rapid decapitation, so he also demanded money for it. Putting his hand in his pocket, the kid asked to be allowed to somehow thank Merlin for the previously shown wonderful performance. Merlin, delighted, stretched out his hand, and there were already two candies lying there. 
Henry was saying goodbye to his uncle and saying that Merlin had already come of age, so it was time for him to stop trying to deceive people, and he needed to find himself some kind of job. And about the technique, the kid said that he was not interested in low-level techniques, and Henry walked away. Merlin threatened him with his fists, saying in the wake that the boy would not regret his decision. Yes, he could destroy a hundred thousand army of the Holy See with his sword technique. Merlin said he wouldn't teach Henry anything, even if he came and begged him on his knees. Henry also asked to stop being so intrusive, because his ears were already sluggish from this conversation. Merlin thought to himself that in the past he was the best demon king, and this is how he treats an excellent monk. But after unwrapping the lollipop, he cooled down a little. The problem didn't go away. The demon king was still thinking about a way to make some money. Then the words from the square came to his ears again. A man in church clothes asked everyone to believe. The goddess of light will protect only those who deeply believe in her and pray every day. A year ago, the Holy See sent a hundred thousandth military flotilla on a campaign to kill the demon king. But Lucifer III destroyed every single one with his sword. All the townspeople began to whisper among themselves. One girl told another that she had heard that the demon king was sitting on a throne made of human skulls, and he was a green freak with yellow zebras. Another replied that he was not only a terrible freak, but also a lustful monster. The young hero, the 233rd in the generation of heroes, was very unlucky. As a result, she had to give birth to several ugly children to him. Merlin, looking at the townspeople and listening to what they were talking about, absolutely did not understand what nonsense they were talking about. Alice misunderstood him and thought that then he would treat her badly, but he would never in his life be interested in some simple girl like her. The minion of the church continued to talk about Lucifer III, who was very powerful. No wonder he is the strongest demon king in history. The church has heard rumors that he is close to that, to get across the sea to Brittany. If he personally leads an army of demons and is able to cross dangerous waters in order to enslave the kingdom, then the same will happen. No one can survive without the goddess of light. Everyone knew for a long time that demons were scary with their reputation. They were also very aggressive. But Lucifer III was a separate case. He's just a tyrant in the flesh. It will not be difficult for him to come and destroy all people at any time, as the priest said. Merlin, on the other hand, thought to himself that he would never have sent his troops through the Orkney Strait just to attack Brittany. Because of the demonic threat, these bad people from the Holy See have become numb to the edge. But then the young man saw the wonders of marketing. The priest said that everyone needed to buy this Bible that was in his hands in order to deepen their faith in the Goddess of Light. May the Goddess of Light protect all people from the hands of the demon King Lucifer III. Opening the cabinet, behind the priest was a large print run with a Bible. He again ordered everyone to believe in the Goddess Veda. The original price for each book of this limited special edition of the Bible was 10 gold coins, but only today they will be able to purchase them for one gold coin. It was the most wonderful opportunity to strengthen his faith, as the priest said and pointed to the Bible cabinet. All the people rushed to buy books, someone took not one, but ten. Merlin, watching this picture, thought about what vain hypocrites were in front of him. They took money from working people by deception, and it was more unforgivable that they infringed on a prestigious reputation for the purpose of profit. But they did not pay any interest to the demon king for this. Merlin looked into the restaurant and asked the madam who was the owner to take him as a waiter if the restaurant needed such an employee. He was the most suitable candidate, according to Merlin. In order to feed himself, the demon king continued to look for work. The girl, embarrassed, asked if the young man could cope. Merlin assured the girl that he would make every effort to increase the overall income of the restaurant. Taking her by the hand, the demon king asked what decision the hostess had made. Seduced by his charms, the girl took the young man to work. The girl decided to ask the last question and asked Merlin if he was a traveler. In other words, before getting into this institution, whether the young man lived outside the city. Merlin explained that he could work in this institution for a maximum of two months, but then he would have to continue his journey. Merlin knew that his heart curse still hadn't been lifted, so he needed to find a strong opponent to ease the growing pain. Taking the abacus and the book, putting on her glasses, the girl began to count. Judging by the offers of temporary work, she had one position. Accommodation and meals are at the expense of the employer, and the fee is a gold coin per month. In addition to the above, each alcoholic beverage sold by him gave a 20% deduction of the profit share in his favor. And having asked how the young man proposed, she waited for an answer. The young man was surprised by the salary. The girl told Mr. Merlin that it was a very difficult job. In the evening only female guests were accepted in this tavern. 
the duty of a young man to sell them alcoholic beverages. They didn't drink alcohol just like that, so the girl hoped that Merlin would take his special measures to improve the sale of alcoholic beverages. Merlin decided to find out what the girl meant by special measures. Hesitating, she said that Merlin had to talk very pompously to comfort clients from some emotional adversity, give them advice and something like that and it was also welcome to enter into a deep soulful relationship with female guests. At this moment, Merlin, who was once the Demon King, is residing in the palace of the Great Demon King. Involuntarily I thought of something. One fine day he will have to lower his honor and his dignity by selling alcoholic beverages using the skin and meat method. If he had to trample on the honor and dignity of a great monarch and a demon king just to sell a couple of shots of vodka, he thought it was beneath his dignity. Merlin was about to refuse, when suddenly the girl said that if Mr. Merlin succeeds and we achieve certain successes, she will pay him some bonuses and a bonus when he has to leave work. Hearing this, the young man was delighted and asked why Madam had not said this earlier. He loved most of all in his life to persuade older sisters over fifty to drink a couple of glasses with him. For the sake of money, the Demon King decided to put up with such work in order to ensure his existence. Shaking hands, Lucifer thanked Madame for such a great opportunity. The young man changed into a uniform and looked simply stunning, thinking that no one knows him in this country anyway, realizing that his reputation as the Demon King would not be shamed. Merlin began his career in a tavern as a hostess waiter who had to communicate with the ladies. A cart that was driving through the forest and a girl who was reading an ad in her hands that someone was wanted but the ad was torn, so that the face of the wanted person was not visible at all. Strange feelings did not leave her. Alice was in front of us, who was heading and remembering the events of the past. A year ago, Alice was robbed by Merlin. Because of him, she lost her mithril armor, which the heroes inherit with each generation. Thus, she got into huge debts. And in order to pay off a lot of debts, Alice only had to register with the guild as an adventurer. Since Alice was a hero in her past, she was appointed a gold rank adventurer. And in order to pay off her debts, Alice took on the most difficult and dangerous quests for a year. And although her debts were huge, they were still fundamentally the opposite of the debts of the prodigal Merlin. Thanks to her hard work at a very difficult and dangerous job, Alice was able to buy a decent home and sometimes could afford to buy a couple of modest dresses. On the same day, the girl came to the bureau and asked how much the guy who was on this ad could eat food, since they gave so much money for him. The girl smiled at her there and listened to Alice. Alice said that it would not be difficult for her to catch this freeloader, and she wanted to take on this task. Alice understood that it was easier to catch some gigolo eating for free the easiest money in her life. She decided that when she became rich, the first thing she would do would be to buy a lot of beautiful clothes, and she wouldn't have to worry about the rental plan for the house at all. In asking the donkey in the cart to go faster, they rushed towards adventures. Poor Alice did not know that the one she was going to catch was Merlin, whom she hated with all her heart and wished not to see him all her life. Night came, the tavern and our hero danced with a lady. The young man asked Letty if she was ready to have a drink with him as soon as they finished the dance. The girl, who melted from the speeches of the Demon King, said that she was even ready to die for the young man. All the waiting ladies also wanted to get into the arms of the young man. Then Merlin invited everyone to have a glass together, and all the ladies, screaming with joy, wanted to have a drink with him. The girl who was the hostess of the establishment, as expected, Mr. Merlin liked the visitors very much. Then her thoughts were interrupted by her son, who had returned home. It was Henry, whom our hero once persuaded for a couple of copper coins. Henry was covered in dirt and his clothes were torn. Mom did not understand what had happened to her son and asked if he had fought with the neighborhood boys again. Then he and Merlin saw each other. Henry's mother, the owner of the establishment, poured tea for the young man and the kid talked about what this worthless uncle only knew how to do, what to brag about. She couldn't let him work at their restaurant. Mom was apologizing for Henry, saying that the baby probably gave Merlin a lot of trouble. The young man, with a smile on his face, said that everything was fine, because Merlin loved little children the most, so he wouldn't argue with them or anything like that. To himself, Merlin thought that this asshole was indeed the native son of the owner of the tavern. We need to somehow make a silk boy out of him so that he doesn't cause a lot of problems. Henry, on the other hand, shouted that he was not causing trouble to anyone and begged his mother to fire Merlin from her job and never hire anyone like him again. Henry told her that because this bad guy would definitely defile her already bad reputation. Other children will then continue to say that mom is a bad woman. These words really hurt the girl, and she tried to explain to Henry that it was not worth behaving like this in front of Mr. Merlin asking the young man to go to his room. 
Merlin, on the other hand, was sitting next to him and drinking his tea, watching the situation unfold before his eyes and thinking to himself that of course such a young and beautiful girl is a single mother, and such are very often prone to suffer from unfounded rumors about them. Looking at the boy, Merlin saw that his clothes were torn to shreds due to the fact that he was fighting with other children, because they spoke badly about his mother. Merlin told Henry that if he had someone he wanted to protect, then he needed to get stronger. Right now, the kid didn't have enough strength to shut someone's mouth. If he wanted to protect his mom, then he shouldn't make Merlin get kicked out of work. Instead, it was necessary to make it stronger than himself and make it clear to these unpleasant guys that the boy is not someone they can provoke, and his mother can't be insulted so easily. Pointing his finger at Merlin Henry, he said that he was taught by someone who seduces women and tricked them into buying alcohol. Addressing Uncle Merlin, he called the young man a bad word. Therefore, he had no right to teach him anything. Henry believed that he would rather die on the street than follow his advice in teaching the useless technique of rapid decapitation. After these words, the young man ran out into the street. Mom wanted to run after him, but stopped. Merlin was thinking about what a fool Henry was. The next day, a company came into the tavern and one of the guys was talking about goblins. The second youth replied that he had heard that a group of goblins lived on a hill not far from here. The girl next to her was talking about whether it meant that some time ago someone found the body of a goblin right on the road outside of this city, so it was true. The guy from the company liked the drink and asked Merlin to pour him another glass. Merlin quite skillfully used a shaker and after making a drink gave it to the young man. Everyone was delighted and asked to fill their glasses. It was a great honor for Merlin to serve them. Then evening came and the glasses of the company continued to be replenished. The young man told his friend, whose name was Roger, that is for the distribution of rewards. He would receive 2,000 gold coins for the mission. Roger did not understand where he was going so much and then his partner admitted that they were going to get married next to the girl sitting next to him. Hugging the beauty, the young man said that after the assignment they were going to return back to their native village and live a peaceful life. The couple were very happy with their decision. Roger was shocked by their decision. Merlin looked at this company uncomprehendingly. Roger blessed the guys, because he always knew that priestesses end their career as an adventurer and immediately marry swordsmen. Merlin, watching from the side, thought that this situation was under a red signal, because the couple could not return from the task. After apologizing, Merlin approached Roger and wanted to ask what the details of their assignment were. Roger replied that it was necessary to kill a hundred goblins, and then cut off everyone's left ear. Roger then, in turn, decided to ask Merlin if he was also an adventurer. The young man replied that he just wanted to know how dangerous their task would be. Then the rest of the team came up and talked about the fact that the three of them were silver-level adventurers, so Merlin could not worry about them. It would be a simple task for the guys and would not be a problem. Roger also asked not to worry about him, because they will definitely protect the city from goblins. Merlin thought about how it was like a normal raid on goblins. And wishing good luck, Merlin smiled at his new acquaintances. Night came and the guys went on their mission. Dealing with the goblins one by one, Roger felt that he had become even stronger. The guys calculated that there were 37 goblins left. As soon as they finished with them, they would immediately begin to slowly retreat. But then suddenly a giant appeared behind Roger, although Roger himself continued to say that they were all simple goblins and there was no need to be nervous about it or worry, because they can handle everything. At that moment, the goblin crushed Roger. The guys seeing this could not believe their eyes, Roger was no longer with them. In his place stood a huge goblin. The young man ran at the goblin. There was a huge goblin standing in front of him, and he was wearing a smaller one and he greeted the lower creatures that got into the goblin kingdom. The little goblin introduced himself. He was the highest nobleman of the goblin kingdom. Goblin is a magician of the highest order. His name is Gargamel. The young man could not understand how a goblin mage of the highest order appeared in such a small cave. It was impossible. The girl, frightened, began to cry. The magician said that a beautiful human woman would not die, but would be honored to become his imperial majesty's concubine. But as for the boy, they were going to kill him. At that moment, a fire broke out in the goblin's hand and then turned into a giant fireball. The guy asked the girl for a buff to strengthen the attack, and he will kill these goblins. The girl activated the second stage of the wind spirit. After that, he tried to attack the goblins with his sword, but realized that he could not cope and they had to escape from the battlefield. The young man did not have time to recover as a goblin hit him on the head with his club. The young man was lying on the ground. The magician ordered the woman to be tied up, the goblins ran to the girl, and began to tie her up. 
The young man asked to take his hands off her, saying that they could do whatever they wanted with him, but only to let the girl go. The magician decided to give the guy a chance to save the girl, only he had to make a deal with him. Arriving at the hotel in the city, Alice sighed. Going inside, she saw a lot of bustling women who were preparing the stage for the performance. The hostess asked Alice if the girl was here for the first time. If you look closely at how she was dressed, the hostess assumed that the girl was not from here. Alice said that she was an adventurer and would like to ask if the girl had free rooms, she would like to stay the night. The girl was surprised that Alice was an adventurer and showing her where to go, asked her to follow her to a free room. Going up the stairs, Alice stopped in room 206. The hostess, smiling, said that if the girl was bored, she could go downstairs. Today one very popular actor of the restaurant would dance a hot dance. For the girl it would be free, the hostess assured. Alice realized that it was something indecent and simply said that she only needed a bed for the night. The girl who was the hostess noticed how modest Alice was. But if she was very curious, I suggested that she still go down and not be shy. Everyone in this place had their own, and the hostess also added that it might seem a little exotic for a girl. Then Alice remembered about the paper she had with her about the wanted guy. She showed the paper to the lady and asked if she knew the person who was depicted on this arrest warrant. The hostess read what was written on the warrant, but since the face was not visible, she told Alice that, unfortunately, she could not tell her if she knew the person on this warrant or not. Alice apologized for such a question and the hostess wished the girl a good rest, after which she left. Going into her room, Alice reasoned out loud that finding a person on a warrant would not be as easy as she thought. At the same moment, Merlin was coming out of the next room. The young man looked at the closing door and the feeling was strange. It seemed to him that the voice seemed familiar to him, which he had just heard from the next room. The voice reminded him of that girl of the hero, but considering that it just seemed to him, Merlin went down, he had to start work. Alice fell on the pillow and rejoiced that after so many restless days she would finally be able to sleep properly. Lying on her bed, Alice thought about the swordsman Elegin, whom she wanted to meet. Last year Alice got into a very problematic situation. As it was known, she took a lot of quests to pay off the debt for the mithril armor. And one day, during an adventure in the port, she was captured by pirates. From the very beginning, the pirates planned to simply capture the young daughters of the ducal families, but one of them did not expect at all that they would be able to capture the fearless hot adventurer. A pirate standing nearby talked about the beauty of small and young girls and how he couldn't wait for the evening. The girls were sitting in a cage and crying. Alice came to the defense and calling the pirates only aggravated her situation. But then a young man came to the rescue. The young man came here because he sensed that people were in trouble. Alice realized that someone had come to their aid. But because of the cage in which she was, the girl could not see anything. The pirates were unhappy that someone had interrupted their fun. They also considered the young man not too far-sighted because who in their right mind would want to face pirates from a group of red-bearded pirates? The young man did not understand what it meant and asked it. The pirates said that they were brothers redbeards. The two of them were at the holy rank. They are the best pirates of all seas, and no one can compare with them. Seventeen of their warships are considered invincible. Under the command of one of the brothers even if this flotilla meet with the imperial fleet of Brittany, they can still win. They captured a bunch of girls to have fun with them properly, and if the young man thought he could take them away from the pirates, he was very much mistaken. On the way to collect debts, the young man was actually able to encounter two holy rank warriors. They must be strong, the young man thought, and he thought he could ease the pain of his heart curse. Today, the young man thought he was lucky. The pirates asked to stop talking nonsense and go down to them, and taking out his sword, the young man defeated everyone with one blow. Alice, remembering this, thought about how cool the swordsman Elgin was, because the young man was brave and courageous. Despite the fact that the girl did not see his face, she was sure that he was the strongest and bravest person in this world, considering him gorgeous. At the same time, Alice, embarrassed, hugged a pillow and floundered on the bed. After her memories, she decided to write a letter to the teacher. The girl wrote to Dear Teacher. After reading this letter, right now she was living very well. She had plenty of money. She no longer owed anything to the Holy See, and therefore the girl could no longer worry about the rent. But she was thinking that she, too, had fallen in love with the legendary swordsman Elgin. But unlike the teacher, she has a bright future and she will not get into the same situation. She was not a windy girl. That's why she asked not to worry about herself, just the teacher had to take care of herself properly and can wait for the moment when she reaches the peak of life and returns home. After her letter, the girl decided to pray. Alice prayed every day. 
she asked the Lord God to make sure that she did not meet Merlin again, because he was the worst memory in her life. At this moment, this same Merlin was performing below, conquering the hearts of the girls. Merlin, whom the girl considered the most disorderly and terrible person, she asked that life punish him for his evil deeds. The girl wanted the young man to become a poor beggar so that he would live in alleys and eat waste for the rest of his life, and even if he tried to find a new job every time, he would still not be lucky. Let him never have a penny in his pocket. Let him not feel the taste of salted fish on his tongue. This was all Alice's great wish, which she voiced every day. At that moment, Merlin sneezed. The young man was tormented by a question. Why did he sneeze at the same time every day? Could it be that someone was cursing Merlin behind his back? But the young man could not understand who could hate him so much. Adjusting his mask, he went on stage. All the girls were waiting for his appearance. Alice also went downstairs and sat at the bar thinking about who this guy was, whom these women called Chick on all floors of this building. Their screams were the only ones heard. Henry, putting the glass on the table, was angry that he had heard these calls of loose women again. He considered them all so poor, because they did not realize at all that their wallets would be emptied today. Alice looked at the baby and said that it was too rude on his part. After all, if they are very beautifully dressed, it does not mean that these women are disbanded. The kid explained that he didn't call them that because of that. Most of these women already have husbands and their own families, but even this does not stop them from coming to such places. Henry thought it was ugly and women should have been ashamed. The boy explained that due to the fact that his mother is engaged in such a business, there are not the most pleasant rumors about her and their family restaurant all over the city and it was disgusting for the young man. Alice realized that it was the son of the owner of this tavern, and the guy also greeted his sister, because she was a breath of fresh air against the background of these loose women. Henry admired Alice for coming here just for a sleepover. Then the kid noticed a badge on her belt. Henry's eyes lit up, and he asked his sister if she was actually a gold-level adventurer. It was true, and the girl told the kid that he had noticed correctly. Henry was insanely happy. I also asked the girl if she had already reached the highest stage and became the strongest. It was the first time in his life that he had seen such an outstanding person right in front of him with his own eyes. Alice, on the other hand, thought that the boy flattered her too much. Looking at the sword, Henry asked his sister to teach him her outstanding technique, and Alice understood that her technique was an ice cut. This technique was inherited and it cannot be learned. But what could she do? Stroking the baby on the head, Alice said that she could teach him her sword technique. But for this he needed special training. Drink as much milk as possible to make your body much stronger and that's when. Henry immediately started drinking milk. Henry said that Alice really was worthy of being called a warrior of the highest order. She had completely different approaches to learning than the others. For example, some poor uncle who just pulls out a sword and quickly stealthily beheads the enemy. After hearing about the technique of rapid decapitation, she began to wonder who it was and then she was interrupted by the women who called the chick. The young man apologized for keeping them all waiting. I was in a hurry to please that the intermission was over and the second part of the performance was officially beginning. Then Alice looked at the guy the women called Chicken. Henry said it was the same guy who owns the technique of rapid decapitation. This uncle, even though he is by nature a scum in the art of the sword and does not really know how to do anything, but he has a very strong art of sucking money from women. He is an ordinary prostitute, cashing in on married women, drinking for free. Repeating his words, she drew her sword and asked Henry to stay where he was. She was going to go on stage and catch this wanted criminal. When she got on stage, she asked if he was the guy who was a gigolo and drank for free. How could he not be ashamed, because he owed so much money to a huge number of people. Then looking at the girl, Merlin realized that in front of him was the hero girl he had abandoned on the beach a year ago. After evaluating her body, he suggested that the girl continue without aggression. She was going to use force in any case, and therefore asked the young man to surrender without resistance and follow her to prison. Then Merlin did something that she did not expect at all and, drawing her sword, attacked the young man, but she could not hit him. The young man asked her to calm down, because someone could get hurt because of her. She was not going to stop until she cut off his hands. This only amused Merlin and he, jumping on her sword, asked Alice to stop. Holding the girl by the head, he said that they had not seen each other for only a year, and when Alice managed to become so hot-tempered, Merlin asked if this was how old acquaintances were met. He hoped at least for hugs, but instead of them the girl took out her sword and tried to stab him with it. Alice did not understand which old acquaintances were in question, and who was in front of her. Taking off his mask, Merlin told Alice, addressing her as a beautiful lady, did she really forget those wonderful evenings they spent together, riding on a yacht? 
here he still remembered and after their separation. After he left her, every day he had to restrain his feelings with difficulty. In front of Alice was Merlin, who took off his mask and talked about the time when they were one and gentle with each other. Did it really mean nothing to Alice? Remembering everything, Alice was shocked and started screaming. Merlin turned to Alice and asked if she had forgotten those wonderful evenings they spent together, crossing the strait, sailing. Alice, grabbing her sword, told the young man that he was the culprit of the fact that she lived for a year with a humiliating thought and rushing into the attack wished Lucifer death. Lucifer stopped the girl and asked her to calm down. Was it possible to treat a partner with whom she crossed a dangerous sea strait like that? And so what if Merlin robbed her once, while the young man asked not to kill him, which madly angered Alice. But after looking at Lucifer, the girl fell to her knees and began to cry. Alice didn't understand how Merlin dared to talk to her like that after all he had done to her. He took the most valuable thing she had from her, then slapped her and just left. She was crying because of how much she had suffered because of him. Alice told me that she worked, risking her life a lot, in order to pay off the debts she got into because of Merlin. If Merlin dared to call himself a man, then he had to take responsibility. The guests began to whisper behind Merlin's back, because some of them could not believe that the chick had ever done this kind of thing. Could it be that he was a real villain? Henry also asked what Uncle Merlin had done and how he could offend his older sister. The kid thought he was disgusting. Henry pointed at his crying sister and told Merlin how nasty he was and how he could take advantage of his older sister's feelings to take advantage of her. Merlin used her and was not ready to take responsibility for his actions. Alice, crying, asked to return from her what Merlin took a year ago. Henry looked contemptuously at Merlin and told the young man that the more he learned about him, the more he began to despise him. This hero girl spoke so vaguely in Merlin's opinion that people around her could misunderstand her. And if this continues, then his reputation that he earned will be destroyed and in the future he will never be able to sell alcohol again. The young man decided that there was only one way to restore his image as a gentleman. Merlin hugged Alice and asked her to calm down, forget her grievances and drink a couple of glasses together, discussing all sorts of things. After all, there were things that could only be talked about under alcohol. The guys started talking about dreams at the bar, because the guests had left, and they were completely alone. Alice, after drinking cold milk, which was just amazing, asked for another glass. Merlin asked the girl why she tried to drink what was poured for her immediately. No self-respecting lady has ever done that. And speaking of which, if a girl doesn't stop doing that, she won't find a boyfriend. Alice told Merlin that she was not interested in his opinion and advice, and she admitted that she already had a boyfriend. It was the legendary swordsman Elgin. The girl asked if Merlin had heard of such a thing, because this swordsman would need a second to defeat Merlin. Merlin thought about how stupid the swordsman was, since he decided to date Alice with such talents. The hostess was thinking about how popular Merlin was among the girls if he was able to attract the attention of a gold-level adventurer. Looking at Merlin and Alice, the hostess thought that they were very similar to a couple. The hostess told Merlin that she would leave for a while, the girl needed to put Henry to bed. While she was gone, the guys could talk to each other in private. The young man wished good luck to his sister Martha, and she left, thanking the young man and telling him that Merlin should be more assertive and energetic in order to restore good relations with Miss Alice. Alice sat holding a glass in her hands and told Merlin that the young man had not yet returned to her what he had taken, so some words could not calm the girl's anger. Merlin asked what kind of thing he had to return and then Alice reminded him that it was the thing he took off her and left, namely, her mithril corset. Merlin pretended that he didn't understand how important this mithril breastplate was and how expensive it was, so he suggested Alice go to the market and buy another one. Alice also asked him to talk less and return her thing to its place, and then Merlin confessed that he had sold this very bib, and all the money he received from the sale. He spent on betting and horse racing. Well, of course he didn't win anything. Alice reminded him that the breastplate was worth tens of millions of gold coins, he just physically could not spend them so quickly. Merlin first heard about the real value of the mithril corset, because he sold it for a price ten times less. Alice got very angry and took Merlin by the breasts, said that if he did not return her mithril armor, she would never forgive him. Merlin removed Alice's hand and straightening his collar told her about the rules of demons, because of which, if he took something from someone, then from that moment this thing that turned out to be his, it immediately became his property and even if the girl asks to return it now, Merlin has no money therefore. He will not be able to offer anything but his own life. Merlin asked to note that he is no longer the demon king and he and Alice should not have any hostile relations. 
But if she wants to take his life, then their relationship has every chance of becoming hostile and at that moment Merlin grabbed the hilt of his sword. So Alice was even scared and swallowed, because she knew what was going on next. Then the young man sat down and sipped his glass. Merlin asked Alice to calm down, because Miss Martha cared a lot about No, so he did not want to make a mess in her restaurant. Merlin suggested that Alice just have a quiet drink and come to a compromise, asking the girl not to destroy such a wonderful atmosphere with her sharp sword. Resolving disputes using words is much more effective and smarter than using a sword in a fight. Alice reminded the Demon King that he was very strong and could use his power to bring the mithril armor back. But the young man reminded Miss Hero that demons, unlike people with deep understanding and respect, treated the rule of justice, so they don't use radical methods. The rules of trade are very sacred to them, so if there was a deal, he would not dare to take the goods he sold back. Alice remembered that a couple of minutes ago it was Merlin who said that he was no longer the Demon King. Why even now he paid so much attention to such rules? Merlin explained to Alice that even if he is no longer the Demon King, but after all, he is a former magnificent monarch and cannot afford to lose the reputation he earned by robbing the things he sold to a merchant. Besides, wasn't Alice a hero and a role model and why she incited Merlin to rob? The young man couldn't understand while drinking his cocktail. Alice then confessed that she was no longer a hero. When Merlin took her mithril armor from her, she got into huge debts and was paying off her debt of 10 million gold coins to the Holy See. Merlin figured that if she worked 36 hours a day for the rest of her life, maybe someday she would be able to pay such a huge amount. Alice, holding her head, told Merlin that in order to have at least some chance to pay off debts, she had to work on S-level quests. For such missions, they give several tens of thousands of gold coins, but they are very dangerous. The girl did not know when she would be able to take quests of this level. Merlin began to realize what Alice had said and he decided to ask again if it was true, what she said. Alice told Merlin that it was true. S-level missions are usually very dangerous. Some monsters like the quest are even stronger than the magicians of the highest order of the Holy See. If an adventurer makes even the slightest mistake, he will immediately die. That is why such a high risk is given such a high reward. But even so, Alice needed to reach the highest S level to successfully complete such missions alone. And it was all Merlin's fault. Then the young man came up with the idea of what his next job would be. The guy was very pleased with the information he heard. You may ask what advantages adventurers have. Personally for Merlin it was an easy killing of the strongest opponents then relieving the pain from a heart curse. As a bonus to this, he will be able to earn a lot of gold coins, which means getting closer to his ideal life just eat, sleep and wait for his death. In other words, this job was just perfect for Merlin. After his reasoning, Merlin asked Alice if there were any criteria for becoming an adventurer. Anyone with mana could become an adventurer, Alice said. Then Merlin remembered that he belongs to another tribe and therefore his aura and mana are radically different from human ones, and so he was interested in some other way besides that. Alice explained that if some adventurer vouched for him and recommended him to the guild, it could also work, and after that she decided to ask why Merlin needed to know about it. Merlin, looking at Alice with a sly grin, told the girl that they were in a good relationship, so they could call each other real friends. Then he would like the girl to recommend him to the guild. He really wanted to become an adventurer. Alice was surprised by Merlin's wishes and asked the young man why she should recommend him. The young man, spreading his hands, asked Alice about their relationship during the crossing of the sea strait by boat. Did they mean nothing to the girl? Alice ordered Merlin never to think about it, because she would rather die than recommend him to the guild. Merlin did not understand why it was so difficult for Alice to recommend him to the guild, because she would not become poorer from this. He needed only one recommendation, and the guy decided that he would immediately leave Alice alone. Therefore, Merlin begged her very much. Alice also said that she would never allow such a disgusting guy as Merlin to become an adventurer. That night the guys had a big fight. In a few days, Merlin was standing rubbing glasses, when suddenly Miss Martha called him and started asking about Henry if Merlin had seen him. But Merlin saw the baby and didn't know where he was. Marta reported that the boy left early in the morning without warning. She did not know where he had gone and decided to go look for him around the city. But before that, she went down to the young man and asked what happened to him, because today he looked more sluggish than usual. Merlin decided to ask Martha's sister, saying that most likely the girl was more knowledgeable than he was. What she knew about the profession of an adventurer, Mata began to remember. According to the adventurers she met, this profession was very dangerous. You can not only get serious injuries on it, but also die altogether. High-level quests are very well paid, 
But as the level increases, not only the fee increases, but also the risk. However, she could not say with particular accuracy, her knowledge was superficial. And there was another point, people who strive for freedom, that is, they become adventurers, for example, to reduce their sentence. Then she realized that Mr. Merlin had found what he planned to do in the future. Maybe he wanted to become an adventurer to do quests with Miss Alice, Martha asked. The young man sadly replied that he would like to become an adventurer, but he had neither aura nor mana, and Alice did not want to offer the young man to the guild. Miss Martha asked me not to tell Merlin about this. Most likely, the young man did not ask very well according to her thoughts. She suggested that Merlin ask Alice again, but with great respect and Martha would look forward to their joint quest with Miss Alice. The young man thanked Miss Martha for her attitude and advice. Miss Martha thought for a moment and after taking the young man by the hand, asked Mr. Merlin, if he becomes an adventurer, never to take dangerous quests, even though he always carried a sword with him and mastered it perfectly. But after all, the young man has no aura or mana at all, so attacks with a sword will be weak and he can easily be killed. Merlin was a little embarrassed, he did not think that Miss Martha was so unsure of his abilities. The weather suddenly became bad, thunderstorms and downpours took the place of the sun. Martha took an umbrella and went in search of Henry and asked Merlin to look after the store during her absence. Merlin gladly agreed and took Martha in search of his son, thinking about adventurers to himself. He was wondering what happened to those three silver level adventurers who had been here not so long ago. The young man saw the city and ran to it. When he came running he saw soldiers who were drinking and asked for help. But they first said that the gates were closed and it was already late in the evening, asking the young man to leave. The guy introduced himself as an adventurer who left this city not so long ago. He asked for help, his teammates all died, and he was left alone. The young man had many wounds, and he asked for help. Then one of them noticed that the young man was seriously injured and they opened the gate. The young man got down on his knees and began to apologize to the guys who were already ready to let him into the city. But the guy did not go anywhere, but only continued to apologize. The young man was very sorry. He said that he just wanted to save his fiance, and this was the only way. The soldier, leaning towards the young man, did not understand what he was talking about. Then a huge goblin appeared behind them. The soldiers saw goblins, a whole army. The magician commanded the wars that the city ahead was their prey, and they could kill all the men they saw and grab only beautiful women. The warriors were ordered to go ahead to collect as many beautiful girls as possible for their great emperor. The soldiers were shouting that the goblins had invaded. The young man who let the goblins into the city said that he helped them and as they agreed, he fulfilled his part of the deal. Now they had to return his bride to him. The magician also said that the guy helped them open the city gates and do without losses, but he could not think that they would return his bride to him. She was already a concubine of the imperial majesty and forgot about her fiancé. At that moment, the young man was attacked by fire, and the goblins went further into the city. The bell rang and people saw a fire at the end of the city, already at the fortress itself. No one understood what was happening. Did the authorities mobilize the troops? The young man asked looking out of the window. But then a goblin attacked him from above. Goblins entered the city and started attacking the men. Alice was carrying apples home at that moment and saw a fire. The girl also did not understand what was happening. Then she saw the townspeople who were running from the place where there was a fire and shouted that someone was coming. Alice went through the crowd and tried to figure out what was going on. Then an old man came across her and asked the girl to run away. Alice also said that she owned magic and could help if there was a fire. Then an arrow pierced the old man and Alice saw a whole army of goblins behind him. With her attack, she immediately froze them, but many continued the attack. Alice used her sword and offered the goblins to attack if they dared. There was a wall of ice behind Alice, and the girl said that none of them would have time to blink, as they would immediately die. The goblins ran at Alice, and she killed everyone with her ice sword. Behind Alice, an archer was attached to the roof and attacked the girl from behind. But wings of ice grew behind Alice's back and stopped the arrow's attack. Waving in the air, she said that for the sake of justice she should send all the monsters back to hell. The goblins attacked Alice and aimed crossbows at her, but Alice repelled all their attacks and immediately froze the goblins that they could no longer attack or move. At the same time, in the tavern, Merlin was sitting with the ladies and chatting pleasantly. The girls were delighted with the young man and had a conversation. The ladies asked to tell the chick a story about pirates. Then suddenly Merlin heard screams from the street. He apologized to the girls, but it seemed to him that it was too noisy outside. He needed to leave them for a while and investigate the situation. Then suddenly the door was knocked out and goblins burst into the tavern. 
The young man, looking at them with contempt, realized that these were green misunderstandings and were the culprits of that noise outside. The mad goblins, on the other hand, looked at their prophet and were ready to attack the young man in order to take away the beautiful ladies, of whom there were a lot in the tavern. The village was plunged into chaos, buildings were burning and only Miss Martha was looking for Henry, who had disappeared somewhere. Henry was playing with the knight, thinking about his adventurous sister, who had already promised him that she would teach him the most powerful sword technique in the future. Two boys were sitting in front of him and listening to the baby. Henry also said that when he grows up, he will become the strongest adventurer who will be able to protect his mother. One of the boys said that he was jealous of Henry, and the second drew attention to the fact that it was too noisy outside. And the guys decided to look out the window, their whole village was on fire. Mom was looking for Henry, saying that it was dangerous to be on the street right now and he had to go home. Then Henry saw Mom from the window, and goblins behind her. They grabbed the girl and began to tie her up. Henry rushed to help his mother, but the guys grabbed him, saying that if the boy left now, they would kill him. The second friend also told Henry that his friends needed the boy alive, and the goblin kills all men. They only needed girls, and therefore they will kill him too. But Henry struggled, because he had to save his mother. The goblins had already grabbed Miss Martha and dragged her to their place. In the tavern where Merlin was, there were also goblins, which the Demon King did not have to deal with. And they were indeed deservedly called green misunderstandings, Merlin said, because they did not even allow him to spend the evening with his precious guests. The girls were hiding in a corner at that moment and watching what was happening. Having dealt with another one and turning his head to the side, the young man saw a whole army of goblins. Goblins began to attack the young man, but Merlin, considering them ugly creatures, thought that they could bring at least some benefit to this world. For breathing air and taking out their sword from the scabbard, Merlin was presented with a real firework for his presentation. All the goblins next to him fell. The goblin mage then watched from above what was happening in the village. In his opinion, all the people were very weak and he decided that today they would kill them all. But then a subordinate ran up to him and addressing Mr. Minister. He said that their entire army in the western part of the city was completely destroyed. The magician could not believe what he heard, because only a carrier of the highest spiritual rank was capable of this. The goblin explained that he had not felt his magic, nor the aura of non-mana. This killer looks like a very ordinary man with blonde hair and red eyes, and he was also just a handsome man according to Goblin. The magician was beside himself with anger that the goblin thought some man was beautiful, because only women could be considered beautiful. And the goblin apologized very much to the great magician, saying that he was right and only women could be beautiful. The magician thought that an ordinary person without mana and aura would not be able to kill the entire army in the western part of the city. It was very strange and how was this even possible? The goblin explained that he only saw that the guy pulled out his sword and in just an instant, and less than a second had passed. The entire western army was destroyed in an instant. Then the goblin reported that the army in the central part of the city was also completely destroyed, and their bodies were hung very high and impaled on ice spikes. It looked very tragic. And the one who did it is a bearer of the highest holy rank. The ice sword was already heading towards them, right here. The magician was thinking that everything was not going according to plan and where did these two come from? The losses were too great and they had to retreat, the magician said. Immediately, he ordered the entire army to retreat. But with so many human women they caught today, the amount of losses could be made up in a shorter period of time. The village was on fire and many people were killed, while the goblins took their army and the women they captured. Miss Martha, who was also taken prisoner, thought only of her son. Hoping that the boy was okay, she was very worried about her Henry, but not for herself. There were other women walking beside her, as bound as she was, unable to speak. Alice was flying on her wings inspecting the territory and saw that the goblins had retreated and heavy rain washed away their tracks. The goblins could not be allowed to leave with the abducted women. Then Alice was attacked by a giant goblin. She ordered him to step aside and not block her way, otherwise she would not take pity on him and kill him. But this did not frighten the goblin, and he went on the attack. Alice also attacked and froze the goblin, then she realized that she had allowed the others to escape. The village was destroyed, and many children were looking for their mothers. Alice understood that the goblins had captured the inhabitants of this city, so in the near future there was not even anyone to rely on, which means she had to stay in this city for a while longer. Then the bell rang, and the remaining men realized that the headman had called them to discuss what had happened. Everyone went to the church building and there were many wounded men in it. Many people were captured and taken to the back of the mountain. The man asked the others what their thoughts were about this and what they needed to do. 
As the mayor of the city, he could not make a decision and put forward his ideas alone in such a critical situation. It would be unwise. One of the men suggested to just forget about it, because what could they do at all? These goblins were terrible. Their whole horde is five or even ten times more than the men in this village. If they brought the women to their lair, then everyone here will definitely not be able to save them, said another guy. Henry talked about how these ugly goblins had captured his mother and asked the men if they didn't have relatives who were captured. They had to save them, they had to do it. After all, it is normal to risk your life for the sake of the closest people. If men do not save them, they will definitely go to hell. Then the Holy Father appeared and asked the boy to stop shouting nonsense. The Holy Father said that all those present will not go to hell, because the great goddess of light is merciful. The headman asked the Holy Father to give them a way to solve this problem. Everyone else also asked the Holy Father to help. The Holy Father asked everyone to calm down and hand over the solution to this problem to him. He knew they would simply forget about the abductees and pray to the goddess of light, and she, in turn, would forgive them this sin. Raising the book above the heads of all those gathered, the Holy Father said that everyone knew perfectly well how many of their opponents were, and it was stupid to fight with so many right in their lair. It was like going to certain death, so they had no choice but to abandon them. But everyone present could stay here and pray to the Goddess of Light. Right now, all the men in this room had the opportunity to piously pray to the Goddess of Light, and she, in turn, would help them save and bless their souls so that men would not go to hell. Now that the loved ones were captured, it was just necessary to take and buy a Bible, deepen their faith in the Goddess of Light and then the loved ones will take and return themselves. One of the men asked the Holy Father if it would really be the case that if he bought a Bible and prayed to the Goddess of Light, his wife would return by herself. Then the man behind him said that he himself had once been captured by goblins and many prisoners prayed to the Goddess of Light to get out of the goblin lair. All the men rushed to this stranger who was talking about how he took out the Bible and all the goblins, frightened, did not dare to touch him. After the story, all the men rushed to buy a Bible and pray to the Goddess of Light to save their wives. Someone was willing to buy a dozen Bibles just to make it work. The man who told his story to everyone, at that moment, looked at the Holy Father with a grin, and he smiled back at him. Then the Holy Father told everyone not to worry, because he carries dozens of blessed Bibles with him. There were only 100 gold coins for one book and the quantity was limited. Men rushed to buy the Bible, considering the Holy Father great, and the desire to believe in the Goddess of Light. Henry shouted behind their backs that this priest was a charlatan who just wanted to profit from people who were experiencing grief. The Holy Father, hearing this, said that he wished everyone only the best, because it was the only way to save everyone. Henry, pointing his finger at the Holy Father, said that by listening to him, everyone in this building was wasting precious minutes. The situation of the prisoners is getting worse by the minute. And he shouted to the charlatan priest that he would definitely go to hell after his death. Henry began to cry. He did not understand why everyone here did not realize that they were being deceived, because in the end no one would be saved. Then someone told him that Henry had done a good job and he turned around and saw Alice. Alice asked the hypocrite in the person of the Holy Father to put his worthless tricks aside, and so that he would not dare to deceive these people, because they are in a hopeless situation. Even if he was ashamed and rolled out of here, Alice said. The same thought that the girl was a heretic and asked not to slander the sacred religion, saying that the girl had to be burned at the stake and that she was a witch. Alice introduced herself as a gold-level adventurer, and an ex-hero of the 233rd generation of heroes of the Holy See. It was Alice Claudia. The girl spoke loudly and confidently, referring her speech to the Holy Father, who had previously asked the girl who she was. Everyone was surprised to hear this. There really was a hero of the 233rd generation of heroes in front of them. The Holy Father, addressing the 233rd generation of heroes, said that it was the worst generation of heroes in history. The girl brought only shame to the Holy See. Not only was Alice defeated during the crusade against the demon king, but she also entered into a relationship with Lucifer. Alice talked about the fact that she did not plan to talk about her past. She was here to force the Holy Father to stop deceiving people who were already in a very problematic situation. If His Holiness found out that the Holy Father encourages people to remain neutral and abandon their relatives to their fate, he would most likely be very angry. The Holy Father did not understand how Alice could say such things to him. The priest of the Holy See, the priest of the Goddess of Light. For these people, prayer is the real salvation. At that moment, Alice put a sword to the priest's throat. Since the priest believed that prayer was the way out, then right now he could start praying and then she would see if he would die from her sword or not. 
while the priest dared to use his life as an argument that prayer is really the way out. The priest fell to the floor, he began to apologize to Alice. Alice ordered the priest to move away from her, calling the priest a lying charlatan. Turning to the men who stood and looked at the whole picture, Alice knew that they were all afraid of death and even if their loved ones were kidnapped by goblins, they still did not want to act rashly. But men had to realize that prayer is useless spiritual consolation. They were just comforting themselves with useless hopes. Alice screamed that just doing nothing and leaving the prisoners in trouble was the act of a coward. They should have understood that the goddess of light does not help cowards. They're all going to hell for sure. She knew that there were a lot of impossible things in this world that might seem impossible at first glance. But when relatives, close friends and neighbors expect that it is the men who stood in front of Alice who will save them, then they should do it, but at least try. Henry was rooting for his older sister. Men had two options, Alice said. The first option is to live until the remorse becomes unbearable and they commit suicide, and the second option is to take a sword and rebel against the goblins. Alice approached the elder at the same time and asked his excellency to tell her where the goblin's lair was. The elder said that it was all good, but only the goblin emperor apparently reached the saint rank. The girl asked the elder to tell her about the location of the goblin lair. At that moment, Merlin approached the beautiful ladies, explaining to them that they were safe next to the young man. They threw themselves on his shoulders and asked him to protect them. Hugging the girl, Merlin thought about his sister Martha, who went outside to find her Henry, but never returned. As soon as Merlin thought about the young man, Henry burst into the tavern. The breathless young man ran upstairs and Merlin, seeing him, asked where the baby ran and where his mother was. The same did not answer him and ran into the room where the sword hung. After taking the sword, the young man talked about how he was going to save his mother, but he wasn't sure if Merlin was interested in this. To himself, Merlin thought about how these green misunderstandings could have captured Sister Marta. Henry ran down the stairs and asked Uncle Merlin not to get in the way, because he went after Mom. Having seized Henry Merlin, he told the boy that he was going to certain death and first he had to prepare. Henry started swearing at Merlin and asked him to let him go, because he wanted to save his mother. Merlin told Henry that right now the boy was unable to help his mother and asked him to tell him about the situation in more detail. Henry shouted that it was all because of him. It was his fault that mom was captured by goblins, who attacked the city. He has to save his mother and said that he will kill goblins with his father's sword. Merlin told the kid to stop and not overdo it. He explained to Henry that he was a weak child, how he could cope with a horde of goblins. Henry was telling Merlin that he had promised his father something. When he's not around them, he's the main man. So only Henry himself had to protect mom. At that moment, Merlin himself remembered his mother and his childhood. When he spent carefree time lying on her lap and promised her that when he grew up he would protect her, this made Merlin smile. Henry ran to help. Merlin considered it such a pity that this enthusiastic boy was causing him so much trouble and asking the ladies to stay in this tavern until morning until dawn. He asked them to leave only in the morning. The girls asked the chick where he was going to go, because it was very dangerous outside. Taking his cloak, the young man reasoned out loud that sometimes he thought that being a hero was actually not so bad. Alice went towards the lair and saw a young man at the exit of the city. He was lying on the ground covered in burns and was reaching out to Alice. She saw what had been done to him and asked the young man not to say anything and to preserve his strength, and she goes for the residents of the city and will definitely cure him. Being covered in burns, he saw that Alice was a gold-level adventurer. He asked Alice to promise to save his bride, because he himself was not able to do it. Alice asked the young man to raise his head, because adventurers should always keep their dignity. In reaching out to the young man, Alice took his adventurer's badge. The girl also asked what his bride's name was, and hearing the name of Avra Sahil, Alice promised that tomorrow his bride herself would return him the adventurer's badge. Addressing Lady Alice, the young man asked her to be careful, because the goblin emperor had already reached the holy rank and was a very strong being. The guy asked Alice to be careful. Alice, turning around, went towards the lair, and thought to herself that no saint rank of the enemy would make her change her mind. Having heard such words, no matter how many times, Alice firmly knew that they would not make her change her mind or give up. If the goblin emperor was so strong, it was for the best, because heroes have to overcome their limits in order to become stronger. Mediocre people without talent should know their limits and stand firmly on their feet. Even if she is in despair, Alice will always burn with the fire of hope. Meanwhile, inside the underground goblin mausoleum, all the girls were gathered in one place and then the goblin king appeared. After looking at the girls, he praised the magician Gargamel, because this time he exceeded the emperor's expectations 
and the emperor was interested in what the magician wanted as a reward. Nash nobly replied that he didn't need any reward, because serving his majesty the goblin emperor was already the greatest honor for him. After these words, the emperor believed that the goblin was truly worthy of the title of the first minister of the kingdom. After looking at the girls that the goblins had gathered, the emperor was very pleased, because it was a great match. He ordered the girls to be taken to the cell so that they would wait there until the emperor took water procedures and then he would come off properly. For Gargamel to earn the trust of his majesty was the greatest honor, which he spoke aloud to the emperor. He allowed the goblin to go, because he no longer had any errands for him, and the emperor himself wanted to take water procedures. Gargamel left and came to his subordinates and ordered an urgent ambush. He considered people to be emotional beings, knowing that goblins had kidnapped a lot of girls, then their men and city residents would come to bring them home. Therefore, the goblin ordered to gather as many goblins as possible and set up an ambush, and when people come, they will be trapped and die. The goblins praised Gargamel, calling him the smartest goblin in the kingdom. The goblin who was sitting on the observation tower saw that, according to him, some kind of white thing was moving towards them. Gargamel thought the goblin was talking about a demonic beast, but it didn't look like a beast, and then the goblin saw a female singer with ice magic. It was Alice, freezing everything with her sword, she was walking towards the goblin's lair. Gargamel asked someone to call the giant goblins for help so that they could deal with Alice, but it was already too late. The girl dealt with everyone and only Gargamel remained in front of her. The goblin began to concentrate his fire power so that Alice would not interfere with him, but Alice struck first so that the goblin flew into the wall. His subordinate, looking at the defeated Lord Gargamel, did not know what to do. Alice passed by and froze it, and then went on. Moving deeper down the corridor, the girl was interested in the question of why no one was in this lair, then two large goblins appeared in front of her. They started attacking Alice, but dodging, she attacked them first and standing in front of the goblins invited them to get out of the way if they valued their lives. It was night and the men marched in a detachment towards the goblins' lair. Everyone was armed and serious. The next moment, they already saw the goblins that were ready to defend the lair, and a battle ensued. Lord Gargamel had woken up by that time and his subordinates crowded around him. They informed the chief that they were surrounded and attacked by residents of the city. This enraged the lord, and he rushed to see what was happening outside. The elder asked to hear his plan. Right now, they were almost at the entrance to the goblin lair. It was necessary to suddenly rush inside, and then wait for Miss Alice and then inflict a crushing defeat on the goblins. As a result, it will be possible to pick up wives, daughters and provide them with a safe departure. Gargamel, seeing ordinary peasants who were armed with pitchforks and chair legs, did not understand how they could compare with goblins who were noble warriors. At this moment, he was asking the demonic power of the earth fire to obey his order, and not allow these people to pass on. A fire appeared under people's feet and then a wall of fire appeared. Merlin was already near the lair and also saw a wall of fire. Standing next to the man, Merlin asked if he had seen a boy named Henry, who is the son of the owners of the Moonlight Tavern. The man replied that the boy could not be here, because children were forbidden to climb this mountain. Merlin couldn't understand if this prankster had arrived at the mountain alone long before the main troops of the city, thinking about how much trouble the kid was giving him. There was an elder standing behind Merlin and seeing that the young man went inside. He asked him to stop, because there was a goblin inside the lair who had already reached the holy rank. The elder asked the young man to provide him with mosques with silver hair and ice magic. After hearing what the elder was saying, Merlin explained to him that Alice was just an opponent he had defeated in the past, and that was all. She didn't have any advantages, except that she was a little cute and blushed very prettily when she was embarrassed. Merlin swung his sword and cut through the wall of fire. Seeing this, the elder and everyone else were shocked. The elder, watching the young man, thought that he had already seen this silhouette somewhere. And the aura of the young man was exactly the same as that of the great swordsman who six months ago destroyed a dangerous gang of red-bearded pirates in the port of Elgin. People at the same time admired his strength, because he alone kept the entire imperial army of Brittany in fear and apprehension. And the residents of the city at the same time despised him, because he earned money as a prostitute who comforted girls with his speeches and got them drunk. Was it really the same person? Gargamel was thinking about the people outside who couldn't cross his wall of fire, so now there was a very important task that needed to be done. Gargamel ordered one of the goblins to hurry up and take the guards, quickly bring that girl with silver hair right to him. They shouldn't have bothered his majesty. The subordinate asked the magician if it would be better if the king dealt with her himself. 
Gargamel was enraged, starting to shout at a subordinate who thought that he was a noble goblin of the goblin tribe would not be able to deal with this misunderstanding alone. The goblin, running away, shouted that he would never dare to say such words, saying that they would immediately take all the imperial bodyguards and bring the girl to him. Then Merlin called Gargamel, talking about the beautiful night that was today. Man could not understand how it was possible that the young man could pass through his veil of fire, and there were no burns left on him. Masha was wondering who this young man was. Merlin introduced himself as an amazing talent, falling in love with everyone and everything with just one look at himself, and he was also the best employee of the Moonlight brand. Gargamel wanted to see what kind of creature was in front of him and what kind of power he had. The magician saw how the young man stood without a scratch and wanted to attack him as soon as possible, since he himself came to him. But after attacking Merlin with fire, he simply waved him off. Gargamel thought to himself how it happened and what kind of technique it was that could just deal with his fire like that. It was the first time he had seen such a thing. He turned to the demonic flame force again, blasting the demonic force to listen and obey his order. He ordered his enemy to be devoured. But even then, Gargamel's attack did not work on Merlin. Merlin came out of the fire alive only by waving him off. Merlin said that he couldn't help but praise the goblin for single-handedly directing two different types of magic at him. But even so his attacks were still too weak. In addition, Merlin did not really like it when a small weak bug jumps in front of him and tries to grab hold of life with all its might. Especially if such a bug thinks about himself who knows what. The young man believed that Gargamel overestimated his strength and attacking the goblin ordered him to sleep forever. Merlin considered him too weak to draw his sword from its scabbard. Entering the cave, Merlin thought about his immunity, an immunity to any type of magic and invulnerability in close combat, so it would be very difficult for him to find a worthy opponent with these. And in the lair, there was his next target, followed by the demon king. The girls were sitting in the dungeon when the goblin that was guarding them fell and Mr. Alice broke in to save everyone. Miss Martha asked if Alice knew what had happened to her son and where he was. Alice reported that Henry was fine and he was in town, waiting for her to return home. Miss Martha burst into tears and was happy that Henry was fine. Alice asked everyone to leave the dungeon, because if someone comes to the dungeon, they will be captured and it will not be very good for everyone. Miss Martha tried to help Alice and hurry all the girls to get out of the dungeon faster. Alice asked everyone running if anyone knew a girl named Sahil. Then the girl herself responded to her name. Alice was telling the girl that she had news from her fiancé teller when Sahil saw a huge goblin behind Alice. Alice managed to push Sahil away, but she herself was hit by a strong blow from the goblin's sword. His Majesty the Goblin King came out in front of them. The king was swearing at Gargamel for having to deal with everything himself now. And pulling his hand to the girls, he told them that no one would dare to run away from him, and if anyone dared, they would be in trouble. Alice, using her powers, imprisoned the goblin king in a dungeon of ice, because while her heart is beating, she will not allow him to harm these girls. The king realized that in front of him was, in his opinion, a rat of the highest order, who also dared to imprison him in an ice dungeon. And breaking his cage, he shouted to the girl that she would not be able to escape from his palace. But Alice, having attacked the goblin king again, did not think about escaping. At that moment, she gave Sahil her fiancé's adventurer badge and asked the girl to be inspired, because her fiancé was still waiting for her outside. Holding onto her sword, Alice believed that once they escaped from the goblin's lair, they would have a peaceful life. Alice told Sahil that the girl would be able to reunite with her lover and marry him. They would be able to have children. So now Sahil needed to have the courage and take everyone away from here. Alice asked them to run. Alice herself was left alone with the Goblin King. The Goblin King was asking if Alice really decided to sacrifice herself to stop him. She didn't even know the people she was going to protect. And he wondered, as the Goblin King, it was the first time he had seen a person like Alice. The Goblin King changed his opinion about people because of Alice. The King said that he was very merciful, so because of Alice's self-sacrifice, the King gave her two options, throw down the sword and become his princess or fight to the last drop. Alice chose the second option, asking the Goblin to stop talking. To herself, Alice thought of him as a Goblin who showed his love. It was funny and disgusting. There was only the legendary swordsman Elgin in her heart. She loved only him, a powerful and just man. The goblin told Alice that she did not understand his kind offer to the girl. He decided to wait until he caught her and then raise her. Alice made an attempt to attack the goblin, and he decided that it was all her last efforts. He decided that the girl would attack him with some kind of ice stake, but received only a cold drizzling rain. Alice promised to give him a gorgeous death from her sword. 
and then she remembered her childhood, where she trained hard. As a child, Alice was very tired of the most basic technique, but her teacher believed that the girl had to learn this skill. After all, this skill will be the key to a desperate attack when Alice gets into a desperate situation. The girl couldn't believe that she would have to rely on this usual tactic. Could it be that with her help, Alice could defeat some saint rank bearer? Then the teacher decided to explain everything to Alice. Alice should have understood that most of the saint rank bearers are members of human society. But if Alice is still able to hit this blow directly into the heart, then there is a very high probability of delivering a fatal blow. In addition, the snow-capped mountain tribe possessed magic and martial arts relying on spiritual energy, so if Alice attacks with this blow into any part of the body by injecting enough spiritual energy into it, then even if her opponent does not die, he will receive a very serious injury, the teacher explained to Alice. Alice tried to find out where the weak point of the saint rank bearer was and how she could hit him directly. The teacher explained that this already depended on intelligence and wisdom, also on the effect of an unexpected attack. You can also pour poison mixed with spiritual energy, you can threaten, and then take hostage if nothing happens it will work. Then you can use feminine charm to seduce and vidar it. But in the war all means were good, the teacher said. It seemed to Alice that she was saying strange things. Alice began to attack and meanwhile little Henry met with a big goblin. It was interesting how such a little boy as Henry could get into their lair. Henry was not afraid of his legs and shouted to the goblin to return him and his mother. But the goblin was about to attack Henry when suddenly Merlin saved him. The boy was very surprised that Merlin appeared right in front of him and that he was so strong. Henry was surprised that Merlin did not conduct any fighting. One move in an instant cut the goblin in half. Merlin tried to cheer Henry up and told him that the young man did a good job and almost defeated that goblin. So he gave him 99 points out of 100. But since he ran away alone to such a dangerous place, he deducted the 99 points given to him and according to the results, his score remained 0 points out of 100. Henry was thinking about Uncle Merlin's ball technique, how powerful it was. The boy realized that Uncle Merlin had not lied to him from the very beginning. When he praised his technique of rapid decapitation so much, he was stupid and did not consider him arrogant in the rune because of anything. Henry's eyes were shining, and he was looking at Merlin. Merlin was trying to ask if Henry was okay. The boy grabbed Merlin's leg and said that everything was fine with him, asking his uncle to teach him his technique of rapid decapitation. Merlin said that he offered him to learn this technique, but the boy refused, and even so rudely, so now he will not teach Henry this technique. But the boy did not back down and asked Merlin to teach him this technique. He was even ready to kneel and was already on his knees so that he taught him. But Merlin said that he would not teach him this technique even if he begged him on his knees. Then Miss Martha saw their quarrel, which was fine and Henry rushed to his mom. Henry was happy for his mom and saw that she was fine, because he was afraid that the goblins would kill her. They hugged, and mom said that she was fine because Mrs. Alice saved them. But it was very dangerous here, and mom asked Henry what he was doing here. The kid said that Uncle Merlin brought him here and he was with him. Henry said Uncle Merlin was in charge. Henry told me how strong and powerful Merlin was. The kid shouted to his mom that Merlin alone was able to kill a giant goblin with one blow. Merlin, watching the whole situation, considered the boy not a very good person. Because because of him, his mother could cut Merlin's salary, so he decided that he would definitely not teach little Henry the sword technique. Miss Martha looked at Merlin and asked if Henry really wasn't lying and everything he said was true. Then Merlin, if he was so strong, could he help Mistress Alice? Miss Martha asked him about it. She talked about Alice fighting the Goblin Emperor alone and she sacrificed herself in order to save all the girls. Miss Martha was afraid that the Great Goblin King was too strong for Alice alone. Meanwhile, the fight between Alice and the Goblin King continued, the Goblin King discovered Alice, and she did not understand how he could do it, but he told her that he guessed that the blizzard that the girl had created was just a trick to divert his eyes and he finally caught her held in his fist. The Demon King said that Alice jumped up and down quickly and managed to anger him so much in such a short time, but since she was so ready to fall in battle, so why did she decide to retreat? At the same time, he squeezed Alice in his fist, which was insanely painful for the girl. Miss Martha was standing next to her son. All the girls who had been abducted by goblins were around them. Miss Martha asked Merlin to save Alice and help her, because Miss Martha was afraid that Alice, fighting alone with the goblin emperor, 
would not improve. Merlin didn't understand why he had to help her, but then he thought that if he saved Alice, would his chance increase that she would vouch for him so that he could become an adventurer. Miss Martha also said that if you young man will help Alice, she will triple his salary for half a month. Merlin tried to make a saint of himself and said that he was offended. He thought that Sister Martha took him for a greedy man who was willing to do anything for money, and only after saying this did he see that Sister Martha and Henry both stood and were silent after his phrase, and silence was a sign of agreement. Then Merlin said out loud that his feelings and sympathy for Miss Alice could not be destroyed by some kind of money, and after hearing this, Miss Martha said that it was great and asked him to be careful. Henry, who was standing next to him, wished Merlin to come back alive and teach him his ball technique. Merlin went into the depths of the cave, and he agreed to teach Henry, only on condition that Henry would take care of his mother and take her to a safe place. And he, in turn, will go to Alice and help her save everyone from the Goblin King. The Goblin King continued to squeeze Alice and talking about what a beautiful expression the girl had when he tortured her. He became more and more interested in Alice every second and informed her about it. While he was carried away by this moment, Alice was able to attack him with her ice and frost technique, it was her heaven's wrath technique. Above them was a ceiling of ice icicles that fell on the demon king, and Alice was able to get out of his clutches. The demon king did not understand how the girl could treat him like that. Alice explained that it was the result of his contempt for her, and now she will give him a good test of her technique and the sword of the snow-capped mountains. Alice went to attack the demon king using all her techniques against him. After attacking the Demon King and wounding him in every possible way, the Demon King fell to Alice's knees right in front of her. She was glad and thought that it was finally over, but then suddenly the wounds of the Demon King began to heal, and he was ready to fight again. Alice did not understand why he did not die, because she pierced his heart. Even the bearers of the Holy Rank were not able to resist being pierced through the heart. Goblin also said that their heart was on the right side, not on the left, and told Alice that she had apparently never read about it. The Demon King said that this was what knowledge changes fate meant. But the girl was right that because of his contempt, he underestimated her, and he would not be so supportive further, so she could not expect mercy. Alice realized that her affairs were bad, but defended herself with an ice wall against the Goblin King. The Goblin King ran to attack Alice and said that her insignificant ice barrier would not be able to block the Goblin King's attack. At that moment, he attacked Alice and she, unable to stay on her feet, fell to the floor. The goblin, picking her up from the ground, said that she would remain his slave until the end of her days. Alice realized that everything was very bad, but then Merlin saved her. Taking the girl in his arms, he went home, while he cut off the goblin king's hand. He didn't understand what had happened and wanted to deal with the demon king. Merlin, holding Alice in his arms, did not understand why the girl tried so hard for the sake of strangers. She was all wounded and unconscious, and he did not understand at all and thought that she had no awareness of the value of her own life, so he considered her very stupid. Merlin put Alice near the column in the hall and said that they had met not so long ago after such a long separation, so he could not let her die, but he would not condemn her and therefore decided that she should have a good rest, and he would take on this big guy. Alice woke up and I saw the swordsman walking away towards the goblin. He was so strong and determined, even from the back he looked so powerful, she didn't understand if he had come here to save her when she was in a dangerous situation. Falling asleep again, she thought about Mr. Swordsman Elgin and confessed that she loved him very much. Merlin, hearing this at first did not understand what she said and turned around to look at Alice, but then the goblin interrupted his thoughts and asked why he came here, to fight or to breed snot, while offering to continue his game. The goblin did not understand that first one hero entered the palace, and then a second one appeared. Showing his hand to Merlin, he said that he was able to cut it off before Merle had time to react. Apparently Merlin possessed extraordinary skill, however, when the goblin was in a rage, he was able to heal instantly from his wounds and the arm grew in place where the bones had been sticking out until recently. The goblin did not understand what Merlin was thinking. Challenging the great goblin king was like going to certain death. But Merlin said that no matter what opponent stood in front of him, he could easily kill him. If, having drawn his sword, the goblin thought that he could defeat Merlin, then he was very much mistaken. Goblin was only amused by such speeches, and he attacked Merlin. Merlin dodged, and the goblin saw that the young man really could resist against his blow. He really was different from ordinary people and asked what the young man's name was. Merlin, pushing aside the beam that began to fall on him, asked the goblin king what his rank was, asking the question as if to himself and answering it the same way to himself, which was right, the rank was very low, so the goblin had no right to know his name. 
Then the goblin decided to introduce himself. Goblin was one of the 13 emperors of the goblin clan, and he dared to call himself the most talented among all. And after a while he would launch a larger scale attack and he needed these girls to make a huge army. Goblin wanted to unite Wales and become the ruler of all mankind. If the young man wanted to, then the goblin could make him his deputy by giving a huge army to his guardianship. And not every goblin is honored with such an honor. And at the same time the goblin king extended his hand to Merlin. Merlin laughed. For him it was very funny how the goblin tried to lure him to his side. The guy understood that the goblin was scared and asked why he did not behave like a man. Raising his finger up, Merlin said that in this world no one can defeat him, so no one is worthy to take his pawns. Yes, even if the goddess of light herself asks to become her deputy, he will immediately refuse, Merlin told the goblin. With his proposal, the goblin was offended by Merlin's words, and he felt humiliated, so he will turn Merlin into fertilizer for the garden. The goblin ran to attack and said that if Merlin didn't want it to be good, it would be bad, but Merlin didn't care. He was just thinking about how such a big goblin could jump up so high. The goblin saw that Merlin was mocking him and thought about how to teach him a lesson to send the impudent man straight to hell and jumping high up. He raised his club over Merlin. Smiling, the goblin thought that this was his pride. Even the owner of a high rank is not able to put up against it. After its action, even the corpse will not remain intact. But Merlin was different and asked, coming out from under the rubble of stones, whether this was the strongest goblin technique, as he called it there. Merlin asked, his pride, as far as he understood. Now Merlin was ready to show him his blow and, drawing his sword, attacked the goblin. Before falling apart into two parts, the goblin thought that the young man was able not only to avoid his strongest blow, but also to strike back after that. It was admirable, but then he realized that he had been struck down, the damage exceeded his ceiling of possible recovery, and he looked at the young man, asking who this Merlin was, how such a stranger could be so powerful. He must have been a celebrity, these were the goblin's last thoughts. Merlin was curious who could cause such a disturbance in the village, maybe it was some mighty king. But it turned out to be just a pathetic goblin. He very much disappointed the young man. The young man said that the goblin was wrong. He was not very strong. Just a goblin. He was very weak in himself. So weak that he did not deserve to bear the title of king. And he was also unworthy of being called a worthy opponent of Merlin. Merlin considered him worthless after these words. The goblin king fell to the floor without breathing. Merlin had previously thought that this battle had come as quickly as ever, but after all, the goblin was the bearer of the best saint rank, so the pain from his heart curse should have softened for a while. Just then Merlin thought that it was time to return the girl to her place, talking about Alice, as he saw the treasures of the goblins. There were chests and caskets of gold. Looking at what had fallen in front of him, he saw a huge amount of coins and it was a wonderful feeling. Shouldn't this amount have been enough for the dream of just eating and waiting for your death to come true? At the same time, Merlin was looking at the gold, but then the ceiling began to collapse because the battle with the High Goblin King made the dungeon begin to collapse. Merlin looked at the gold and thought that if he tried very hard, his dexterous hands and feet would be able to carry away more than half of all these treasures from here. But it would take some time, so he definitely would not have time to save Alice. The young man thought that he would definitely be fine. But if the girl was in his place, then she would definitely be buried alive by all these ruins and would undoubtedly die. There was a choice between Merlin, choose Alice and save her or take the gold. He, of course, chose Alice. Taking Alice in his arms and running out of the dungeon, he talked about how she was a thorn and now she owed him hundreds of millions of gold coins when they returned. If she did not introduce him to the Adventurer's Guild, he would strangle her. The men waiting outside saw their daughters and wives. Everyone was very happy to be reunited. Here the elder pointed to the mountain that had just collapsed. Everyone understood that it was an underground goblin palace. Henry was also standing and waiting for Uncle Merlin and Big Sister to be able to get out of there. Miss Martha put her hand on Henry's shoulder and asked him not to worry because Mr. Merlin was a very strong man, such as he would not die from some kind of collapse. Henry rejoiced at his mother's words and the elder standing next to them noticed that Merlin and Mistress Alice had come out of the dungeon. Merlin was carrying Mistress Alice in his arms, because the girl was unconscious. When Merlin took Alice out of the dungeon, everyone cheered him and talked about how he was able to save the girl, calling Merlin amazing. People said that he was not as useless as they thought of him before, and many asked for forgiveness for what they had done before. From now on they will no longer forbid their mothers to visit the restaurant. Merlin, on the other hand, thought that he would never be a hero again, sadly remembering the mountain of gold that was in the goblin cave and asked to return those gold coins from the treasury to him. 
Later at the Moonlight Tavern, Merlin brought Alice and put her on the bed. The girl had serious wounds and was unconscious. Merlin understood that the girl was very seriously injured if she was not cured, she could have died. But now he could do whatever he wanted with her, because Alice usually treated him without any respect. And now she was lying in front of him, here, unconscious. All this amused Merlin, and he would never have thought that Alice would ever be able to arouse his interest. But seriously, what he will do next is not using Alice in such a situation and fulfilling his whims just for treatment. Because if he does not show the injuries to the doctor, then he will not be able to heal her here. Alice woke up and began to remember what had happened. The last thing that reminded her was how she was attacked by the mace of the Goblin Emperor. Then the legendary swordsman Elgin appeared and she could not remember anything at all. Then Miss Martha came into her door, asking if the girl was awake. Sitting next to Alice's bed, Miss Martha brought her a basin of water and said that she had not slept all night because of excitement. But now that she saw that Alice was all right, she could exhale with relief. Alice apologized. She was very sorry that Miss Martha had to be so uncomfortable. Miss Martha also said that Alice was brought here from the Goblin Palace last night. Mistress Alice had such serious wounds that if not for Merlin's intervention, the girl could have died. Alice was shocked by Miss Martha's words about Merlin saving her. Alice was thinking that the very Lucifer III, who is the most real empty mouth, the laziest person in the kingdom and does not care about anyone but himself, really saved her. Miss Marta, saying that if she understood correctly, then in the past the guys did not have the best relationships. But when a person made mistakes, then you can forgive him or correct them. Miss Martha also talked about how the guys used to be ex-lovers and is it bad to be together, because Merlin had reformed and it was possible to shake hands and start all over again. After hearing about former lovers, Alice said that this was not the case. It all seemed like a dream to her, what kind of misunderstanding is this, Alice thought to herself. Did their relationship look like that? As, in her opinion, she and Merlin were like two sworn enemies. Miss Martha, smiling at Miss Alice, said that she understood everything perfectly and knew because Mrs. Alice was a young girl and was very shy. Alice understood that she had just made the situation worse. Asking herself, the girl thought that she had been saved by the Demon King and it was a shame. But it was impossible to miss that now she was in an irreplaceable debt to Merlin, and this was an indisputable fact. The girl asked Miss Martha to call Merlin to her. Miss Martha thanked Mistress Alice and said that it was not worth being so polite to her, because the fact that the two of them were now safe next to each other was the most important thing. Here came the guys who were also adventurers. They wanted to express their gratitude to Miss Alice for the fact that, after all, if not for her, they both could not survive. After all, she was now their benefactor, and they would pray for her for the rest of their lives. Merlin was standing near the door all this time and listening to what the guys were talking about. They will forever remember her kindness and will keep it in their hearts and pass it on to their children. The guys told Alice. Merlin thought to himself that it was obvious that the girl was the stupidest hero in history. But even so people were grateful to her. Maybe being a hero isn't so bad. Merlin thought that this is what is needed to win the hearts of ordinary people, an incomprehensible zeal to do good deeds and go forward without fear of difficulties. After looking at the guys who were a couple and were leaving Alice's room, Merlin decided to come in. The young man asked Alice if she felt better. Merlin also said that Sister Marta asked him to come to Alice and said that the girl was calling him. Sitting down on a chair, he asked what was the matter. Alice, embarrassed, said that since the young man consciously came to her aid and saved her when she was in a difficult situation, she could not help but thank him. She only asked not to misunderstand her. Because of what he had done, she did not hate him now. But this does not mean that she forgave him. The young man thought about why what had happened was radically different from what he had imagined. He did not understand why the girl was not going to give herself with her whole body and soul, or offer herself as a wife. Then at least she had to cry bitterly in his arms. Merlin said that he would not accept it. He needed her, and after all, he was saving the girl for a reason. Merlin wanted Alice to repay him and said that he would not torment her with what he wanted. But he wanted to become an adventurer, so he asked Alice to introduce him to the guild. Alice, looking at Merlin, said that it was simply impossible. And Merlin was disappointed, because the girl treated her savior unfairly. Alice said that if Merlin would help her pay off the debt she got into because of him, then she would think about it. Even if he had saved her, he shouldn't have thought that she had to do something for him. Merlin said that tomorrow he would tell the bards everything that the girl was a hero of the 233rd generation, and did not seek to thank her savior, and this was a very low act. 
Alice was sitting in her bed and talking about how he would never get forgiveness from her by threatening to slander her reputation, and a recommendation to the guild, too. Merlin, sitting down next to her bed on a chair, said that her threats against him sounded very nice, but since Alice is so cruel, and would not like to thank her savior. Tomorrow the whole city will know that once the valiant hero Alice turned out to be a low immoral person. Merlin was already starting to leave her room, but Alice asked him to stop. Merlin understood that a girl like Alice cannot resist pressure from the outside for a long time and I think to myself that she should be nice and obedient and become his stepping stone into the world of high-ranking society. In the evening, a girl appeared at the crash site of the goblin nest who got out from under the rubble and said that if it wasn't for the main news of today, she would never have found out that this group of goblins hid underground in the valley and going into their dungeon. She raised a pillar and asked him to show his true the form. The pillar opened and there was a key in it. This key immediately fell into the hands of this girl. It was the third key to the Legion of Hell and it was finally in her hands. The girl stood on the site of the destroyed goblin kingdom and held in her hands a key for which she had gone through a lot to find it. And yet it was very easy for her to get this key. A black hole formed over the girl's head and someone called her, calling the girl by the name of Carolina. The girl sat down on one knee and addressed her highness, from the black hole. She was asked if Caroline had received the key, and Caroline replied that she had the key. Apparently, the rumor is that the key is located in the surrogate branch were true and it is not surprising that they did not migrate to the south and refused to join the kingdom. These goblins were guarding the key, said the girl from the black hole. Caroline agreed with her queen and said that this was the whole point but she did not think that goblins could hide so well. From the black hole, the queen continued to answer that the plan for the revival of the former state was ready for execution, and as long as they have the strength of the Hell Squad, overthrowing Britonia will be a no-brainer. Carolina said that she was ready to bet her soul for the sake of the revival of the state. The next day Merlin and Mistress Alice were leaving the village and everyone saw them off. Someone, of course, did not want the chick to leave, and someone just talked about the guys coming back again. Merlin waved to Henry and asked him to take care of his mother. Henry shouted to Merlin that he would take care of his mother and that he would not worry. But when he had an aura, he would go to Wrexham to find Merlin. Miss Martha screamed at Merlin to marry Mistress Alice and then they lived a happy life. Both Alice and Merlin got into the carriage and thought that this was the worst curse they had not heard in their entire lives, namely Miss Martha's wishes to get married. After five minutes, they began to quarrel because Alice addressed Merlin as a chick and asked how he could not respect her, and Merlin said that how Alice dared to despise him and who she thought she was. Merlin said that a lot of people came to see him off and asked Alice to pull the pads out from under her forms and then he would see if someone would come to see her off or not. Alice talked about how her smooth curves were needed to absorb damage, not to hide her flaws, and that it was good to be a star for middle-aged women. The young man thought that this was a ridiculous reason and asked Alice to admit that Alice wanted the young man to die laughing, and thus be freed from his debt to him at that moment Merlin fell out of the carriage because Alice pushed him out, and they continued to quarrel. Alice was standing on the cart, and Merlin was sitting on the ground and holding onto her leg. The girl did not understand how he dared to say such a thing. He was so poor that he could not even afford to buy a ticket to Wrexham and therefore went with her. She immediately asked him to get out of her cart. Merlin also said that this was how he expressed his respect for the girl by getting on this slow donkey. Didn't Alice see that the quality of this rundown carriage had improved because he was here? Alice did not see that the quality of the carriage had improved and asked the demon king to get out of it, because she did not want to see him. As soon as they left the city, they immediately began to quarrel and it was seen by Miss Martha, who thought that the guys get along very well. The journey to Wrexham was not boring. The guys quarreled for days and nights. Alice and Merlin argued a hundred times a day and mocked each other. So a week passed until they reached Wrexham. Alice was thinking that she had finally returned and wanted to come to the guild as soon as possible and send this demon to hell. Merlin was thinking that he would soon become an adventurer of the highest rank and would receive huge amounts of awards, and this girl would envy and be jealous of him. The building in front of the guys was the same adventurer's guild that was in the city of Wrexham. They went inside and saw a swordsman who was standing next to the ball. Some of the guys nearby stood next to this swordsman and watched what the holy rank showed them in the ball and thought about who this swordsman was. Merlin, on the other hand, reasoned that the holy rank was not such a cool position and recalled that goblin emperor. Alice also said that there was a difference between them, too. There are only three saint rank people in this guild, including the old guild master. She didn't think there would be another one today, Alice told Merlin. 
the young man thought that this was very little, because he had a bunch of subordinates of the holy rank when he was the demon king, and at the same time considered the guild to be poor. Then someone came out and told Alice that she had returned her old love. And hugging Merlin, a young man came out with a beer, asking how Merlin managed to tame this wild horse, pointing his finger at Alice. Then he told Alice that Arnold would cry in the toilet after learning that the girl had returned her love. Alice, looking at Hobbes, explained that they are not in such a relationship and if he does not stop, then she will not hold back. Hobbes asked the girl not to be so angry and not to take everything seriously, because the girl will not become popular with guys if she constantly gets into fights. Immediately offered to see how charming Lujia and her voice and body were more gentle. Again, someone had just given a rose to Lujia and really Alice was not jealous of her in any way. Alice, looking at Lujia, thought that she was not jealous of her and greeted the girl, and she greeted Alice, smiling at the girl with all her mouth. Lujia told Alice that they had not seen each other for a long time and asked what the girl had got this time. Alice asked not to remind Lujia about this and said that she had just come to recommend one person. She pointed his hand at Merlin and said that he wanted to become an adventurer. Merlin turned to the beautiful lady and said that it was him. When Luja saw the guy, she thought she would never accept it and asked Alice when she managed to get a boyfriend and how she could get married before her, because she was more popular. Alice, hitting her friend on the head, said that she should not worry, because they had not met. Luja didn't understand what was going on and asked if it was true. Alice explained that for some reason the young man needed her recommendation. Previously, he was listed as a wanted criminal by the owners of restaurants and he was a fugitive. Luja pleased the guy with the fact that the young man came to the right place. Upon joining the guild, all his misdemeanors will be annulled, and he will be able to pay his debts while he works. The young man was glad that even his misdeeds would disappear, it was wonderful. Luja suggested that Merlin first test his strength. The girl pointed to the pyramid, where the levels of the adventurer were arranged according to gradation. Merlin asked about the fact that the higher his rank, the greater the privileges, whether this was really the case. Luja said that monthly allowances and privileges would be different. The higher the rank of the task, the higher the reward will be. Merlin realized that there was no point in being an adventurer if he couldn't take top rank assignments. Luja asked the young man not to worry. If his rank is a little low initially, then even if he is not too strong, he will be able to increase the rank by gaining experience, which is why it was necessary to take more tasks. Luja suddenly remembered that an old man who was 102 years old worked hard here. He became a silver rank adventurer after completing 9 million lower level tasks. Merlin was afraid of what kind of a way of leveling the rank was in this system. Luja was talking about a faster way to increase rank, namely to become stronger. By becoming stronger, your rank will also increase, Luja said. The young man asked what was most important in the end was his own strength, but if that was the case, then this old man was wasting his life, which Luja mentioned earlier. The Adventurer's Guild evaluated everyone very fairly, and even an in-tourist of Amethyst rank can be demoted if he does not work for a long time or carries a bad influence in society. According to the rules, he can be demoted to the iron rank and pointing to the ball Luja asked Mr. Merlin to bring his hand to the crystal ball, and the ball will shine with a color that corresponds to his strength. Here Merlin activated his fantasy mode. He thought that it was too cliched to check his power of touching the crystal ball, and he asked the author to think about replacing touching the crystal ball with something more pleasant after looking at Luja. But it was all just jokes and after that he I decided to approach the ball to test my strength. Reaching for the ball, he said that they would mercifully show everyone the omnipotent power of his great one and let the great mortals tremble before him. Everyone held their breath before the young man began to lean his hand against the ball. At the moment when the young man leaned his hand against the ball, nothing happened. Luja, saying that it was pity, embraced the young man that the ball had no reaction, so Mr. Merlin could not become an adventurer. Everyone in the building laughed and talked about how the young man wanted to become an adventurer with such strength, because he couldn't even master a goblin, and asked where the young man gained stamina and courage, because it was a risky job, and someone asked Merlin to be a little more honest by throwing his strength and coming here again when his strength will reach the desired level. Alice sat next to Merlin and asked about what was wrong with him. Merlin said that the girl saw him in the battle, was it so, because he simply had neither mana nor aura. Alice realized that at that time, it was Merlin who defeated so many monsters, which meant that perhaps because of his high level and the technique of rapid decapitation, he no longer needed either mana or aura to fight. Alice couldn't understand how it was possible that nothing was needed for the ball technique. The young man asked him to treat him as unusual. Wasn't it Alice who told him that he could become an adventurer if someone recommended him? 
At that moment, Alice sighed sadly and turned to Luja. She asked if she could recommend this young man. She assured that he was capable of this job. Luja said that a few years ago, the headquarters disbanded adventurers of the wooden rank, who were formed from ordinary people and it is clearly written in the rules that the guild does not take people who do not have at least low-level strength. Merlin was surprised that everyone wanted to believe in ordinary crystal ball. Then the solution was obvious, he asked to tell the strongest person from the guild to come and fight with him. Any problems would be solved if he won and he asked for confirmation of his words. Then the old Mr. Guild appeared, some thought about whether Mr. Guild himself wanted to check the young man. Luja said that Grandpa was a saint rank expert who was able to kill a giant with one blow at the age of 17. He was also a big man in the martial arts world of Britonia. Grandpa is the best fighter in Wales and the thunderclap fighting technique that he invented is invisible to the human eye. Does Merlin dare to accept his challenge? Mr. Guild said that he had seen a lot of young men who still had milk on their lips. If he did not move his old body, then people would think that there was no one left in the Rexham Guild. Marlin, on the other hand, thought that this was exactly what he needed right now and offered to fight Mr. Guild right now. The guild master reported that this place would be too small for their sparring, and there was a training hall in the guild's backyard. There would be enough space, so he offered to fight Merlin there and asked him to follow him. This duel will be between the young man and him, so he asked not to follow them. Alice was asking Luga why the old guild master wouldn't let the others watch it. Luja said that her grandfather was worried that there would be a huge gap in strength between them, and if the blonde loses, then observers can easily hurt his self-esteem. Every year, he was challenged by St. Rank adventurers, but they all returned with a crushing defeat. Alice was surprised that even the St. Ranks couldn't compare together with Mr. Guild. Luja also mentioned that her father said that Grandfather had never lost by reaching the St. Rank. They came to the ring, and the Grandfather addressed the young man, saying that he was an ordinary person, and he was a St. Rank fighter, so he could attack him with full force. If he could get him to take a step back, then Mr. Guild had lost, and the young man had won. It really surprised Merlin that Mr. Guild asked him to attack with full force. Merlin asked Mr. Guild not to blink and look carefully, because his technique of rapid decapitation was quite nimble and grabbed the hilt of his sword. Mr. Guild asked to show him his strength, standing in front of the young man and leaning on his staff. Then Merlin, taking his sword out of its scabbard, attacked Mr. Guild, surprising him with his blow. The blow was so strong that it cut half the village. Mr. Guild fell to the floor and asked the young man how it was possible. Merlin replied that he should not worry, because he only hit with the butt of the sword. If he attacked with the blade, then Mr. Guild would be dead. Mr. Guild was thinking that if he had responded with his full strength, then maybe, even most likely, he would have already been instantly killed and was thinking to himself who this young man was. Merlin and Alice were leaving and saying goodbye to all Luja. I asked Grandpa about why he gave a recommendation to this young man that he was too arrogant for an ordinary person and whether there was a need to show his strength. The girl said that they were lucky that after such a blow they managed without the wounded, but still need to somehow compensate for a large amount of money for the restoration of damaged houses. Everyone behind Mr. Guild and Luja were thinking that it was unimaginable how an ordinary person could anger a guild master. What exactly happened at that moment? They saw that the attack was specifically aimed so as to avoid falling into the crowd, and this was a skill. And they were also interested in why Mr. Guild made an exception and gave the young man adventurer certificates. Striking with his staff, Mr. Guilds made it clear to everyone to stop talking and asked everyone to be quieter because he had his own thoughts on this, and he asked not to talk about this topic anymore and just close it. Alice and Merlin moved along the village and saw how much damage Merlin inflicted with his sword. Then Merlin, holding his badge and adventurer in his hands, recalled the guild master who told him about mana and aura, which were the only indicators that the management used for routine checks. But for him the master decided to make an exception. Looking at his adventurer badge again, Merlin saw that he had received an iron rank. Merlin was offended that he was worse than Alice. Alice couldn't believe that Merlin really defeated the guild master. The young man believed that it was not quite the same. Killing was the only victory for him. What he did was just showing a piece of his strength. Their guild master was quite ordinary. If we talk about it, he is a little stronger than the seven generals that Merlin fought with. Alice thought she knew. A big man in the art world known all over the continent was fighting with a giant and all this was bragging and marketing against Merlin's background. How many years did she need to train to defeat him, thereby erasing her humiliation? Was it really impossible for a lifetime? Merlin, holding his adventurer badge in his hands, talked about some problems. But starting today he is an adventurer and now you can live a life where he only kills monsters and robs money. 
Without using his brain, Merlin thought he would definitely buy himself the coolest house in Bretonia. Pallas also said that he wouldn't even think about it. If he could pay the rent it would be fine. She asked the young man not to invent anything for himself. Being the weakest adventurer, he could go to bed and dream about what he wants. Hearing that the girl called him the weakest, it hurt his self-esteem a little. He told Alice that she treated him incorrectly, because his rank was lower, but tomorrow he would take a large number of tasks and earn so much that she would not gain in 10 years. Alice asked him to do whatever he wanted and waved to him, because their paths diverge. Merlin hoped that he would never meet her again and spoke aloud about it to Alice, going in the other direction. But then he realized that he had no money or tickets and he did not know where to sleep tonight. This question was heard in his head. It started raining outside, and he met a girl under an umbrella, asking if she needed matches. He also just stood under the roof and sold a box of matches to everyone who passed by, saying that the matches were moisture resistant. At the end, he lit a match and warmed himself with it, because it was cold and it was raining outside. Marin thought that he would really sleep on the street today. He would not have spent money on a trip with a donkey if he had known that such a thing would happen. Getting up, he decided that he didn't care what happened. He would go to Alice and take food from her. Alice, sitting in her bathroom, thought about how wonderful her life was and how well she could relax. In her head, she was already imagining Merlin, thinking about who would give him a job being an iron rank. In any case, he won't be able to take a higher rank assignment. Sitting in a warm bathroom, Alice began to pray to the Lord that he would make this bastard Merlin sleep on the street. Like a beggar at that moment Marilyn sneezed. Alice imagined that it would be ideal if he suffered from cold and hunger and no one would pay attention to the matches he sells. It was raining outside, and Alice was sitting in her warm bath, but then someone started ringing. She did not understand whether it was the hostess who was breaking so insistently, or someone else came. Putting on her slippers and wrapped in a towel, she opened the door and asked the hostess not to come at night, but then Merlin stood on her doorstep not the hostess. Merlin tried to look charming and greeted Alice, wishing her a good evening. He asked if Alice wanted to spend time with a man on such a wonderful night, because Merlin would give her a shoulder and leave good memories if she would let him stay for a couple of days. As soon as Merlin finished speaking, Alice's leg appeared on his face. The young man realized that Alice was too hostile and this trick with a cute face would not work. At that moment, Merlin flew far away from the door and the door slammed in front of him. Alice asked you not to mess with her anymore. Lying on the ground, Merlin was thinking about how his face hurt, and then a man appeared in front of him, who asked what Merlin was doing in front of the house. Then the doorbell started ringing again. Alice got out of her bathroom again and took up the sword. She was talking about how she could no longer and asked not to try her luck by turning to Merlin. But then the hostess turned out to be on her doorstep. The hostess said that in the lease agreement it was clearly stated that the girl could not use weapons in the house Alice immediately hit her sword. Merlin asked what kind of show Alice had put on here and how she could wave a weapon in someone else's house, asking her to put the sword away right now. Alice was angry that the young man scolded her and then the hostess asked Miss Alice to monitor her behavior, even though she was an outsider, but she had to read the girl. How could she live her days together if they arranged such quarrels right after the wedding? Alice realized that Merlin had lied to the hostess and pointing at him with her finger said that he had nothing in common with this guy. Merlin, making a sad face, asked Alice why she was still angry at him and how she could talk about the fact that they were not married. The hostess told Alice that she was afraid that she would no longer be able to continue to provide her with rent in this house because she was very scared that the girl could demolish her house when she was in a bad mood. Alice tried to assure the hostess that she usually did not wave her sword at home. Then the hostess asked her to put away her sword and let her husband enter without making a fool of herself in front of the neighbors in the middle of the night. The young man asked Alice because she didn't want to be kicked out and I apologized to her for the inconvenience caused. He said that he was used to the bad temper of his beloved and from now on he would tell the girl to control herself. Merlin hugged Alice and both of them, embarrassed, tried to appease the hostess. The hostess looked at them and said that a day spent together as husband and wife means endless devotion until the end of your days and it would be bad if they quarreled over all sorts of little things. At that moment Alice stepped on Merlin's foot for all that he had just done. Immediately the hostess asked to pay the rent for this month, and Alice went to bring the money. The hostess looked at Merlin and said that although Alice had a bad temper, she was a good girl, so he had to cherish her, because she looked so unhappy when she was looking for housing everywhere. Merlin looked sadly in the direction of Alice did not understand whether it was really so hard for the girl. 
It sounded miserable, and he wondered if it was all because of him. The next moment, the hostess gave Merlin the key if he was kicked out again. The young man, after accepting the key, said that the hostess should not worry, because the young man would take care of the girl. When the hostess left Merlin sighed with joy and shouted to the whole house that housing was provided for him. Then he decided to make fun of Alice and asked her to put on her breast pads, saying that it was his stupid suggestion. Immediately, Alice's sword flew towards him. Then, seeing the sword pointing his way, the young man held it with two fingers and asked if Alice had forgotten that he was now her husband and if she did not want to remain a widow, then there was no need to point the sword at him. Merlin's words confused Alice very much, and she thought that he was too shameless. Merlin reminded her that this house would instantly turn into splinters if he took out his sword. But Alice would compensate for everything, so first the girl had to think before pointing her sword at him. Alice cursed Merlin to herself, sooner or later she would beat him every day, and he would not be able to answer and would become her obedient servant. This was her cherished wish. Then Alice decided to ask what the young man wanted from her and whether he just wanted to hang around. Merlin sat down, asked Alice not to get excited. He came up with a winning situation for both of them. After she hears this option, she won't kick him out. After hearing this, she realized that until Merlin told her about this plan, he would not leave and therefore asked him to speak. Picking up a banana from the table, he addressed Miss Alice as dear and talked about why you wouldn't pay rent for this house together. The young man knew that it was hard to pay rent to Alice because she was tight with money, and therefore he offered to share this payment with someone else. Alice was talking, that the young man's words made sense, but why should she share this house with him? Because they were enemies with him. Merlin asked when this happened and suggested that Alice start with a clean slate. Alice thought that she would not start with a clean slate with Merlin, but she would be able to save a lot of money for each month if they lived together. Then she agreed and said that they would pay together, but now he sleeps on the couch and asked to give it to the rent plan now. Then Merlin gave her the peel of a banana that he had just eaten. Then he will give Alice money when he starts working and missions from the rank will be a trivial matter for him. Then he can easily get rich. The next morning there was a horse race in the institution. Merlin also went to participate in them and put everything on Edward, who rode the slowest. Luja, on the other hand, watched quite from the sidelines and thought why did grandfather give such a person certificates of an adventurer, thinking the same way whether Merlin was an illegitimate child. Grandpa even compensated for yesterday's damage. She really didn't understand why he did that. Giving beautiful flowers, the man told Miss Alice that she should accept these beautiful roses and no matter how beautiful these flowers are, they will be doomed by her beauty. Alice tried to politely refuse, but Arnold got down on one knee again and offered her flowers. Everyone understood that it was inconvenient for Alice, but Arnold again offered her his attention. Then Hobbs came up and asked Arnold to stop wasting his strength on Alice, pointing to the blonde Merlin who replaced him and successfully got the love of his dreams. Then the angry Arnold asked Merlin to tell him what was happening between him and Miss Alice. Taking out his sword, he realized that the young man was threatening him and therefore he, Arnold, the eldest son Count Austin challenged Merlin to a duel. Merlin did not take it seriously, because there was no need for this, because he had nothing to do with Alice. Then Hobbes reminded him that they lived together, as he had nothing to do with Miss Alice. Hearing this Arnold was angry, because he found out that they they lived together and it was unbearable for him. Alice also asked not to talk nonsense to Hobbes, because they did not live together. This guy broke into her house yesterday, and she pointed at Merlin. Arnold said that strength is not the only characteristic that measures not only a person's charisma, but also his ability to make Alice change her mind and show her charm. Arnold showed Miss Alice a mission that had recently appeared in Denbyshire, and everyone could take part. Why don't they take her for their competition with Merlin? Arnold showed Merlin the mission and invited him to compete in it using the force to prove himself and they would see who was suitable for Miss Alice. Alice just looked from the side and wondered why no one cared about her opinion. Alice decided to ask what we were talking about. But Luja said that the mission from Denbyshire had recently started collecting adventurers. She had heard that some tomb robbers had approached the dungeon and activated traps there, after that the undead began to appear. It was a terrible situation for civilians and there were not enough people in the active army, so they offered this mission to adventurers. Arnold told Miss Alice, to be honest, he hired a saint rank for this mission after spending a huge amount of money, so it would be easy to get the full reward. He will be grateful if Alice joins his team. Hearing about the holy rank, Alice decided to ask who it was, then Arnold reminded the girl about yesterday's swordsman who joined their guild, it was Mr. Claude. Mr. Claude was interested in Denbyshire, so the young man gave him money to join Arnold's team. 
Alice thought that with the Saint rank, Arnold's team was assured of victory and decided to join them. A joyful Arnold asked Luigi to put a stamp. Arnold was overjoyed and told Marlin that the competition between the men had begun. Soon Merlin will find out that with money you can do anything. Alice was leaving, not wanting to listen to their conversations much, and Arnold, no longer wanting to brag, ran after Alice. Merlin, after looking at the mission that Arnold had in his hands, also told Miss Luja that he would like to take it. Then Luja reported that the young man and the team had to at least take two people. He did not understand why he could not fight alone. But Luja explained that these were the rules and apologized to Mr. Merlin. Then Merlin grabbed Hobbs and talked about this guy going with him. Luja was afraid that it was impossible. But then the guild master appeared and asked to allow Luja to do it and let them go. The girl started to object, but Grandpa insisted that Luja let them go. Merlin thanked the head of the guild and went on his mission with Hobbs, who was just drinking beer. After getting into a posh carriage, Arnold asked Mr. Claude if he knew Miss Alisau, a gold rank adventurer, and after introducing her, he now said that they were a team, offering to shake hands to cooperate and try to become a team. But Claude asked to forget about cooperation and leave strong opponents to him, and to deal with the small and weak ones who will remain after him in the end. He will go to the lower level in the dungeon, and they do not need to follow him. These words of Claude surprised Miss Alice and Arnold very much. Then Arnold started laughing and asked Mr. Claude to take care of their safety. They will of course be very careful, but they will try to help him. Mr. Claude didn't understand who told them they could help him. He will be honest if they restrain him, then he will leave them. Alice did not understand why he treated them like that. Was the holy rank so great? This knight was not a professional. Then she thought about how she became more perceptive after she watched the gelding kill others with one blow. If she had known that this would happen, she would have gone alone and she was wondering if Merlin had found someone to join the team. After leaving the guild building, Merlin was thinking about where to get him from the cart. He had nothing but problems, but he knew that he would borrow it from Alice and offering Hobbs. He happily agreed to go. The next morning, when they set out, Hobbs realized that he had to drive a cart with a donkey, and Merlin calmly settled down on the hay. Hobbs sobered up and asked Merlin if he really agreed to go to Denbyshire. Merlin also told him that Hobbs should have read the mission document, because Miss Luja even stamped it, and Hobbs shouted the most that he wanted to go and didn't even listen to anyone. Clutching his head, Hobbs thought that it was all madness and he had to go back. Hobbs knew that the royal palace would soon send experts there to deal with this, so he suggested not going to Merlin's certain death. Merlin was very surprised by this fact, and he continued to listen to what Hobbs wanted to tell him. Although the mission issued by the government had a high reward, but it was not so easy to complete. There were outbreaks of undead and even the active army was useless. So there are definitely a lot of undead and iron ranks can be a maximum bait for them and they can only distract the undead, Hobbs told Merlin. Merlin rejoiced and said that there was nothing to be afraid of, because he was with him and they could hide behind his back. Hobbs thought that Merlin was a dunce and did not know what the strength of the young man really was. He did not understand how he should have believed in him because he was just a low-level adventurer. The young man seemed to him just a brat who knew a little martial arts, what kind of team they turned out to be. Merlin immediately saw that Alice's team was in front of them and said that it would be nice if they could earn some experience with them and get a thousand gold coins. Hobbs thought that they could kill a couple of monsters and leave because Alice's team had a new saint rank, so they were probably safe. That the knights had caught up with them behind Merlin and Hobbs' wagon. Merlin was surprised because he had never seen them before, and Hobbes told him that they were the Duke and Rose's people. Duke Rose was the Lord of Wales, there were not so many guards around the cart, so someone from his family was riding. The knight asked Hobbes if he and his companion knew which way was to Denbyshire. Hobbes reported that if they wanted to save time, they could go through Maris Hill, but it was a little narrow there, so such a large carriage would not pass. They will get to yesterday after driving some distance. The knight thought that Hobbes was mocking him, but he said that if they didn't want to go there, then they could go south. But in the fall the rhinos would migrate south and it would be bad if they stumbled upon them. So the fastest way would be to get to the way he was talking about. The knight was angry and asked if Hobbes knew who was riding in this carriage and how it could travel on these dirty roads. Hobbes looked at the knight and said that there was nothing wrong with walking a little, only if there were no legs, and without finishing the knight pulled out his whip wanting to hit Hobbes. Because he said that his mistress was in poor health and already swinging at Hobbes, he directed his whip, but then stopped him Merlin. The knight asked to let go of his whip and asked if he wanted to be punished. Merlin pulled the whip and knocked the knight and the horse to the ground. Looking at the fallen knight, Merlin asked what kind of attitude it was to them, because he asked them for directions and was dutifully told the shortest way. 
and instead of thanking them, the knight showed his rotten attitude to them, it was ridiculous. The knight who fell into the mud did not understand what kind of young man was in front of him. Hobbes, looking at Merlin and being a little shocked, said that they should not have behaved like that, because they were Duke Rose's knights, and this was a person who had the highest right to vote. Although he was a duke, he is under pressure from the royal family. But nevertheless every duke in his territory is a native emperor, so he can do whatever he pleases. Merlin said that he didn't care about the Duke of Radish or the Duke of Cabbage, but he had to show everyone who offended him what it was like to experience it for himself. Turning to Hobbes, he saw that Merlin was talking about the rules of demons and if he said this in front of the theocracy, he would be burned to the ground. The knight, having risen from the mud, asked how an adventurer of the iron rank dared to do this to him. It was the first time he had experienced such humiliation since becoming Rose's knight, and he would challenge them both to a duel. Merlin was saying that he was ready, but then someone stopped Kyle. A beautiful girl got out of the carriage and asked Kyle if the honor of a knight belonging to Rose was so low. How could he talk about a duel with such weaklings? The knight immediately bowed his knee and asked for forgiveness from Lady Cecilia, for the fact that but they insulted her. So then Cecilia said that the commoners had never seen her why should they blame them they could not stop if two ants blocked their path. And she approached Merlin apologized for her servant, since he disturbed them. Merlin joked with the girl so that she would show herself to them if she wanted to apologize, to which Hobbes was shocked and did not understand what the young man was carrying. The knight was also horrified by what Merlin said to Lady Cecilia, and had already swung his sword, but then Cecilia stopped him and said that there was no need to waste time on these iron ranks. Time was running out and so they had to go. So they left, and Merlin and Hobbes watched them go. Merlin did not understand why they were so annoying and asked them to pray that they would not catch his eye again. The cart in which Arnold was traveling was moving along its path Arnold told that his family's house was very large, so he lost money in it almost every day and he never sought to get as much money as possible. He had no interest in them and in general he was tired of living an easy life without exerting any effort. It was enough for him to open his mouth to eat and stretch out his hand to get dressed. Then he asked Miss Alice if she understood exactly what he meant. Alice thought to herself that poverty had limited her imagination. Arnold, addressing Miss Alice, said that it was she who would give him the opportunity to burn with the fire of hope to live an ordinary life. Arnold said that one day he went to the city of Elgin to visit his uncle instead of his father and then he saw Alice. Six months ago, Alice also went to the city of Elgin and helped local residents cope with giant wild boars that raged in agricultural fields. Seeing valor combined with a magnificent appearance, Arnold realized what the expression you can't escape from fate means. He looked at Alice as if fascinated. The stranger rushed to propose marriage to the heroine. But Alice immediately refused. After that Arnold joined the guild and furiously pursued poor Alice. Arnold said that it was God who arranged the birth of the legendary swordsman Elgin. But not only that, he brought them together to do many great things. So Miss Alice, addressing the girl, offered them to work together. And the one request she couldn't help him with was to fall in love with him. Alice said that she would not be able to help him with this. Then their companion decided to ask a question about the legendary swordsman Elgin, namely about who he was. Arnold asked if Mr. Claude didn't know him. Claude used to practice deep in the mountains, but did he never come out of there? Lord Claude was talking about how he had heard something like this, how people were talking about the swordsman Elgin and praising his skillful ball skills all the time, so he was consumed with curiosity. Alice was a fan of Elgin and understood that Claude practiced in solitude deep in the mountains and was cut off from the world all this time, so it was not surprising that he was unaware of her husband's splendor. Then Arnold decided to tell Claude about the story of the red-bearded pirate brothers, who were the leaders of a gang of famous sea piracy. Not only were these two at rank 9, they were also very talented and had been raging in the North Sea for many years and no one could beat them. This group of guys was so ferocious and powerful that even the royal family could not resist them in any way. But in the blink of an eye, they were all killed by the swordsman Elgin. Claude was surprised to hear that Elgin's swordsman had killed two saint rank bearers in a second, but he thought that it meant nothing. Alice and Arnold will be very surprised to hear this. Even if both of them had holy ranks, it didn't mean anything, Claude continued to tell. Even the holy ranks have their strengths and weaknesses, so they can be divided into higher and lower. Miss Alice was also at the saint rank, but she is of the highest order, so if she encounters a saint rank bearer, she will definitely be considered very strong. This is because the saint ranks are not equal to each other, so Claude could confidently say that the bearers of the saint rank, the pirates were nothing, 
They were just an example of the gap between the holy ranks. The era of the strongest was coming to an end, so the strong became less and less, then people have no choice but to put their hopes on a guy they don't know personally. This is what the helplessness of the royal family means. Alice, looking at Claude, did not understand why he was so turned on, whether he had any complexes. Arnold, on the other hand, spoke of Elgin as a legendary swordsman, and that he certainly did not deserve to be called a great hero, whereas Lord Claude thought who in Britain deserved to be called a real hero. Then Claude talked about the fact that there were such people, and asked the guys if they had heard about the four heroes of the former kingdom. Alice was silent because she had never heard about it, and Arnold had heard about these four heroes. Carol, the dragon steward, could kill seven of the Empire's saint rank carriers overnight. If she laid her gaze on someone, then he automatically became a corpse and no one could escape from the punishment of her dagger. Twin swordsmen Zoe and Joey, their swordsmanship was rightfully called the best in the whole world. The giant king known for his magnificent defense was killed by the swords of these brothers. And finally Stormtrooper Bernard. His nickname is the Meat Grinder. He has participated in countless military battles. Besides once he was able to kill a saint rank dragon in a one-on-one -on -one battle. In addition to this, he was the strongest among these four heroes. Everyone knew that there was no opponent in the whole world that he could not defeat. These four deserve to be called real heroes, and the rest are just clowns who do not deserve a grain of this magnificent title. Then Arnold asked who they were in general. These four were known as the four heroes, it was not they who founded the former kingdom, Alice suddenly said. Then Arnold realized that they were the founding heroes, and then recalled that the kingdom was founded more than 400 years ago. Then the coachman called them, addressing Mr. Arnold and said that they had been on the road for a long time and the horses needed rest. Arnold picked up and invited his companions to go outside and get some fresh air. Getting out of the carriage, Alice admitted that each of the heroes that Lord and Claude told about were amazing. But it was worth considering that they had been dead for a long time. But she also thought that it was pointless to compare the present with the past. Claude just looked at Alice without saying anything. Alice got out of the carriage and Arnold, asking her to wait, tried to catch up with her, and Claude stayed in the carriage to talk about what Alice had said. It was already sunset and the horses were grazing next to the cart. Alice was sitting on the grass and talking about it. What was Merlin doing now? Would he demolish the guild because they would not be able to give a commission percentage? Here Arnold interrupted her thoughts, saying that the most beautiful thing in the world is the shining of the stars nothing is better than watching the stars at night with your girlfriend. Then Alice reminded him that it was cloudy today and asked where he saw the stars here. Arnold, trying to be a cavalier, asked Miss Alice if she wanted to know the difference between her and the stars, so the stars are in the sky, and she was in his heart. After this phrase, Alice almost threw up, asking Mr. Arnold to stop. She got up and decided that she would go look for Mr. Claude, who had disappeared somewhere. Alice heard that she had to give her soul for the revival of the former kingdom and saw that Mr. Claude started attacking her who thought it was an ordinary thief, and it was Alice. Claude apologized for scaring her, but why was she here and asked if something had happened? Alice came here to tell him that they were going further. Her heart was pounding furiously. Returning back to the cart, Mr. Claude thanked Larissa that she informed him that they were returning and were going to go on. Leaving Claude asked if Alice had heard something before. Alice pretended that she had not heard anything and asked if he had said something. Leaving, Mr. Claude said that it was good and asked them to go further, and if they were lucky, they would be able to get to Denbyshire tonight. Alice watched Claude leave in the wake and thought how suspicious he was in what he meant by the revival of the former kingdom. Alice was completely incomprehensible. Then Cecilia's cart drove up to Arnold's cart, which did not expect to meet him here when Arnold saw Cecilia. He smiled and asked if the girl had a vacation from the Theological Academy, and where she decided to go instead of enjoying spending time at home. Cecilia said that she was going to Denbyshire instead of her father to solve the crisis in this city. Arnold said that it was very convenient, because the purpose of the trip was also this city. Besides his fellow travelers are two carriers of the highest rank. This surprised Cecilia very much, because she had heard about two carriers of the holy rank. Interrupting their conversation, Arnold's coachman ran up to them and asked the young man to look there quickly. Behind them were the flaming rhinos, heard animals of the middle order that migrated south every autumn. They were rushing straight towards their carriage along with the blazing fire. Cecilia realized that those two peasants were right, because they said right to the point and thought that the young men were harbingers of doom. Knight Kyle asked to listen to his order so that everyone would protect the lady. If the animals are far away, then use remote weapons. If close, then use swords, axes and spears. They could think what they wanted, but in no case let them get close to the young lady Cecilia 
and the whole army moved on the rhinos. Arnold was thinking about where Mr. Claude and Miss Alice had been, and where they had gone. The rhinos were rushing straight at Cecilia's cart. At the same time, the girl called for a comprehensive divine light and asked to show everyone her miracle. Also, her army of guards could not allow the lady to be injured in any way. And Lord Claude came out in front of the army and Kyle asked him not to stand on the front line. All of them had to come together just so they wouldn't be able to stand up against these monsters. Claude said that getting together and warming each other, of course, was tempting. But he didn't need it and swinging his sword, he defeated the rhinos with one blow. Alice was shocked when she saw it. Arnold talked about leaving everything to them and said that Mr. Claude was his companion on this trip. Mr. Claude was a carrier of the fifth rank. Cecilia asked how Arnold was able to get such a powerful knight into his team and talked about what needed to be said about the terms of this agreement. Arnold named the amount of 200,000 gold coins. Cecilia, turning to Lord Claude, asked to listen to her and regardless of how much this stupid ducal son offered her, she would double the amount and asked Claude what his idea was about joining her team. Arnold was surprised that the girl lured his ally right in front of his face, but Claude refused. But as she was leaving, Cecilia felt a faint smell of black magic from this man. The girl decided to hurry and told her knight Kyle that they had to hurry and get to Denbyshire before midnight. The knight could not understand why his mistress had such an urgency. Cecilia explained to Kyle that they had to get there before everyone else. She had to personally eradicate all the undead. This is a task, a good opportunity to show everyone what she is capable of. And if everything turns out the way she planned, then her father will certainly look at her with admiration from now on. The knight, bowing to his mistress, said that they should leave right away. Denbyshire, locations of the military corps. The soldiers drank for the fact that fate brought them all together on this mission. Everyone thanked each other for accepting this quest and wanted to enjoy and get drunk this night properly so that tomorrow they would be strong. Because tomorrow they had to eradicate all the undead. All the soldiers raised their mugs to drink. Alice was also happy about it and wanted to have a drink with everyone. Claude asked all the guys to have fun, and he himself will go rest. Alice was bothered by this. Could it be that Claude was actually a major criminal of the kingdom? If that was the case, then it was too dangerous to be in a team with him. Adventurer guilds are pretty free. If a person can pass their test, they will be accepted. This led to the fact that the overwhelming majority of adventurers in the guild had a dark past. Even such a simpleton Merlin, who left the restaurant without paying, is nothing compared to dark adventurers. Here her thoughts were interrupted by Arnold, who was telling Alice what a wonderful evening it was today, and was holding a rose in his hands trying to give it to the girl. Alice, addressing Arnold, explained that they had not yet gathered intelligence and had come here to fight the undead, and not for travel and entertainment. This upset Arnold very much. Alice went in search of Hobbes, because it would be nice if he were here, even though he was an old bastard and annoying, which annoyed her. But at least he knew his business and she came across Hobbes who was drinking with all the other knights in the company of Merlin and other girls. Seeing this, Alice did not understand how they got there so quickly and when they even had time to go, because they went later than Alice together with Claude and Arnold. Arnold, seeing Marilyn, said that the blonde was a rival in love for the heart of Miss Alice. He wanted to get to him, but he immediately got from Miss Alice, because the girl always told everyone that there was nothing between them and there was nothing and asked them to stop talking nonsense. Merlin was sitting surrounded by beautiful ladies and one of them asked Merlin why it was written on his badge that he was a peasant. The title of a peasant only hid his real past, and even though they knew how great the deeds behind his back were, if he told them, the girls would lose consciousness. Then the young man decided to remind him of his technique of rapid decapitation, and everyone really wanted to see it. Alice also knew that Merlin was just an idol of middle-aged women, and having driven them away by showing her gold adventurer badge, Alice asked Merlin to talk to her about serious things. The girls left, looking askance at Alice, because it was such a disappointment. It wasn't fair to them that the saint rank allowed themselves too much. Marlin saw Alice and asked how long she had been there. The girl said that on the way here they stopped too many times and there were too many turns, so they were a little late. Then she asked which road Merlin was driving. The young man said that everything was thanks to Hobbes. He is so well versed in the terrain that Merlin even gave him the nickname Walking Map. Merlin said that they took her donkey and drove it with a whip, which made Alice very angry. She attacked Merlin with her fists, because he was the worst here. Merlin, dodging Alice's blows, did not understand why the girl immediately started calling names. She was lucky in general that she arrived so early, because she should have been happy about it, and in general. 
The donkey was pretty fast, he was especially fast at those moments when Merlin whipped him with a whip and then the donkey ran faster than a horse in the prime of its strength. Alice reported that because of her adventures, Meng Meng walked a very long distance every day because of this. She never dared to beat him and could not believe that Merlin treated him like that. It was inhumane, and she thought Merlin was a crazy animal. Arnold interrupted their quarrel by saying that he would never lose for the hand of Miss Alice to such a young man as Merlin. Then Merlin decided to ask what happened to Arnold's nose, because it was broken. Arnold replied that it was a trophy that Miss Alice had given him. It was the seal of love, that's what Arnold called her. Looking at Arnold, Merlin thought that the young man had problems with his head. But Alice confirmed his guesses that she had reached Merlin for a very long time. Then Merlin said that the girl did not understand what he meant, because he said that only such crazy fanatics as Arnold fall in love with her. If Merlin says one more word, even if Alice can't defeat him, she will definitely find a way for them to die together. Arnold came to Merlin again, saying that if the guy was not afraid to get there, then it already said that he was strong from birth, which is why he considered him his worthy rival in love. But it was all over. Tomorrow, Mr. Claude will break through the enemy's defense lines and bring Mr. Arnold an important victory. He, in turn, will get the hand and heart of Miss Alice. Merlin suggested that he try Alice did not understand what was going on here. Then everyone around started discussing the two jealous guys that Alice had and that a fight was about to break out between the two of them. Alice informed Arnold that she would go to collect intelligence. Unfortunately, he would not be able to help her, so she asked him to return to the camp and rest a little. Rejoicing, Arnold regarded it as that Alice was worried about him and worried, because he could get very tired. Considering the girl gentle and attentive, at that moment it seemed to him that he began to love her even more. Hobbs, drunk again, looked at Arnold, who was the son of a duke and preferred very thin girls and believed that the tastes of the rich were strange in their own way. Alice punched Hobbs in the stomach and asked if he wanted to die or still stay alive. After lapping, Alice asked Hobbs if he knew anything at all about the situation in Denbyshire. Hobbs whispered to Alice that he had some information, but he needed coins for it. Alice gave him a few coins and now she understood where he got the money for drinks. And after giving him a few coins, she quickly asked him to tell her about everything. Hobbs was thanking her for the purchase. He had a lot of information. He had already summarized everything and brought some conclusions. In the north of the forest is the cemetery of the Prime Minister of the former kingdom. It is a three-story underground maze. This Prime Minister was a necromancer in his past, so all the skeletons were most likely caused by him. The purpose of the military corps consisting of adventurers is to restrain the undead in the forest until the king sends qualified people. But if you look at the composition of the military corps, even a bearer of the highest holy rank has arrived here, directly from the king, so their affairs are not so good. Alice was thinking about the former kingdom again and remembered Lord Claude, who, in turn, was sitting in his tent and thinking that for the sake of the revival of the former kingdom, all this was being done. Night had fallen, and Lord Claude was walking through the midnight camp to get out of it. Alice decided to follow him because he seemed too suspicious to her, and she tried to expose his true face today by running after him into the forest. Hobbs saw that Alice was running away through the gate and remembering that it was night now, he thought that perhaps his fantasy had played out. Claude went instead of a cluster of undead and Alice tried to follow him, thinking that the tramp decided to deal with all this alone. The place where he came was like the entrance to the underground labyrinth where Claude had entered. The next day morning came and Arnold came to Merlin and Claude's tent. He asked if Miss Alice was really forced to sleep with them, but when he opened the blanket, he saw that Mr. Merlin was hugging only his pillow. Marlin stood up from his bed and asked to listen to him normally. The blanket was part of Merlin taking the blanket off Merlin is the same as flaying him. Then Hops woke up and asked why the guys were making noise early in the morning and what happened. Then Arnold told everyone that Miss Alice was missing and that he could not find her anywhere, and Mr. Claude was also nowhere. Did he steal Alice and was able to escape? Here Hobbs, rubbing his head, told everyone that he had seen Alice last night when he went to the toilet. She went to the tomb in the forest alone, and maybe it was because she wanted to get more money. Or maybe it was because this new saint rank didn't exist either and maybe they made a deal. Merlin was angry, because how could Alice dare to play against the rules and do this behind his back? He will not let her leave so quickly and will follow the girl into this tomb. Hop asked Merlin not to be stupid, because he was an iron rank, how could he prevent or help at all? He just offered Merlin to go with everyone and get his thousand gold coins, but Merlin wasn't interested in one thousand gold coins. His goal was to get everything. This time the opponents were undead, so he could use them to prolong his life, so he was obliged to receive the highest reward. With these words Merlin left the tent. 
Arnold reflected that Merlin was getting serious for Alice's sake, and his majestic measures as his amorous opponent deserved approval. Hobbes asked the young master to get to work, turning to Arnold. The underground labyrinth is the second level. Claude was heading straight for it. Alice was following him through this maze, because this maze was so confusing and she wouldn't have been able to get out of here if she hadn't followed Claude. But it was strange to her why Claude knew this place so well. Was he already here or did he have some kind of map of this underground maze? The girl saw new traces of the battle, so someone has already been here. All these thoughts swarmed in Alice's head as she followed Claude. Then the undead met Claude on the way, and he dealt with it in an instant, opening the doors. He followed further through the maze and came to the king of the undead. Speaking about the fact that they had not seen each other for a long time, the king of the undead asked who was in front of him and why he broke into his eternal resting place. The undead allowed him to explain himself before he died. Claude, looking at the undead in front of him, said that 400 years have passed since then, Sir Ian. Then the undead began to ask who was in front of him. Claude said that Sir Ian was getting old, because how could he forget the Imperial Stormtrooper? Then Sir Ian recognized Bernard and asked if he had died a long time ago. Bernard said that they were the four heroes and they were resurrected by the prince with the help of dark magic, and now they were acting as undead. Then Sir Ian was surprised that the prince was alive. Claude reported that the prince was lucky to escape when the former kingdom was destroyed. Since then, he has used dark magic to suck the blood of the elves to prolong his life. Thus they were able to see the light again. Sir Ian asked what they planned to do, then Claude said that they needed a more powerful force to overthrow the government and revive the former kingdom. Therefore, he asked to give the key that he was guarding. Sir Ian decided to ask if Claude really came for the key, and if the former king had not signed a contract with the devil, the kingdom would not have disintegrated. You can't trust hell, why did he keep going the wrong way? He asked Bernard. Bernard said that you need to sacrifice something for the sake of strength. He didn't want to fight with him, as they were familiar and asked him to give the key. Sir Ian refused and then pulling out his sword, Bernard apologized for being rude to him. Sir Ian decided to remind Bernard of his own words that dying on the battlefield is a great honor for a warrior. Had he forgotten his words, but right now, the most important thing for Bernard was to revive the kingdom and they clashed in a desperate battle, while Alice watched everything from the sidelines. Merlin entered the second level underground labyrinth. The guy was walking and wandering in circles and realized that he was lost. It was bad for him that anyone could get the highest award earlier. Then it turned out that he had wasted time. But then he remembered Hobbes's words that he had said that this maze had several levels. Looking at the floor, the young man thought that it was a little rash, but he had no other way out, since he wanted to catch up with Alice and then Merlin just broke through the floor to go down a few levels lower, because it was faster. The underground labyrinth is the second level, where Cecilia fought with her divine light, exercising evil, as well as her knights, who went on the attack protecting their mistress. But they also got lost. The girl thought that they did not get the best informant, who told very badly about the power of the worst monsters, because if this goes on, they could be doomed to perish. All she needed was her father's confession. So why was it so difficult? Mrs. Cecilia thought. Kyle also informed his mistress that they needed to leave the dungeon better, but the girl asked him to shut up, because she said they could get out. Then the young man told her that they had been returning the same way they came for a long time but there were still no exits. Then Cecilia asked the guys to push on. They will be able to figure it out completely if they understand the structure of the maze and ask them to trust her. Although the divine light can expel and burn these dark creatures, Cecilia's mana was not infinite, so she asked the dear goddess of light Maria to protect them. At that moment, Cecilia was grabbed by the undead and her weapon fell to the floor. The divine light disappeared, and the monsters began to move and the knights did not understand what they had to do. Lady Cecilia asked someone to come to her aid. The knights saved her, and then the lady asked where her staff was, reaching for it. An even stronger undead appeared in front of the girl. Kyle came to her defense and threw the girl to run, leaving her terrible opponent to him. Sitting on the floor, Cecilia did not understand why everything turned out this way. All her knights were defeated. Then she remembered her father's words that the fittest survive and the weak were useless, so weaklings had nothing to do, and Cecilia was the weakest of all children. The girl recalled her childhood, where she lost all the time and was worthless, although she trained a lot, but she always lost to her younger sister, who bullied her, so the younger sister did not want to admit that Cecilia was her older sister. But Mr. Kyle was always there for her when the lady fell, he always protected her. Training ground for recruits. Mr. Kyle was tied to a pole and he was punished because he escaped. And those who do not finish their exercises today, according to the commander, will be punished. 
Then Cecilia asked the teacher to spare Kyle for her sake, because because of her he left and did not complete the task. Time passed, and the grown-up Mr. Kyle asked Lady Cecilia to let him be her knight. He swore on his life that he would follow the girl and Lady Cecilia allowed him to be her knight. She was very weak, just like him. They were just two pathetic creatures who reached out to each other to keep warm and move on. So Mistress Cecilia was by Kyle's side all the time. On one of the winter days, she looked at how Kyle wielded a sword and asked if he had reached a high rank and if he was tired of training every day. The young man voiced that he was not tired of training at all, because that was the only way he could protect his mistress. The girl thought that in this family she was considered unnecessary garbage. Her father decided to extract at least some benefit and gave her in marriage to a foreigner. How Kyle was going to protect her then? Remembering everything about her past and their past, Cecilia saw that the young man was ready to give his life for her. She was so shocked, and Kyle didn't understand why she didn't run away, because he was holding back the monsters. The girl did not understand what Kyle was saying and asked him to run away together, because they had a chance to survive. Kyle said that he was her knight and therefore would be humiliated if he put the girls in danger, so he asked her to run away, and he hoped that she would survive. Cecilia didn't understand why the young man was talking about chivalry in such a situation and asked to run away with her. But it was an honor for him to fight to the end for someone he treasured, and the young man tried to slay the monsters that were moving on them. Then Kyle was pierced by a terrible monster and Miss Cecilia was afraid for what might happen next. Kyle was hit by the monster and after Kyle hung in the air, he was thrown aside. Cecilia rushed to him, who asked him to wake up and protect her. She asked the young man to get up, with tears in his eyes, and asked if he remembered his oath. But the young man did not answer her. Then a monster came at Cecilia to kill her. The girl thought that everything would end here. Her empty bitter and petty life may end right now. But at that moment the ceiling collapsed and the monster was defeated. Merlin appeared in front of Cecilia and Kyle. Merlin complained that he hadn't punched for a long time and now his back ached because of it. Cecilia stared open mouthed at the young man. Because this was the iron rank they had met yesterday. She couldn't understand what he was doing here. Turning around Merlin also saw Cecilia and thought it was a coincidence. Was the arrogant first daughter of the Rose family right in front of him and why was she so sad? The young man asked. Cicely replied that they had not been here for long. When they went deep into the second level they were attacked by the undead. She held the knight Kyle in her arms while she explained everything to Merlin. Merlin realized that they were attacked because they overestimated their strength. But no one would feel sorry for them because of their own mistake. The young man asked why they came here, even though the girl was a priestess, but she could not cope with so many undead. Cecilia replied that she wanted to prove to her father that she was strong. Then Merlin laughed at her. Cecilia didn't understand why he was laughing. Then Marilyn explained to her that he thought it was funny. Because her strength was only for herself, why was it necessary to prove it to someone else? But she proved that she was not the smartest person and all her people were dead for such a stupid reason. If she were a demon she would be recognized as incompetent. Because the enemies did not need to do anything, her people would have rebelled themselves. Cecilia tearfully said that Merlin was right because it was her fault. Everyone died and even Kyle. She didn't understand why she tried so hard. Merlin told the girl that trying hard to meet the basic conditions, but just trying is not enough. But after that, he said that he was not interested in talking about life with such a noble lady like her and he had more important things to do. So he said goodbye to Cecilia. At that moment the undead came to life again from under the rubble that remained after the fall of Merlin and Cecilia warned the young man. Marilyn thought that he was born with some kind of cheat, it was some kind of injustice to the rest. Whoever challenged him, he would fail and he dealt with the undead with one blow of his ball. Merlin didn't understand how a dead brat could try to fight him, because it was ridiculous. The undead annoyed Merlin very much, because no matter how much he killed them, they could not prolong his life. Cecilia was watching Merlin and did not understand what was happening, where he had so much strength from the usual sword movement. Was the young man really an adventurer of the iron rank? Cecilia was thinking that if she didn't ask for his help, then Kyle and she would die here. Asking Merlin not to leave and listen to her, she sincerely asked to protect them. Merlin asked why he had to help her. Then the girl replied that she could give him a reward. Merlin wondered to himself about the noble lady who was supposed to be rich, and why it would not be to extort money from her. The payment for her rudeness yesterday of 5,000 gold should probably have been enough, Merlin calculated. The young man said that he wanted a reward and probably she understood what Merlin was asking for. Cecilia began to think, because such a strong man like him, ready to become a simple adventurer of the iron rank. Obviously he didn't care about fame and money, 
Then it turns out he wanted her body, but she belonged to Kyle. Thinking about Kyle, Cecilia remembered how Kyle was ready to sacrifice his life for her, so why should she hesitate? After her thoughts about herself and Kyle, the girl told Merlin that she realized about the award and then began to take off her dress. Merlin was talking about another reward, he just needed 5,000 gold coins. Then Cecilia replied that she did not have so much with her now, but only her body, but Merlin replied that she could give him the money after they returned. After all their conversations, Merlin just cut off a piece of the floor where Cecilia and Kyle were standing, so the undead might not get to them for a long time, Merlin said. But that wasn't what Cecilia had in mind, she wanted the young man to accompany them. Merlin also said that now he, so, was too kind and he had things to do so he could not stay here and picking up her staff, he threw it to Cecilia. Merlin also said that her knight was still alive and since she was a priestess, she should have known what to do. Cecilia, looking at Kyle, thought that she didn't need anything, but she couldn't lose him. The girl asked Merlin if he could take them out later, because there were too many undead and it was unsafe. Merlin replied that he always keeps his promises and will hold them later. Merlin saw that he had the last level left. He hoped that Alice had not been beaten so badly and that she could fight, but he wanted the money from the victory to go to him. Alice was watching Claude at that moment, and it was not surprising that Claude spoke as if he was from the last century. He even said that the four heroes of the previous kingdom were real masters, was he really praising himself? Alice thought, watching Claude's battle with the undead. She didn't know what to do, because she thought that Claude was the main criminal. But it turned out that everything was much more complicated and she understood that she had to tell the head of the guild about it when she returned and now she was wondering if she still had time to retreat. Sir Ian asked Bernard what had happened to him. Had he aged, because his movements had become slower and it was very annoying. Bernard asked how Ian could maintain his arrogance while being in battle with him. Ian took advantage of the moment to show Bernard his secret technique and summon the Skeleton King. Bernard did not expect such a development. Ian, controlling a huge skeleton, told Bernard that he would not be able to dodge this attack and the huge skeleton grabbed Bernard. Now Ian was telling Bernard to try and underestimate him, because Bernadette's strength remained the same as it was 400 years ago, which meant that he didn't have a chance. Bernard, getting up from the floor, taking his sword promised Ian that he would break his skull and extinguish the flames from his soul with his secret technique. Ian asked him not to make speeches and to deal with his skeleton king first. Bernard asked Ian to accept his fate, because he would not be able to touch him anymore and use the secret technique, the stormtrooper mode. Alice, who was watching everything from behind the wall, realized that it was already an inhuman aura, the aura of a saint rank magical beast. The opponents clashed again in their battles, but then Merlin appeared, which destroyed half of the dungeon. Ian was surprised, because he didn't know who it was. Merlin was glad that they hadn't finished the battle yet, which meant that he had arrived on time. After looking at Claude and calling him like a guy with a two-handed sword, Merlin asked if Alice was with him. Claude, looking at Merlin, did not understand what was happening and how the guy was able to get to them, how all the undead of the first and second level could not stop this iron rank. Alice did not understand what Merlin was doing here and how he could get through two levels, through a three-level underground maze and get to the third level, straight to the head boss. No one would have dreamed of being so reckless. Claude thought that in order to keep the kingdom's revival a secret, he should kill all the witnesses and squeezed his sword harder. Ian asked Merlin who he was and how he dared to break into his place of eternal repentance. Merlin did not understand what Ian was saying and then, he tried to turn the young man into dust, but it was useless. Claude, seeing the same thing that Ian's magic did not work on the young man, was surprised. Ian himself was also surprised that Merlin could not be reached by magic and said that the young man could not be underestimated. Alice, seeing their battle, saw that Merlin's anti-magic barrier was very useful. Because of this, the church suffered huge losses during its campaign. Merlin didn't understand why Ian was attacking him if he hadn't even touched him yet. And he was also trying to find out who Merlin was and what he had done. Merlin, looking at Ian, told him that the skeleton didn't need to know about it because he was just a skeleton that was worth 5,000 gold coins. Merlin's words were very insulting to Ian and he started shouting at him, asking how he could insult him. The skeleton then attacked the youth with its large skeleton. Claude, watching from the side, thought that Merlin was dead, because even he would not be able to take the full attack of the Skeleton King, let alone Merlin. His thoughts were not confirmed, because Merlin was holding a large skeleton knuckle with one of his hands. Alice understood that Merlin's physical defense was not lame, everyone was surprised at how it was possible. But Ian's jaw dropped, because it was impossible. There could not be a person in the world who could withstand the attack of a skeleton. 
holding a large skeleton's knuckle with one hand, Merlin thought that the creature he had summoned was, of course, interesting. But the skeleton was just a useless undead that had to go to hell, and taking out his sword, Merlin defeated Ian. Watching the wall, Alice hoped that he wouldn't cause Merlin much trouble, but she didn't think that Merlin would kill the royal skeleton again. With just one blow, Merlin proudly sheathed his sword back. Claude, looking at Merlin's back, understood that probably none of the four heroes could compare with this menacing monster. If such a mighty force would work under the leadership of his majesty, then it could play into their hands. After defeating the skeleton, Merlin dreamed of his 5,000 gold coins, which were provided for him, and thought that he had to go and see if there was anything here for which he could get money. But then he saw a key under his feet. Claude caught himself at this time and realized that he had forgotten that he needed this very key. Seeing the key, Merlin picked it up and thought about how interesting it was a key. Claude stood behind him, realizing that the key to the infernal building was necessary for the revival of the former kingdom and it was impossible to allow this key to fall into the wrong hands. Calling Merlin, Claude asked to give him the key. Merlin asked why he had to give Claude his trophy. Then Claude offered Merlin 200,000 gold coins to buy him. This offer was accepted by Mr. Merlin. Looking at the key, the young man thought about whether this key was really worth 200,000 gold coins and if he invested all this money on racetracks and put everything on Richard, then he could win even more. Merlin agreed, but then Alice said that Merlin should not have given Claude this key. Surprised, the young man was delighted because he did not know that Alice was here. Merlin considered the girl very hypocritical, abandoning everyone for the sake of a reward. Alice asked me not to make her look bad. She found out the truth and, pointing at Claude, told Merlin that it was not a living person. It was Bernard, one of the four heroes who died a long time ago. Merlin realized that there was an undead in front of him. Alice explained that they were the defenders of the former kingdom and they were revived with the help of magic. And then they planned to revive the former kingdom. Claude came here for this key and there was some big secret hidden in it. So Alice asked not to give Claude this key. Merlin wondered what kind of big secret it was, but since it was really a valuable treasure, then perhaps with it he could pay all his debts. Claude realized that Alice had been following him and now knew all his secrets. In order to ensure the perfect execution of the plan, it is necessary to bury these two right here so that no one survives. And grabbing his sword, Claude decided to attack Alice, but Merlin stopped him with one of his hands. Claude was surprised how quickly Merlin was able to react, because it was even faster than Claude in Stormtrooper mode. Merlin, holding Claude's weapon in his hands, apologized to him, because, pointing at Alice, the young man said that they pay rent in half and he can't let this girl die right here. Merlin didn't want to pay the full amount for the house. Alice realized that it was impossible to expect anything from him. How could he save her just like that? These were all her fantasies. Claude offered Merlin the following scenario. If the guys gave him the key, he would pretend that nothing had happened and they would just disperse, asking how they had such an outcome. Merlin understood that this key holds a big secret and he would be an idiot if he gave it to him. Moreover, since Claude attacked them, Merlin would not hold back. Claude saw that there was no point in talking any further. At that moment, Alice, coming from behind, tried to attack Claude. Her holy sword was working, which means Claude really was an undead, because there was smoke everywhere. Looking at the fox, Merlin asked why she did it and asked not to attack him. Alice explained that Claude was the enemy, wouldn't he be doomed if they attacked together and said that she would help Merlin. Merlin didn't mind fighting one-on-one, -on -one, but he was against the company. Merlin can't accept help in battle from someone. Alice didn't have to interfere and make him look like they were partners. Alice sometimes really didn't understand Merlin. The previous Demon King actually has such a strange commitment. Merlin offered Claude to fight one-on-one, -on -one, so that he sincerely accepted his defeat, because it was unfair to fight two-on-one. -on -one. Claude thought about it. It didn't look like he didn't have a chance to win and he decided to just deal with the guys one by one. He will even sacrifice his life by accepting this challenge, for the sake of the revival of the former kingdom. At that moment, Claude took off his helmet, and Merlin and Alice saw the disfigured face of the knight. Claude said that if anyone asks which of the four strongest heroes in one-on-one -on -one fights was the strongest, then it was definitely him. Merlin asked Claude if it made sense to be attached to the former glory but he asked him not to let Merlin think that he could win against a real saint rank, even if he did not know how to handle the ball. Merlin was sorry that Claude would not have a chance to talk about his regrets, because not everyone was as lucky as Alice was. Alice, standing on the sidelines and indulging in memories that connected her with Merlin, did not think at all. Rather, the girl was thinking about how unlucky she was that she got involved with this guy. 
Then Claude activated the Stormtrooper mode, and Alice felt that this aura that hovered around Claude became stronger than before. Apparently Claude recognized Merlin's strength and would fight him in full force, but Merlin didn't care, he just grinned. Taking his sword, Claude said that he would kill Merlin in the name of the four heroes and rushed to attack the young man. Claude, advancing on Merlin, told the young man that he had a lot of open places and he would cut off his head, but Merlin was not interested. The young man asked how Claude was going to cut off his head and why he suddenly gave up and was afraid. Heading for Merlin, his senses sharply sharpened in the stormtrooper mode and his instincts said that the young man was insanely dangerous, and his strength was much higher than the saint rank. Claude said that Merlin was right, he was really scared, but it amused him because he was an opponent who forced him to use all his strength. Claude was telling Merlin that he could understand his current feelings. Merlin knew that it was very lonely when you felt invincible, and it should have been that Claude was happy to meet an opponent who was on the same level with him. Unfortunately, Claude was definitely not the opponent that would please Merlin. Then Claude asked Merlin to test him and admit that he was an equal opponent. But it was a very sad insult to Merlin himself that Claude considered him an equal opponent. Claude asked him to stop talking his teeth and fight in a real duel, because he will put his full strength so as not to leave any regrets. After seeing what technique Claude used, Alice realized that it was a forbidden technique, which was called the victim of a madman. It consisted in the fact that you had to change your life for an instant hundredfold increase in your normal abilities. Alice's teacher said it was a forbidden technique that got lost in time but Alice didn't think she would be able to see it here today. This sounded very interesting to Merlin, and he was watching Claude. Claude was very fast in his mode and tried to attack Merlin, but he only deflected his blows. Realizing that Claude was very strong, Merlin decided to use his sword, but just as he wanted to get it out of the scabbard, Claude did not let him do it and attacked him with his sword. Alice, who was watching from the side, realized that she could not see anything because of the dust that had risen in the room. Claude thought that he had killed Merlin, but that was impossible, it was just his afterimage. Claude was fast, but not as fast as Merlin's sword. Turning around, Claude suddenly saw a silhouette that he had previously forgotten. He realized that he had dealt with such a sword before, but could not recognize it. Now, which meant he was getting old. As expected from the strongest demon, the strongest monarch Lucifer, these were the last words Claude spoke. Merlin didn't understand how Claude knew this, because Merlin was famous among demons and rarely traveled. It couldn't be that someone knew him, he thought he had heard something and started calling Alice. Alice, who was in some kind of trance, suddenly woke up from Merlin's cotton. The young man asked her how she felt about their battle and whether he surprised her on the spot with his strength, because it was not too late to worship him. Alice, embarrassed and turning away from Marina, said that the young man was up to the right standards. Remembering about the key, the girl said that this key keeps secrets and he could not keep it with him, but had to give it to the country. Then Alice immediately received a slap on the forehead from Merlin. Merlin asked what Alice's brains were for, because is there a key and did it really lead to the treasure, would she just give it away? Alice wondered if this key didn't lead to the treasure, then what, did Marilyn really want to keep it anyway? Merlin asked Alice to come up to him and talk about it. He suggested to the girl, since they were acquaintances, to share the treasures among themselves and asked what she thought about it. Alice did not understand why Merlin thought that this key led to the treasure. She only heard Claude say something about getting power when he mentioned this key. The young man suggested to Alice to think about how it could be useless what the holy rank was looking for. Merlin asked Alice not to be so adamant, his debt was only a few thousand gold, but her several tens of millions. Merlin didn't think that the girl would be able to pay off her debt unless some miracle happened. Did she really plan to fight all her life as a poor man? Did Alice want to be a slave to her own duty all her life? Most likely she didn't want to, Merlin told her, so this was their chance. The young man suggested that she study this key and find treasures together. Alice, succumbing to Merlin's charms, agreed to his proposal, but the girl thought to herself that she had imagined it or the young man had fooled her again. Clutching the key in his hands, Merlin thought only that the only problem was to find the secret that hides this key. Alice was talking about her friend who understands this, she was also an adventurer in Rexham, and they could ask her about this key. Merlin was wondering if they could rely on Alice's friend, then they heard some strange sound. Turning around, Alice asked who it was, whether it was the undead or the sorcerer who died. Then the undead burst into the room, it looked like they were residual troops, who were attracted here by the mana of this key, and Merlin became very interested. Putting on his gloves, he asked Alice not to interfere with him, 
because he would not protect Alice. Taking the sword, Alice did not need his care and asked him not to be so arrogant, and then both of them decided to fight with the remaining undead. A few minutes earlier, all the soldiers gathered and were ready to send the undead to hell. Arnold also had a sword in his hands and a helmet on his head, standing in the ranks of the defenders. Hobbs, who was standing next to him, asked Arnold why he was fighting if he had money. Arnold also reported that many commanders told him yesterday that his Austin family had outstanding military service, and they would be waiting for his battle so he could not retreat. Hobbs realized that the young man was forced and he asked to explain to him why there was such a loser in his family like him. Arnold reported that Hobbs did not understand anything. Rebirth is a skill. The evil spirits were coming, and Hobbs was interested in how Alice and this newcomer, who went with him, were doing. Arnold asked Hobbs not to worry, because Mr. Claude was very serious, and Alice was not a miss, so there was only Merlin to worry about. Merlin was Arnold's love rival, but it would be a pity if the young man died just like that. Hobbs also informed Arnold that Merlin was experienced and could not just die like that. Hobbs also reported that if something went wrong, he would run away and talk about it right away, and Arnold should stay and try in the name of his holy noble spirit. Arnold asked Hobbs if the man always spent time in Helena's secret cottage, and he heard that he had a lot of outstanding debts, and wealth was Arnold's strong point. Hobbs told Arnold to say so right away, because what kind of relationship they had. Hobbs said he was the most loyal person Arnold had ever seen. Hobbs would sacrifice himself for friendship and for women, so Arnold could wink at him and he would protect him in an instant. Then the commander blew the rock and the battle began. All the knights moved to attack the undead, and Hobbs rushed in the opposite direction, saying that he needed to run. Arnold, trying to stop him, did not understand why the young man sang such speeches to him if he rushed to run as soon as the battle began. The next moment, hugging each other, the two of them looked at the undead that was ready to attack them. But as soon as they covered their heads with their hands, all the undead suddenly turned into dust. Hobbs didn't know what was going on, but it seemed to him that they had won and pretending that it was all thanks to them. Hobbs said that nothing less was expected of him as the strongest adventurer in Wrexham. He considered himself very cool. Arnold said about himself, as about the eldest son of the Austin family, that the campaign against the undead was too much. The next day, the guys were given 5,000 gold coins and thanked for solving this problem. The man handed a bag of money to Alice. Alice, pointing her finger at Merlin, asked him to give them to him, because the young man killed two holy ranks with one swing. Arnold and Hobbs informed Merlin that they had destroyed the three-headed skeleton and Merlin praised them. The man who gave out the money, looking at Merlin, did not understand how a weak adventurer of the Iron Rank, who had neither mana nor aura, could defeat two saint ranks. The man did not understand who would believe it, and he said that he rarely met adventurers who refuse a reward and give it to others. Alice, standing next to the bag of money, understood that no one believed her, no matter how many times she explained to them, and she could not understand why everything was exactly like that. At that moment, the man reported that the investigation was completed and it was immediately necessary to send a report to Her Majesty, passing the letter to his subordinate. The letter spoke about the two saint ranks of the previous kingdom, the sorcerer Ian and Claude, one of the four heroes who fought to the death. When they both weakened and were on the verge of death, Alice, the adventurer of the golden rank dealt them the last blow. Merlin, an adventurer of the iron rank, witnessed all this, exactly as it was written in the letter that was handed to Her Majesty. Night came, and all the guys went back to the city in Arnold's carriage. The young man, of course, did not think that Claude seemed like such a person and the head of the guild would definitely be surprised to hear this. All the boys were feasting in the carriage while Arnold was talking, and Hobbs, as always, was drinking non-stop. Then they started a conversation. The forces of the previous kingdom have not died out yet, so the queen will definitely send the Knights of the Red Bud to investigate. Then Merlin wondered what kind of Knights of the Red Bud they were. These were the personal bodyguards of the royal family. Arnold had heard that they consisted of twelve experts, each with the strength of an entire army. They operated in secret and served only the queen, Arnold said. Also, Arnold was still afraid that a man like Mr. Claude would be next to him. Hobbs said that it was normal, because adventurers are not asked about their past, so there will always be a person with a shocking past. At that moment, Merlin grinned and told the guys that he had once been the great demon king of the first palace, how it was for them, and whether they were scared. Hobbs thought that Merlin had drunk a lot and talked about the fact that he talked a lot. Then Hobbs confessed that demons scare him, they often rob the church's marching army and the church can't stop them if they attack. Then Merlin asked who told Hobbs that demons were rushing into human territory. Hobbs reported that the church said it. 
Ben Merlin, sending the church to hell, said that demons would not attack, and this church was the first to climb up to them, which always arranged campaigns against them. Merlin asked if demons ever staged hikes on people when Hobbes heard it and when, now, Merlin said it was true. Smiling and looking at Alice, Merlin said that it was all because these church extremists only knew how to provoke demons and turned to Alice. Alice pretended that she didn't know anything. Then Hobbes began to wonder why demons don't migrate south and unite with the kingdom like other races. Isn't this the place where non-humans gather? Hobbes had insufficient education. The evolution of the world was divided into four eras, when the era of humans was approaching. The elf king gathered all races except humans to migrate south to create a new kingdom, but the demons refused. Hobbes asked why this was the case. Merlin said that demons are a special independent race, they do not cooperate with anyone and will not serve others. But the main reason is that there are some secrets that cannot be talked about under the palaces of the seven demon kings so they cannot leave. Hobbes had heard that Merlin was quite knowledgeable about demons. Merlin started saying that it was true. Arnold got into their conversation, asking them to stop talking and listen to him. Putting a mug of beer on the table, Arnold told Merlin that it was obvious that neither he nor Arnold himself had won this battle for Miss Alice, but he would not let him continue next time. This only amused Merlin again, and Alice was beside herself with anger and asked if they were mocking her and threw Arnold out of the carriage. Sitting in the carriage, it seemed to Merlin that he had forgotten something, but he did not understand and did not remember what he had forgotten, but he felt that it was something important. Mr. Kyle and Cecilia were left in the cave, who did not understand where Merlin was and why he had not saved them yet, but left them in this cave. At that time, a man was standing in the volcano, near which there was a gate, and he was talking about the worthless Bernard, who could not bring the key before his death. Carol was sitting right there, asking his majesty to calm down, because he needed to take care of his body. His majesty, addressing Caroline, told her to investigate Bernard's death, and the location of the key, and asked if she had found something. Caroline reported that Bernard and the sorcerer fought and weakened, and then the gold rank adventurer finished them off. The prince did not believe how such a thing could happen, and as for the key, Caroline said that the adventurers had it now. If that was the case, then their plan could be revealed, so it was necessary to figure everything out quickly. The prince called Zoe Joey, asking these two to stay here, to protect the shrine and stop anyone who wants to interfere with them. The brothers worshipped the prince and said that they would not allow any enemy to the shrine. Caroline had to go to Wrexham and get the key from these adventurers by any means. Caroline, giving a part to her prince, said that she would return the key that carries the rebirth of the great kingdom, and those who took their things would pay for their blood. Two days later, Luja greeted Alice. She had heard that the girl had done well in Denbirish and had become popular by showing her the morning paper where Alice was on the front page. Alice saw that the news was spreading very quickly. Merlin, holding a newspaper in his hands, said how cool Alice was, called her Alice, who finished people off. Alice asked him to stop mocking her, because she had already explained this situation to him a lot of times. Then the guild master came and congratulated the guys on their successful return. Alice, seeing the master, asked if he had heard about Claude and then the master said that he had already heard about it. The headquarters began to help the capital in the investigation of this case, and the capital, in turn, sent the Knights of the Red Bud to help. At that moment, Merlin asked to give him his money. When handing out the package to Merlin, he was told that he had earned 6,000 gold coins from this mission. But after deducting 70% for his debts, he had 18 gold coins left. The money that was given to them was the money that they earned together. After hearing this Merlin realized that he and the fox were counted together. Many asked Mr. Merlin to calm down, because Alice and he were husband and wife. What was wrong with paying the debt together, since Alice and Merlin were a couple? Alice said that if they were a couple, they would have been struck by lightning. At that moment, lightning struck the house and the guys fell silent. Luja said that, judging by the documents that the real estate presented to the headquarters, the guys were married and all their savings would be summed up. Alice, having heard this, turned to the head of the guild because it was the first time she had heard about this situation. The master reported that in order to register Master Merlin, who has neither mana nor aura, he could only resort to a loophole in the registration documents and register him as a person related to Miss Alice. The girl also said that she vouches for Mr. Merlin. Alice had nothing to object to. Then a bouquet of roses fell from his hands. It was Arnold who could not accept what he had just heard. He was disgusted that everything turned out this way, and Alice asked at this moment not to add to her problems. Merlin asked Miss Luja if the guys could cancel their marriage. It was very unfriendly towards him. 
Alice, addressing Miss Luja, said about the girl that she also did not want to have anything to do with Mr. Merlin. Luja said that the guys could show their divorce certificates, and then everything would be settled. But they were not even married, so they could not take such an application. Luja suggested that they get married and then get divorced, because it was a problem if they could not cancel their marriage if they did not have a certificate of divorce. They could cancel their couple's relationship with the help of a certificate of divorce. Alice, looking at Merlin, asked who in their right mind would decide to marry him, it was better to die. Merlin also said that he did not want to marry her. Here they put the marriage certificates in front of them, which came yesterday from the headquarters. Looking at the paper in front of her, Alice saw a paper on which it was written that her husband was Merlin Lucifer. The girl thought that wherever she went now, everyone would think that she was married and she did not understand how she was going to live now. Luja congratulated them and said that they were the 20 millionth adventurer couple in their guild and wished them happiness with all her heart. So they had a discount on every Valentine's Day if they went to some places of entertainment. Alice did not understand what kind of congratulations they were, after all, the fact that she had returned from a mission, and her debt had grown to several tens of thousands of gold coins, did not please her at all. Merlin, standing next to her, said that his debt was only a few tens of thousands, and now it has become several tens of millions. They were folded and thrown on his shoulders, the young man believed that luck had left his side. At that moment, Alice was thinking that she already had a huge debt, so these several tens of thousands of gold coins were nothing. Karma struck Merlin, if not for him, this would not have happened. He had robbed her in the past, and now it would be the other way around. Then put the paper on the table Merlin said that he was leaving and stopped being an adventurer wishing the girl good luck in paying off his debt. But Alice grabbed him by the cloak and said that he should not dare to leave and accept his responsibility. She would beat him if he dared to dump the debt on her and talked about how Merlin would not be able to escape. Luja also said that no matter which country Merlin flees to, he will still be registered. And there was also a rule in the guild that pairs of adventurers should take tasks together, otherwise the missions would not be approved. The guys both turned to Luja at that moment. It seemed to them that this rule was too wrong and Alice asked if it was necessary. But Luja said that there was nothing to be done. A couple of years ago, there were several couples from adventurers, where the wife went on a mission with another man. Cheated on her husband because of this, a fuss arose, so the headquarters had to create a new rule. At that moment Merlin was looking at Alice, she didn't understand why he was looking at her like that. Arnold got down on one knee and said that he had an offer. He asked Alice to marry him, and he will pay her debt. It's a pretty big sum for him, too but he'll help her even if he has to sell his house. The girl was very grateful, but refused. She was pleased with his care, but she did not need such pity. It was a slap in the face towards Arnold. Alice thought to herself that the young man sounded like she was selling herself to pay off debts. Hobbs hugged Arnold at that moment so that he would not be sad. Merlin told Alice that she had forgotten about something important, namely the reward for Denbyshire. And then Alice asked if Merlin had extorted her savings, but the young man said that it was their joint reward and he wanted to take his share. How much did it look like extortion? He asked the girl, then Alice remembered that they had agreed to pay for the house together. Even though they shared the rent for the house between them, she would sleep in the bedroom and he would sleep on the sofa so he had to tiptoe around the house. She will be the first to use the bathroom and they will take turns cooking and mopping the floor. He will also have to pay a deposit for the house and rent, a gardening fee, a house maintenance fee, a cleaning fee, a property management fee, a product fee and a daily needs fee, a fee for feeding a cute pie. The young man had to help her in everything she said and giving him one gold coin said that it was all he earned. Merlin was beside himself with anger because he had worked so hard just to earn one coin. And Hobbs, smiling, said to a friend, welcoming him to the club of henpecked husbands. There was a knock at the house and Alice, opening the door and seeing Merlin, asked why he had come. Then Merlin said that he had returned home, and so that the girl would not forget that he also pays for this house, he has the same rights to use the house as she does. Alice asked him to go inside, because it would be bad if her neighbors saw a wandering fraudster in front of her door. After hearing that Alice called him a fraudster, he decided that he would show her what it means to be right and decent. Sitting down at the table, Alice asked what was going on about the pooling of their debts, what he was going to do. Merlin said that you can leave everything as it is, they still can't pay their debts, so they will live with them. Alice said it wasn't true, they still had a chance. Alice could earn several tens of thousands of gold coins if she took an S-rank task, and when she reached the mithril rank, she could take SS-rank tasks, and they give at least 100,000 gold for them. Merlin also said that he looked at the available tasks, and there was not one with an SS-rank. 
At that moment, he was eating his scrambled eggs sitting at the table. Moreover, the girl has not yet reached the mithril rank. Alice was inspired and said that one day she would become a saint rank and asked if the young man could support her at least once. Then Merlin did not ask when it would be because he had heard that a lot of people died before even reaching the holy rank. In any case, Merlin suggested leaving this topic for now, because he didn't think there would be too many SS rank tasks for both of them. Then the girl said that there were SSS rank tasks, for which they gave at least a million gold coins. Merlin did not see that S rank assignment, then SSS rank would have to wait for him then for millions of years. Alice also said that she had heard from the head of the guild that the previous task of this rank was 10 years ago, and was given for it. That's how much showing two fingers, the young man realized that it was 20 million gold coins. If they took on such a task, they would no longer have to think about their lives and they could say goodbye to their debts. Merlin thought that although he wanted to live his whole life doing nothing, it would be difficult to live happily if he did not remove the curse from his heart. If money is not taken into account, the purpose of his becoming an adventurer with Alice is to meet strong enemies. Merlin will have nothing to lose if they can take the SSS rank quest. Moreover, if he uses this money and achieves victory in betting on horse races, he will be able to live his life without worrying about anything. At that moment, Alice informed him that he would definitely lose everything. They sat down at the table and started arguing again. Merlin asked how she could say such things. If he didn't have to share the debt with her, he wouldn't be so upset, especially since he completed this task, so at least his dinner should be luxurious, and he wanted steak. But then Alice reminded him that it was he who stole the mithril armor from her and increased her debt by 10 million, so she asked me to stop shifting the blame on her. I asked if Merlin knew how much money they had in reserve, because they had to use it wisely. Marlin lay down on the sofa and decided to read a book. But then he had the idea to ask Alice about the SSS rank task and whether it was really difficult. Alice explained to him that this task was very difficult. An ordinary adventurer cannot be just a support. Only an amethyst rank can complete it. From the story of the head of the guild, she learned that a task of this rank ten years ago was about a giant monster of the North Sea. After all, several important sea routes were disrupted due to his awakening. Many saint rank experts participated in the task, but they were all either defeated or eaten by this monster, or died at sea, and in the end they had to ask the church to send a hero to help. Merlin was surprised that it was such a hero, Alice reported that it was her senpai, the legendary hero of the spear. The young man had heard of him before. Alice also heard about the church that the hero of the spear successfully completed the campaign against Lucifer too, that is, Merlin's mother. Merlin understood that it was true, it was the most wonderful fight he had ever seen. And then he reminded the girl that she was also a hero, and that she knew about the hero of the spear. Merlin thought to himself that perhaps he could remove the curse from his heart if he fought with the hero of the spear. Alice didn't know much, but she had heard that Senpai was very strong in the church and was revered as a legend. The hero is one of the ten legendary heroes. Hearing this, Merlin wondered if there were so many heroes capable of fighting, if they were still alive. I thought to myself, since they were equal to the hero of the spear, their strength should be about the same, and they were worth killing them. Alice had no idea because the bishop was drunk and carried all the nonsense that the legendary heroes had disappeared somewhere. If at least one of them was here, he would have pinned Lucifer III to the ground and forced him to call him daddy. My Paul Alice was happy about what she had just said about Merlin, smiling and saying that he had never met such heroes. Merlin thought to himself that these mysterious heroes also disappeared mysteriously, but with them he had a chance to remove the curse of the heart. Merlin decided to ask how the campaign to the hero of the spear against the giant monster in the North Sea went. Alice thought that the giant monster of the North Sea was crippled and plunged back into the depths of the ocean. Merlin guessed that the hero had only wounded the monster, and if he could kill a huge monster from the North Sea, it meant that he would be stronger than the spear hero, but it was much more difficult since the monster was in the depths of the sea. Having collapsed on the sofa, Merlin thought that they didn't need to make much effort to complete the SSS rank task, so they could only lie down and wait. Alice also reported that they had to pay a certain amount of debt every month and had to work hard every month while waiting for the SSS rank task to appear. But Merlin closed his ears thinking about how the girl annoyed him and tried not to listen to her. While he was lying down, he decided to look at the key, which he now kept on his chest, because it was a long time to wait until Alice got to the jade rank. It was better to put hope in the search for treasure and enjoy life. The young man decided to remind Alice that at that time, she said that she had an informed friend who could reveal the secrets of this key. Merlin wondered if it was possible to rely on Alice's friend, 
because it was better for her not to think about taking their treasure. Alice said that the girl was only interested in the tasks, and she would take Merlin to her as soon as the girl returned from the task. On for the next day earlier in the morning, Merlin was sitting reading a newspaper about how the church had proclaimed that Sword Master Elgin was a knight of redemption in the scriptures and they hoped that he would go to the Holy Land and be baptized the Goddess of Light. The young man was wondering who this Mr. Elgin was. Here the young man read that after the undead case was over, the capital urgently appointed nine of the twelve knights of the Red Bud of Sir Sahadin to investigate it. He said he would destroy the activists of the previous kingdom as soon as possible, so the people don't need to worry. Merlin was very interested in how strong this ninth knight was. At that moment, Alice started knocking on the door, who wanted to use the toilet, because they agreed that she would be the first to use the toilet. Merlin calmly replied that they had to respond to the call of their nature, and who was the first in the slippers. Taking pity on Alice, Merlin decided to go out. Alice could not stand it anymore and asked him to remember that she would not let him just leave if she locked herself in the toilet again and read the newspaper. But Merlin told her that Alice didn't understand anything, that newspapers and a toilet fit perfectly, just like beer and fish. After locking herself in the toilet, Alice said that it was his turn to cook breakfast today. The young man was very annoyed. He just took a frying pan and an egg as someone knocked on the door. Opening the door, Merlin saw Miss Luja, the girl wanted to see Miss Alice. Alice came out of the toilet and asked Miss Luja what happened. Then Luja reported that the two of them had to go to the guild with her right now. The Knights of the Red Bud have sent people from the capital to meet them. Merlin did not understand why the Knights of the Red Bud had to meet with them. This surprised him very much, because only in the morning he read a newspaper that the kingdom had sent one of the knights to deal with the situation. Rexem, active army. The soldier greeted the beautiful and clever Alice, who was finally here and asked her to pass, then he accidentally touched her, and the girl immediately hit him, which the knight really liked. Merlin did not understand his reaction at all. Then Merlin decided to ask who this man was and Alice replied that it was Captain Price of the active army. The man said that Miss Alice took advantage of new ways. For example, she would treat him mercilessly, then it would give him pleasure. Then he saw Merlin, the love rival of Master Arnold, whom he mentioned, whether it was true. Then the knight said that he thought how cool Merlin was since he was sitting on his wife's neck. Then Alice asked him to shut up and not forget why he called them here. After escorting the guys into the room, the knight talked about them waiting here, and in the meantime he would call representatives from the Red Bud, saying that the guys had arrived. Clutching the key in his hand, Merlin asked Alice not to talk about this key if representatives of this Red Bud asked. Alice asked if everything would be alright, hiding the key, then the knights from the Red Bud appeared on the threshold. When they saw the guys, they asked if it was Mr. Merlin and Miss Alice. The guys answered that it was them and then the main knight introduced himself that his name was Brent Chapman. He was appointed the ninth knight of the Red Bud by Sir Sahadin to interview the guys. This made Merlin very tense, and he asked what question was being discussed. And the knight informed Merlin that it was, of course, about the recent spread of the undead in Denbyshire. And judging by the report of the active army, it was they who counterattacked with the guardian of the former kingdom. Alice asked if the knight had come to find out only about this, then he asked not to be nervous because the people of the head of Taylor, the knights would not complicate their lives. After all, to be honest, the head of Taylor came to the palace and taught them, the knights of the reserve, so you could call them his disciples. Merlin thought to himself about the status of this old man, the head of the guild, but as he was so high, he thought that he could only close his eyes and pretend to be with a mysterious person. Interrupting his thoughts, the knight talked about what needed to be started and asked them, as witnesses, if they had heard any important information from the conversation of the two holy ranks. Alice began to say that they were saying something about the revival of the former kingdom and getting a new power, then the knight asked what it meant to get a new power. Merlin hit Alice on the leg so that she would not forget that she did not need to say too much. Alice said that she was too far away and didn't hear everything. Then the knight asked if she knew anything about the man who revived Bernard. The girl said that perhaps it was his majesty the prince of the previous kingdom. She had heard from them that her majesty the prince was now living by sucking the blood of the elves. The knight, looking at the fox, said that this was important information. The population of the elves of Bretonia is very scarce, and they could track their fortress by strict customs checks. Could Alice say anything else? Because what she said would help them a lot. The knight also hoped that the girl was not hiding anything from them. Alice told me everything she knew. Bernard wanted to revive the old kingdom, Claude didn't agree with him, so they started fighting. 
As the knight knew, even a saint rank on the verge of death, a high rank would still not be able to take a normal blow from him, and nevertheless, Alice was able to deal them both the last blow. It didn't make any sense, Alice began to smile and said that Bernard was very strong. But it wasn't she who killed him, but a young man so that he was next to her, pointing at Merlin. Merlin about how he killed him. The knight, addressing Miss Alice, knew that the girl really gave Merlin all the glory, and they were good as a couple, apparently they got along well. But the knight asked her to be serious in this situation because the girl had to tell the truth, if she was talking nonsense. It would be considered an open mockery of the knight's intelligence red bud. Alice did not like that everyone did not believe in Merlin's account, and she and she asked to show Merlin their punches. Otherwise they won't even believe it and think she's crazy. Merlin didn't want to do it, he wasn't a monkey. Then the girl was asked, hoping that Alice would truthfully answer the question about Bernard's strength. The knight said that Alice knew that they were sent by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth herself and the girl should have been aware of the consequences of refusing to cooperate. Alice didn't understand what they wanted from her because she had already told them the whole truth. Merlin called the knight and talked about how he hated being threatened by the royal knights. Were they really so cool? The knight didn't understand what Merlin meant. Did he doubt the authority of the knights of the Red Bud? Alice did not understand why everything turned out this way. She had to come up with an excuse and dissuade Merlin. Alice clamped Merlin's mouth so that he wouldn't say anything unnecessary anymore and said that Bernard's sorcerers weren't that strong. They were just high level. Standing up, the knight thought so, it looks like the four heroes of the previous kingdom were not so special. They are not as beautiful as they said. Entrusting Sir Sahadin to such a task is like cracking a nut with a sledgehammer. Merlin said that he thought that this stormtrooper or whoever he was was very weak. Then, leaving, the knight said that Miss Alice's husband was many times more honest than she was. The young man also looked at Alice and asked if she had heard that he was called more honest than her. Alice was angry about it again, because it wasn't just that now. Thanking for the help and saying goodbye, the knights left, leaving Alice alone with Merlin. Alice was thinking about what was wrong with this time, why no one believed in the truth and why Merlin could not show everyone his strength. Merlin said that it was very hard, that he had to show his strength every time when asked about it. It wasn't necessary, he wasn't an acrobat. After leaving the building, a girl from the Bud Knights asked the captain what they should do next. Then the captain offered to return to the capital and report everything to Sir Sahadin. The young man considered it more than enough for this. Other knights of Red Bhutan will not be needed to deal with the high level. Then he saw a person, she looked like the thief dragon tamer Caroline, referring to the four heroes, and she looked very much like a portrait from ancient records. But even if the four heroes were reborn, then why did they come to Rexham? The captain thought to himself. After telling the rumor that he might have made a mistake, he asked his subordinates to follow him. Caroline, hiding behind the building, waited until they left. Alice, who was near the waterfall, decided to train her strength. The girl used the waterfall and turned it into one solid piece of ice, but at some point the water had already overtaken her, and Alice realized that she still did not reach the saint rank. Then a voice asked her if Alice really fell a little short, because it was obvious that she was walking to the holy rank like walking to Mars. At that moment, she saw Merlin, who was watching her from the cliff. The girl was asking how he knew she was here. Of course she needed to train to reach Saint Rank soon. The gelding said that the last few days Alice left early and came late. He became curious, so today he followed her and realized that the girl was training here. Merlin didn't understand if it was really effective to rush so steadily. Maybe she was just wasting her time. Alice said she always trained like that. Then Merlin came down and asked the girl, didn't you ask him a year ago why Merlin was so strong? and he told her that he had defeated the giant Tor the sea demon and entered the lava. Alice remembered him telling her that. Then Merlin explained that this was the answer to becoming strong. When a person is in a situation close to death, the potential begins to unfold. Alice thought it made sense because her mana and aura were cleared after she was beaten half to death by that goblin king. But the problem is that who will seek death for no reason, she asked Merlin. The young man replied that he would be her training partner and ensure that she would no doubt smell death from his every move. Then Alice asked if the young man was trying to take it out on her by becoming her partner. Merlin didn't understand why he had to do this. He wouldn't have done it either if it wasn't for their shared duty. And Alice should have been glad that the young man would be her partner, because he wouldn't even agree to teach Beelzebub's sister when she asked him. Alice also thought that she would be in danger if he hid evil intentions. Merlin started to leave and said that the girl was so meticulous, but then taking a stick, he asked if Alice had a reason to worry because this flimsy twig was definitely not worth being afraid of and asked the girl to attack him with all her might. 
He asked if she remembered the time when they had fun. He butchered the fox and left it on the beach. These words irritated Alice, and she began to attack him with icy drops. Merlin realized that the girl had not studied at all and asked why she used magic, knowing that he had an antipathic barrier, and that these drops with which she attacked him were nothing to him. After that, Merlin asked to attack him with a sword, and Alice went into battle. Every time she attacked Merlin, her blows were too slow, so slow that the young man could hit her every time with the stick he held in his hand. Looking at Alice, Merlin asked if the girl could attack him at all. Alice was almost exhausted, but then she got inspired and asked not to underestimate her. Then Merlin saw her strength. Alice went on the attack on Merlin asking him to experience the essence of the Great Snow Mountain and Merlin decided to defend himself with a stick that he had. But at some point he still defeated Alice. Being at home, Alice sat with her head bandaged and sulked at Merlin, asking the young man about why he was so strong as he fought with just a stick. While preparing some food, Merlin talked about and apologized to Alice that his hand just slipped. He also did this so that Alice could reach the holy rank soon. Alice does not intend to ask why he hit her. She found him a job and was also kind and allowed him to live in her house. Merlin also said that Alice found him a job because he saved her, otherwise she would have been killed by his sister. And she shared the house with him only because it would be cheaper for her, and the young man asked not to talk as if he had taken possession of her. And then he kept swearing that he didn't hit Alice on purpose and asked her not to sulk at him. After that, Merlin put a stew with soup in front of her and asked Alice to eat. It smelled very tasty and tasted great too. Alice didn't understand what was wrong with this guy. He was the best not only in battle, but also in cooking. He really got on her nerves. From that moment on, she decided that she would do all the housework and Merlin would be responsible for cooking. There was an empty bowl of soup on the table. The next day Merlin went to the races again. Merlin sat and thought that he had lost again and blamed Hobbes for this. His words were completely different from reality. He lost even though he bet on Richard. Hobbes asked him not to get upset and said that there was no absolute guarantee of victory. Losing once or twice was completely normal. Merlin asked Hobbes not to lie, because he did not win even one copper coin, even though he made more than a thousand bets. At that moment Hobbes choked on his beer, because an ordinary person would have won at least a little was the young man a favorite of the goddess of failures. The guild master sat behind them and thought to himself about Merlin, thinking that the young man trains his intuition and willpower by betting on the racetrack. It was some kind of unique training method, which was to be expected from Merlin. Hobbes will offer the young man to try a few more times and then he will definitely win. Merlin said that he didn't have much money to bet a couple more times, because Alice hid the money perfectly. Hobbes said that he had almost forgotten that Merlin was in the henpecked husband's club, so he was not as free as before. But Merlin asked him not to talk about it, because he and Alice were not even married. Taking out the key and looking at it, Merlin thought that treasure hunting was a more reliable way of earning money. At that moment, he sensed a look on him. Seeing this, he began to look around. Carol was standing near the door and wanted to ask about Alice at the Adventurer's Guild, but she didn't think that she would stumble upon a person who would have a key. Looking at Merlin, she thought that judging by the stories, it was the husband of that gold rank adventurer, but she did not feel the presence of Mana or Aura from him, so it would be easier to pick up the key of an ordinary resident, Carol decided. Hobbes sat next to the young man and tried to calm him down and not think about his wife right now, because he was free now, so Hobbes suggested they go have fun in Helena's secret cottage. Merlin had never heard of the secret cottage and Hobbes asked if he had never told him both about this place, a place with a lot of alcohol and girls, a place that any man would understand. Taking Merlin by the arm, he led him away from the racetrack. Merlin told Hobbes that he had told him so mysteriously that he was curious, but he still had no money. Hobbes told the guy not to sweat because he pays and will let him feel this community. He also talked about Price, who also needed to come to this place. Reaching Helena's cottage, Merlin plunged into a secret base in a man's paradise. They were greeted by a beautiful girl at the entrance. Looking at her, Merlin thought that this was a woman and if there was an opportunity, Alice needed to learn from her. Hobbes introduced his friend Marilyn Lucifer who was the new adventurer of the guild, but said that the young man was not as strong as he was. Then the girl was surprised to see the young man and Merlin did not understand what it was with her. Hobbes decided to ask what was wrong with Miss Helena and whether she was ill, but the girl said that she was alright and asked to go to their VIP room. Hobbes was flirting with some girl again, another was having fun with another one, and Merlin was drinking beer and thinking that city guys know how to fool around. Hobbes asked Merlin to stop just drinking because he wanted to order him something and asked him to choose a program for the young man to cheer up a little. 
Merlin wanted to see how a stone was broken on the chest of a beautiful woman with a hammer, whether there was anything like that on the menu. Hobbs, looking at the menu, thought that this most likely did not exist and offered Merlin to order a dancer. At that moment, a dancer came into their room and said that even though they did not call her, she came to show them the Sognian Vortex, hoping that the young men would like it. His friend immediately rushed to the girl to look at this sight, but it didn't interest Merlin a bit, he just sat and stared at the ceiling. The girl thought that if she hadn't tried to do everything secretly to divert the knight's attention from herself, she would have killed them in an instant. She was looking at Merlin, who was holding back his emotions well, but thought that later he would still be fascinated by her, and then she could easily take the key. Asking not to miss her show, she began to dance. She danced so skillfully that the guys really liked it. But Merlin did not emit any emotions and just looked indifferently at the girl who danced in front of him. The dancers noticed the key on the young man's neck and decided to come closer to him and dance next to him. Merlin did not understand what was happening. The feeling he felt from the girl was very nauseating. Then she approached him and began to take the key from him. Merlin pushed me away and said it was boring. The girl, walking away, asked if Merlin was talking about the fact that she was not charming. Merlin just talked about the fact that he had different tastes and asked the two guys who were there to serve him, asking how old the girl was, then smiling, she told the young man what a bore he was, she was only 20 years old. Merlin asked her not to lie, young girls, not using such perfume as on her and decided to tell her a little secret. Usually, either old unmarried women or grandmothers come up to him and ask who she was in their lives. Then someone apologized for interrupting his fun. But Mr. Merlin was called, and the girl asked him to go with him. Hobbs was afraid it was his wife. Merlin was also uneasy because it was the first time he had come to such a place and did not think that Alice could find him. Merlin, walking down the corridor after Helena, thought that they were lucky that it wasn't Alice. If it was her, then he got a good scolding because this petty defender of justice would not let him live in peace if she knew that he was in such a place. Following Miss Helena to the young man, it seemed suspicious that she was calling him to the dungeon and he decided to ask where Miss Helena was taking him. Because earlier the girl reported that someone wanted to see him and the young man asked where this person was. Helena smilingly asked Sir Merlin to follow her, and she would explain everything then Merlin obediently followed her. Stand by the door of Helena said that they arrived at this place. The young man realized where she had brought him, and then Helena greeted him as Mr. Lucifer. Merlin was asking if Helena was a demon and how she recognized him, because not so many comrades saw his face. To tell the truth, Helena admitted she had seen Mr. Lucifer before. The meeting of the Seven Kings three years ago was held in the palace of the first demon king. She went there with her lord as an escort. Merlin asked who Helena had already served, and she said that her name was Helena, Fielding Fitzgerald. She belonged to the palace of the fourth demon king and serves as a general. Now Merlin knew this, and her master was his friend the demon king of the fourth palace and the lord of lust Asmodeus. In order to save the fourth demon king from the economic crisis, Asmodeus decided to make his debut and became an idol of demons. His popularity increased when he dressed up as a girl and became the favorite of the majority among the demon race. The trend of dressing up as a girl did not last long. Unfortunately, the parliamentary oldies suppressed this trend because they were concerned that the aggressive image of the demonic race would be hurt. Even now, Asmodeus is the dream of many male demons. Helena left and talked about not distracting them from their memories and Merlin was left alone with a large mirror and a comfortable chair that was in this room. Merlin thought that complicating unnecessary things was so like a demon and sitting down in a chair. He asked Asmodeus to show himself to him. Asmodeus was in the girl's body and told a friend that they had not seen each other for a long time. Merlin saw that Asmodeus was still the same as always. For how many years, how many winters, Merlin greeted Asmodeus, he was still the same as always. Asmodeus, hiding behind a fan, told the young man that a year ago they could not have imagined that they would meet him in this way. Asmodeus said that the young man was at his brothel and asked if he was lonely. Merlin asked if he was too curious, calling him a libertine. Asmodeus heard that Merlin called him a libertine and talked about why he remembered that someone looked at him lasciviously and even secretly sent a gift when they first met. Merlin bit off a piece of the mug he was drinking, because how could he know then that Asmodeus was a girl with a trick and stop reminding him of anything dark past? Merlin asked him, who was caught off guard. Asmodeus was laughing at the young man, but the time for jokes has passed and Asmodeus decided that enough was enough about it, because he would not mock Merlin, because they were friends. He had heard that Merlin had been suspended by the parliamentary elders for failing to fulfill his duties. After getting comfortable in the chair, Merlin said that it was normal for a parasite and a slacker like him, 
who could not revive the demon race, and therefore he was expelled. Then Merlin thought that he could not tell Asmodeus that he would not find a strong opponent to prolong his life if he stayed in the palace of the demon king. Then Asmodeus asked if this was done for some reason, because Merlin used to be an outstanding and incomparable demon. But then he changed. Pointing at the young man, Asmodeus asked if he wanted to take back his throne, because the demonic parliament would change its mind about him if Asmodeus wrote a letter. The young man thanked his friend for his kindness, but the price of freedom was more expensive, now he just wanted to live a free and happy life. To himself, Merlin thought that if he returned, he would only wait for his death, if he really wanted to live there then he would have to solve all his comrades. Asmodeus did not understand how freedom was connected with the fact that the young man became an adventurer of even lower rank. The young man asked if he did not know that the greatest hermit would go to the most noisy fair, and money could not buy his will. After looking at Merlin and saying that the palace of the first demon king will probably remain abandoned if Merlin does not return and the title of ruler of pride will be on him, Merlin reminded that his seven generals were pretty good, they had the potential to be his successors. Why wouldn't Asmodeus ask the elders to consider their candidacies? Asmodeus thought Merlin was mocking him. Sovereign strength is one of the most important evaluative qualities, and his seven generals cannot defeat even him. Asmodeus thought that the parliamentary elders would ask Merlin to return if they could find a suitable heir person. So I turned to my friend and told Merlin that he would not be able to escape. Merlin was asking if Asmodeus had told him to come here just for that. But Asmodeus did not call him for this at all, but then to send Merlin an invitation. Merlin was inspired and then Asmodeus told that he wanted to raise the race of demons to the top of all kinds, and invited Merlin to join as a procession of transvestites and make his debut as a team, and also invited him to start their dazzling glory. Merlin refused this offer. Lifting the chair, Merlin said that he really wanted to clean up Asmodeus' muzzle. Asmaji also asked to return to the topic. Because judging by the report of his subordinates, traces of Hell's messengers have recently appeared in Britonia. Before that, Merlin had started a feud with Hell, so Asmodia asked Merlin to be damn careful. Then the young man asked Asmodeus not to worry about him, because for whom he took him, he could cut Satan the Lord of Hell if he came to him. Then Asmodeus saw that Merlin remained the same as always, the same was addressed to his friend Asmodeus from Merlin. After leaving the office, Helena, addressing Mr. Lucifer, said that she would report to him if the Lord wished to see him again. Then Merlin asked her not to address him as Lucifer, now he was not the demon king. Helen also said that he would remain his majesty King Lucifer until the parliament finds a new ruler of pride. Then Merlin's status will not change. Turning away from Helena, the young man told her so that she could do what she wanted thinking to herself that what was the meaning of his status if he had no authority. Walking down the corridor, he told Helena that he was afraid to run into his partner. There was some place where there were fewer people. Helena asked if Merlin wanted to return to Hobbes. The young man did not want this and asked a question about Helena whether she had served Asmodeus for a long time. The girl threw him to follow her and said that she had served him for a long time, and before she served her master as a maid and was responsible for his food and daily life. Merlin thought that even though they were both maids, but why was it so, why was his maid a very strange lady? Then Merlin remembered the head of the maids of his palace that she was one of the seven generals of the demon king's palace. She was responsible for taking care of the king but her character was very strange. The young man thought that if he successfully removed the curse of the heart and returned to the palace of the demon king, he would like to have a normal mountain like Helena to take care of his life. Helena escorting Mr. Lucifer asked why he communicated with people as usual adventure. Was it really in order to hide that secret plan? The young man heard the plan for the first time and asked what exactly Helena was talking about. The girl was talking about a plan to strengthen the demon race. Merlin was ready to be insulted and leave the demon king's palace in order to trick people into entering their country and entering the enemy's inner circles. Perhaps it was just like that. Mr. Lucifer cared about the demon race and his determination regarding the plan would not be shaken even if he was criticized and questioned. He was a role model for all demons. Marlin, taking Helena by the shoulder, reported that she had thought of everything correctly. She was very smart to realize this. Since this plan affected the fate of the entire demon race, he couldn't tell her all the details, but Helena had to keep everything a secret, too. The girl said that her master was not worried because she would not tell anyone, so if he needed something, he asked her to contact him. Although Martin said that he needed some kind of help at all, and Helena asked what kind of help Lucifer needed for Mr. because she would try to help him. Lucifer said that he owed some people money because of some problems, which drives him into a stupor, forces him to suspend the implementation of his plan and worries him. 
Helena asked how much Mr. Merlin owed, because she could pay for him, and from that she would help resume the plan to strengthen the demonic race. Marlin said that it wasn't that much, just a couple of tens of millions of gold at that moment Helena closed the door in front of him. The girl told Mr. Lucifer to go home to sleep, and he could come and have fun when he was free, wishing him good night. Merlin did not believe, did not believe in what he saw, because Helena had promised to help him before and leaving her house with thoughts that his grandiose project had failed. He did not suspect that Carol was watching him. She only planned to take the key, but the young man himself asked for death. This time she will not only return the key to the infernal building, but also deal with Merlin otherwise she will not be able to restrain herself. Merlin was walking down the street and was talking about us eating when he returned when suddenly Carol appeared behind him and wanted to attack Merlin. She was very proud of herself and wished Merlin to die under her daggers, calling him a pathetic adventurer of the Iron Rank. Caroline chased Merlin and offered him to die under her daggers, but then Merlin stopped her, hitting the girl in the stomach that she flew a few meters away from Merlin. Seeing this, Merlin did not understand why the girl was approaching him and whether she wanted to flirt with him. Seeing that she was lying between the boxes, he realized that it was the old lady who pretended to be a young woman and asked not to bother him because he had a feeling that they were not destined to be together. While the young man apologized to Carol that she was lying in the boxes and was beside herself with anger, she, looking at Merlin leaving in the wake, could not understand if this guy was really an adventurer of the Iron Rank. How was it possible? Getting up, she did not understand how she had been deceived by his adventurer certificate, because he was definitely hiding his strength and it seemed that Carol alone could not pick up this key. Then a black hole appeared in front of her and it was his majesty who asked how Caroline was, how the search for the key was going. Caroline was apologizing to his majesty because she had made a mistake the opponent would be insanely strong and probably he was at the peak of the holy rank. His Majesty could not believe his ears, because then Bernard's death was justified, and he asked to hurry because the Royal Knights of the Red Bud began their search for their fortress. Caroline asked His Majesty not to worry, because she would not make any more mistakes and asked if His Majesty remembered the Holy Ice Dragon. His Majesty asked Icerime if it wasn't the Holy Dragon protector of their former kingdom of Erisa. The Holy Ice Dragon Icerim is one of the six Holy Dragons. He signed a contract with the former king and became the defender of Eris. He was sealed in Ben Nevis by thousands of court magicians when the former kingdom was destroyed and fell into a deep sleep. Then the prince asked if Caroline had found out about the location of the Holy Dragon. The girl replied that she knew where it was, and she also knew the dragon language, so she would definitely be able to wake up Isram. If he helps them, it doesn't matter how many experts they encounter. Caroline was sure that they would be able to kill them all and return the key to the infernal buildings. His majesty thought that it was to their advantage, because if the dragon Isram complied with the terms of his father's contract, then their strength would double and they would be invincible. Night came, and Merlin returned home. An angry Alice asked him where he was, because he returned late, and he was not in the guild. Merlin also reported that he went out for a walk along the streets and just went for a walk. Then Alice did not believe him that it was just a night walk, because she noticed a lipstick mark on his face. It was very strange because Merlin did not allow himself to be kissed by this girl. Then Alice told Merlin that he got caught on the first question and he also smelled of another girl's perfume. And Alice asked where Merlin had been hanging around all this time and ordered him to tell him the truth right now. Merlin said that Alice had no right to interfere in his affairs. It seemed to him that she was trying to get into his personal life. Alice, embarrassed, said that although they were not actually married, but what others would think if they saw Merlin with other girls. Merlin talked about the fact that they were a real couple, why Alice was so worried about it then. Alice said that she valued her reputation very much, and Merlin was ruining everything if she didn't behave decently. Then Merlin would ask if he couldn't even have fun. Alice asked him to start training with her tomorrow and stop spending time with Hobbs all the time. Merlin asked if Alice was afraid that he would accidentally hurt her again. The girl asked if she couldn't change her mind again and left in a rage from Merlin. Merlin understood how difficult it was to understand a woman's heart, because it was so changeable. The next day they went to the waterfall again and began their battle. Alice was already exhausted and fell to her knees, as Merlin asked if this was really all the girl was capable of. But Alice said that she was still able to continue, then Merlin asked her to speed up. If it goes on like this, then how will Alice be able to reach the saint rank at this moment? She sent ice spray at him again and asked the young man to be silent. Merlin thought that Alice hadn't studied at all and still used magic against her even though she knew how useless she was. After a long training session, they decided to rest Alice was upset, and Merlin was sitting warming himself near the campfire. 
Alice sadly asked did Merlin not tell her that it would be a little softer Merlin told her that it would be. But Alice was just too weak, and after cooking the fish, he asked if Alice would eat, then the girl asked to leave her some. Alice thought about what an effective workout it was, she felt that she had improved, but Merlin said that the girl was still far from the desired result. Being a magic swordsman is too much for a girl, it was better to choose one thing either to become a magician or to become a swordsman. For Alice, these are more strange words, because her teacher was the best magic swordsman and if she could, then Alice could. Merlin told the girl that Alice was not her teacher, for some reason she was also proud of herself. He would say that Alice would need to quickly change the vector of development. Alice vowed to become the heiress of the great snowy mountain when she was training with her teacher. She would not meet her if she gave up halfway. Merlin was thinking about how stubborn Alice was. If only there was some kind of medicine or something like that that could immediately raise Alice to saint rank. Or she needed some kind of divine artifact or equipment. Then Alice had a question whether Merlin was so strong because of his weapon. She just talked to the bishop a year ago, and he told her that the demonic sword that Merlin was striking was very strong but Merlin himself was not so strong without it. The young man asked how it was possible to trust such a bishop, who would beg for mercy after a couple of threats. Pointing at his sword, Merlin explained that it was the king's weapon. It was mainly used to confirm the identity of the demon king and every demon king had one. But Alice was saying that Merlin was no longer the demon king. Was it really possible for him to take such a thing out of the demon king's palace? Merlin, looking at his sword, said that he was used to using it and moreover, those who could not pull this sword out of the scabbard would not be recognized as the ruler of pride, so they could leave everything as it is until a candidate was found. Alice heard that anyone could pull it out, and then the young man threw her a sword so that she could try. Looking at the sword, the girl thought that she had seen Merlin use it a lot of times, but she had never touched this sword herself. It looked like an ordinary weapon from a merchant's shop, but trying to open it, Alice failed. She couldn't open the sword, even though she invested all her high-ranking aura, then Merlin suggested that she give it up. The break was over and they should have continued in the same spirit, but Alice said that she didn't even rest. Continuing the training, Merlin asked Alice to fight faster and after using the three stages of the final ice, Merlin saw that it was something new at that moment his heart made itself felt. Merlin was struck by his heart, and he fell, which surprised Alice very much. She was able to injure him. At that moment, the pain finally subsided. Merlin, falling, hit Alice on the forehead, and Alice in tears asked how Merlin dared to hit her with his head. Looking at his hand, Merlin saw a scar in this despite the fact that holy water, blessed silver and all that did not work on him. Alice also looked at Merlin and realized that her sword was from the teacher's collection, but she had never seen how she used it and did not think that it would work on Merlin, who is at the level of the demon king. Looking at the sword, the young man thought that he was very strange, it felt like the sword was challenging him. After looking at the sword, Merlin decided to give it to Alice and asked what kind of seal was on the ball because the weapon was good, but why put a seal on it? Alice, on the other hand, had no idea what to seal, which the young man was talking about and said that she stole this sword and the teacher. Merlin didn't understand how a girl could say such a thing without shame. Alice explained that she secretly ran away from the mountain and thought that but realized that she had learned. Only after a real fight she decided that she would not let the teacher know what she was doing now. Therefore, Merlin said that Alice was stupid since she got into such a situation. If he were her teacher, he would not want to embarrass himself so much. Alice at this moment decided to remind Merlin because of whom she, in his opinion, got into this situation. It was already too late, and Merlin offered to finish training for today. Night came, and Merlin continued to look at his hand, because the sword was able to leave a scar on it and it looked like there was something wrong with this sword. It was definitely unusual. The young man wondered if Alice could become a threat to his life. At that moment, Alice was sleeping next to her sword. A few days later, Alice and Merlin were heading together, and Alice asked Merlin not to delay, because she didn't want to waste Miss Da Vinci's time. The young man tried to ask if Miss Da Vinci was really so busy. Then Alice said that Miss Da Vinci was either on a mission all the time or was spending time in the library, and it was usually very difficult to meet her. When they came to the library, they saw a girl who was sitting and reading a book. She turned to Alice and said that they hadn't seen her for a long time. She had heard from Miss Luja that Alice needed something from her. Then Alice apologized for the fact that she had to ask Da Vinci for help when she just returned from a mission. Then Alice was interrupted. It was a girl who told her that they had not seen each other for a long time and asked why Alice did not greet her when she saw her. 
Turning around, Alice addressed the girl as a dark-skinned milking machine. Then she was scared and asked what kind of expression Alice had and what kind of tone. It was not necessary to so clearly show their discrimination over her because the girl was offended. After all, she just had more forms than Alice and she was more popular and earned more, lived in a more spacious place and did not have a debt of several tens of millions. What was wrong with that? Why was there a problem? The girl was interested in why Alice was so cruel to her. All these words hurt Alice. The guy, trying to lift Alice, asked if she was okay there. Alice remembered Rosie who was still the same as always, she was in second place to her most hated people. Then Merlin asked her who was in the first, and of course he was in the first, Alice answered the young man. Then Rosie asked Alice if the girl was really married and it must have been the same brother. The girl said that her heart trembled before Merlin. Rosie was also surprised that she didn't see Arnold again after returning. He must have been crying in the toilet after learning that Merlin and Alice were married. Merlin, looking at the girl, thought that it would be great if Alice had at least half of this miracle. Examining the rosy forms, the young man reflected. At that moment, Alice interrupted Merlin's examination and explained that they were not married. They would only be as a formally married couple. The manager confirmed that they really were not married. Then taking Merlin's friend Rosie, she decided that since they were not a couple, she decided to take Merlin away from the girl because she really liked such handsome men as Merlin. And Rosie decided to ask her brother if her forms were really better than some kind of board, if it was really better than Alice's. Alice rushed to Rosie and asked her not to molest Merlin and have at least a little shame, calling the girl a dark-skinned milking machine and separating Merlin and Rosie by herself, saying that Merlin was hers. Merlin was very surprised at such a statement, and Alice flushed with embarrassment. Rosie also decided to tease her, having heard that Alice calls Merlin her own. Alice also said that Merlin was her fake husband asked her to separate, and not to flirt with him. Then Rosie told Miss Alice that she was very sweetly jealous. Alice, looking at Merlin, thought that the person he loved was the swordsman Elgin, not Merlin. But Merlin cooked very tasty food that she liked. Then Da Vinci interrupted their conversation and asked the guys to return to the topic because she wanted to return to the library as soon as possible. Alice apologized for making Da Vinci wait and after showing her the key, Merlin asked that they found it on the last task and would like to know what this key was for. Merlin also asked Miss Da Vinci if she could find out what the key contained. When she saw the key, Mrs. Da Vinci thought about it and did not understand what was special about this key. Alice explained that two saint ranks were fighting for him and therefore there was something unclean. Da Vinci, looking at the material and method of casting, said that this key remained from the former kingdom. Merlin thought to himself that the girl could find out about the key only by one look, which meant that the girl was really on such as Alice said. Directing magic at the key, Da Vinci asked to let the guys study this key, and then she felt a terrible force, from which the key fell to the floor and Alice asked if everything was alright with Miss Da Vinci. Then she answered everything was fine, but she thought it seemed to her that the key was studying the power not belonging to this world. The girl asked Mr. Merlin to give her this key so that she would carefully study it. But Merlin did not like this idea, because he thought that the girl could escape with this key. Alice also asked not to equate Miss Da Vinci by herself, because she was only interested in knowledge, and Alice could vouch for her. Then the young man thought to himself that Alice vouched for the Demon King, but agreed with the girl. Da Vinci thanked Miss Alice for her trust and promised her that she would definitely reveal the secrets of this key. But first she needed to study a couple of old books and taking her book, she asked to give her some time. Then she would let her know when she found out something. A week later Ben Nevis. It was a place covered with snow, and no one could get through, not one of the people. But Carol came there and realized that apparently this was exactly the place where the holy ice dragon was sealed. Looking at those frozen, poor devils who were next to her, the girl realized that they paid a negligible price to seal it. A bunch of high-ranking magicians were killed in the icy stream. And after looking at the dragon, she decided that it was time to start. She believed that after the return of his freedom, the dragon would become a great force that Bretonia could not cope with. Calling to the great ancestors of the six huge dragons, the Lord of Ice, she asked to respond to the call. The defender of the elite, sleeping until now, had to wake up at her call at that moment. The dragon opened his eyes. Rising into the air, one could really see how huge the dragon was and how ferocious its might was. Carol struggled to stay on her feet from the might of the dragon that flew up next to her. She felt a very powerful aura. How could those court magicians who were frozen in all the ice seal this dragon? Because it was unthinkable. The dragon looked at the girl questioningly 
and Caroline asked if he remembered her and introduced herself to the dragon in his language. Then he asked her to be silent, because he could speak the language of people, so he asked Caroline not to speak her bad dragon anymore, to which Caroline was very surprised that the dragon knew the language of people. The girl was surprised that the dragon remembered her, calling him by name. She told Isram that they had not seen each other for a long time. This annoyed the dragon, because who allowed her to call him by his first name and asked her to call her Mr. Isram. Caroline apologized saying that she was careless and apologized to the gentleman. She congratulated him on his return to freedom after 400 years. This surprised the dragon very much. He did not believe that 400 years had passed since he had hibernated. Without looking at those court magicians that were under his feet, he thought about how much time he had spent. Then paying attention to Caroline Dragon, it was interesting why she was still alive. Did her lifespan not come to an end a long time ago, because her appearance had not changed at all? People managed to make an elixir of youth, to which Carol pushed her hair off her face and showed him her true appearance. The dragon realized that she had become undead and asked who controlled Caroline, because he could finish him off for her to print it out. The dragon was surprised that the son of Antossil, the former king, had not died yet. Caroline said that there was no need for this. She was revived by His Majesty Prince Copperfield and told that His Majesty had survived with the help of elf blood until now and even now he was working for the revival of the former kingdom. Caroline asked for help, which is why they resurrected Isram. The dragon explained to her that he was protecting the kingdom because of the contract with Antossil, but now there was no need for this. He clarified with Caroline. But the girl, addressing Mr. Dragon, told him that she had saved him, immediately pretending that it was something insignificant. The dragon said that he had freed him, and now he had to help revive the kingdom. It was an unfair deal. Then the girl said that she wanted to ask the dragon to kill one person. The dragon agreed to this, but asked Caroline. She was one of the strongest people. It could rarely be that he could not cope with someone. But Caroline explained that the guy who had to be killed was very strong, and she was not 100% sure that she could kill him. The dragon was interested in this proposal, and he asked where the opponent was. Meanwhile, Merlin was sleeping peacefully on his couch, but then he blew up because he felt a strong pain in his chest. The interval between each seizure became shorter. Caroline asked the dragon not to worry, because she would prepare everything and that people would come to the place of their death themselves. The dragon asked to leave this opponent on him. He uses the power of dragons to remove all obstacles from the way. Merlin, sitting holding his chest, thought how strong his curse was and that it would soon begin to take effect. He had to kill someone quite strong to make it easier for him. Merlin, having fallen off his sofa, was breathing very heavily. The interval between seizures became less than usual. Then Merlin remembered who he had killed the last time. It was a stormtrooper and a skeleton and both were undead, so they could not mitigate his curse. I also need to remember that there was a goblin king, but he was very weak, so it didn't work out to mitigate the curse properly. At that moment Alice came down the stairs and asking why Merlin was not sleeping the girl was sleepy, and had a lantern in her hand. When she saw Merlin on the floor she was surprised and ran up to him asking what was wrong. When she saw that Merlin was ill, she was very surprised, because it's rare to see an invincible person in such a state. She was wondering what was wrong with Merlin. Bending down to him, Alice asked how he was, asked him not to joke like that in the middle of the night because he could scare people. Then she realized that on the day he trained her, they had hit because of it. Alice tried to help Merlin up, but he said that he himself could become and asked the girl not to pull him. But Alice continued to advance and asked Merlin what kind of illness he had, offering to go to the hospital for him. Merlin said that it was an old problem and would pass later, so he got used to it and climbed back on the sofa and went to bed. Alice saw how hard it was for him and touching this shoulder asked Merlin not to suffer with it alone. If this happens again, he can call her. Then it dawned on her that she looked like a restless wife and began to burn Merlin that she wasn't worried. They just paid their debts together, so it would be hard for her if he died for no reason and asked not to misunderstand her. Merlin, without turning his head, said that he did not need it. Alice turned around and went to see if she had any medicines on the shelves. Merlin, lying in his bed, thought that Alice was sorry for him. This is the heroine and he just failed like the demon king. Then after brewing him tea, the girl asked him to have a good rest. Having stopped her, Merlin asked why they should not stop resting and go to work. Going up the stairs, Alice was not used to seeing Merlin so hardworking and told him about it, because his style is to be as lazy as possible. After getting out of bed, Merlin said that they didn't have much money left from the last time after paying the debt, 
and they couldn't just sit there, which was bad about making money. Seeing Merlin, who finally began to think, Alice was delighted and wondered if she had affected him so much. Smiling, she told the guy that there was nothing wrong with that. Looking at the girl, Merlin asked Alice to think about what she was wearing around the house because they paid for it together. Alice was illuminated from behind by a lantern, and Merlin saw her body under the translucent pajamas and said that he was not interested in Alice. This confused the girl, and she asked to keep her eyes in check. Slamming her door, she went into the room. Lying under the blanket, Alice was shaking with anger thinking that this demon king would never worry about him again and I didn't even care if Merlin died. She thought about how nice it would be if she paid for the house with Elgin, and not with Merlin. Merlin, lying on his sofa, looked at the mug that Alice put on and wondered if the girl was really worried about him. But then he realized that she treated everyone like that because of her character, and it became easier for him. The next day, Alice and Merlin gathered and came back to the guild. They were greeted by Hobbs, who told the couple that they were not even separated. Water in the morning means she had exactly true love. At that moment, Alice looked at him with a pacifying look. Then Hobbs calmed down. The girl wanted to ask if Hobbs had recently dragged Merlin to an indecent institution. Then Hobbs replied that they were just drinking and admiring some shows, spending time together and purely among men. Then Alice asked him to stop teaching him such things while she was not around. She would never allow him to go to such institutions. After saying everything she thought to Hobbs, Alice called Merlin to follow her. Marlin thought to herself that this was the same legendary strict wife. They went to the bulletin board and began to look for whether there was a suitable job for them. But there was no suitable job for the guys in the process. Then Luja called them, asking if the guys were looking for a new job. Because yesterday she received a special assignment from Merlin and Alice. Alice was very surprised by what Luja said. What kind of special assignment it was for them, Merlin was also interested. Alice explained that it was a type of task from the guild to the adventurer, where the customer can choose specific candidates for a specific assignment. Fame proves his strength the more popular an adventurer was, the more tasks he has, and the amount of rewards becomes greater. Merlin was thinking about how popular he was, and Alice was asking Luja what kind of errand it was. Luja tried to find it among all her cards, and she told the girl that it was not assigned to the village of Sujeji at the foot of Mount Ben Nevis. And while Alice was waiting, Luja told that this village was attacked by a dragon and this surprised Alice very much and interested Merlin. Merlin thought that ever since the dragons migrated to the southern United Kingdom, humans have rarely seen the dragon race, with the exception of earth dragons, as they are a common method of transportation. But attacking at such a time with a dragon was extremely unusual. Luja heard that the dragon brought winter to this village early, and the worst thing is that according to rumors, the dragon ate people. This greatly surprised and excited Alice. Luja also told her that it was an evil dragon who demanded from the village that they sacrifice young girls to him and there have already been a lot of deaths in this village. Luja handed Alice the assignment, and she began to read it, while Merlin peeked at the assignment from behind. Seeing that the reward was quite impressive and then he was wondering what was the strength of this dragon. Hobbs, surprised, asked the guys if Su Jeji was attacked by a dragon, and then Merlin asked if he had heard something about it. Hobbs heard that it was not quite an ordinary dragon, but an ice dragon, and coincidentally one of the six sacred dragons was sealed nearby. Hence, the dragon that is intimidating the village must be the most sacred dragon ice rum. Hearing this, Luja couldn't believe her eyes. If it was a sacred dragon, then only the Knights of the Red Bud could defeat it. But Hobbes was afraid that even for them it might be difficult, but the demon king living in the north could defeat him. Hobbes was sitting next to Luja and she was asking if he was drunk, why no one except the demon king could defeat this dragon. Hobbes asked if the girl had heard about the sacred dragon Ives. Then Luja asked him who had not heard of holy dragons like Ives. Hobbes said that a few years ago the Holy See sent a sacred dragon to battle with the demon king Lucifer III but he never returned for obvious reasons. Merlin, listening at the same time, silently asked Hobbes to continue, proudly lifting his nose, because he would not believe that the legendary man he was talking about was standing right in front of him and what a pity that only Alice knew about it. Then Luja slapped the table, saying that she had just asked Hobbes not to change the subject, because they were talking about Alice and Merlin's assignment. If Isram was indeed a sacred dragon, then they couldn't get approval if something went wrong then Hobbes would be responsible for his words. Hobbes, seeing how angry Luja was, said that he just heard and it was his own guesses, asking the girl not to take it seriously. Merlin wondered if Hobbes' guesses were correct, then it was worth studying this task and the effect of mitigating the curse is much better. Merlin, turning to Luja, said that they would take this task and that everything would be fine with them. 
At the same time, Luja was surprised that if their opponent was actually a sacred dragon, then the guys would be in danger. Luja looked at the fox and asked what the girl thought about it, and then Alice said that most likely Hobbs was just lying. They were victims and Alice couldn't just sit back and watch it, so she said that she and Merlin would take this task. Luja looked at her and asked the girl to be careful and put the seal on the task. The task was level S and the head of the Rexem guild approved it. The next day, Arnold decided to visit the Adventurer's Guild, opening the doors and breaking out of it. He asked Miss Alice, asking her to return her heart to him, which the girl had stolen. He has thought it over well over the past few days and if Alice does not accept him, then his feelings must not have been so strongly expressed. So from now on he will pursue the girl with all his heart. He is sure that one day she will fall in love with him. Presenting a bouquet of roses in front of him, Hobbs stood smiling with a mug of beer, and, as always, he asked if Arnold had come to Alice, and she was not there now, she was on a mission with Merlin. Sitting in their cart, the guys harnessed Mengmin's donkey again and went on a mission. At that moment Merlin was sneezing, which means that most likely someone remembered him. Hearing him sneeze, Alice asked if the young man was sick, to which he replied that such temperatures were nothing for the demon king, so he could not get sick, just someone remembered him with an unkind word. Alice, looking at him, reported the fact that he was not cold, because he was cold-blooded than Merlin. Taking off his glove, asked if Alice was talking about this, and the guy took the girl by the cheeks with his hands. Alice screamed and asked him to let it go, it was very hot. But then finding out that it was quite warm, she asked Merlin to let her use it as a hot water bottle. Then Merlin informed her that the demon's body temperature was higher than that of a human, and even more so than Alice's, and the young man realized from Alice's cheeks that he got into the refrigerator and asked if Alice was in the sect of snowy mountains. Because she was absolutely useless in this park, a quarrel broke out between them again. Merlin put his gloves back on, Alice was shivering, talking about how cold she was. At that moment, Alice threw a package at the young man. He asked what it was then the girl said that it was for him because she could not look at him so undressed, so it became even colder for her. Unwrapping the package, Merlin saw a scarf and Alice reported that he had lost so much money on bets that he didn't even have enough for a scarf, so she bought it for him. Keep going Merlin, asked why it all looked like a deal and Alice shouted that if he didn't need it, then put it down. He gives back this scarf, but the young man refused, everything that falls into the devil's hands becomes his. They continued to ride in the cart and after looking at Alice, Merlin remembered a mug of warm tea that she made for him and thanked Alice, which surprised the girl very much. Alice thought she had heard it, but when she looked, she saw that Merlin was not looking at her. Alice looked at Merlin and then suddenly felt that her heart skipped a beat, which surprised the girl very much, because she loved only the swordsman Elgin and not this stingy selfish demon king, waving Alice's hands thinking about something. Merlin just watched her with a surprised look, but he was already used to Alice's seizures so he didn't care. Then Alice began to sneeze, because it was very cold then the gelding said and that they were almost in the village also noted that in the course of the dragon was a weakling because he could not even change the weather. They arrived at the village and saw an ice mountain. Merlin thought that perhaps it was the tricks of the sacred dragon. The mountain was so huge that Alice wondered if it really was the handiwork of the sacred dragon and the young man still wasn't sure if the sacred dragon was at the same level when he fought with him. But then he wouldn't have wasted his strength just to realize a small ice mountain. Dragon Ice from thought about how humiliating it was for him. It was unpleasant to him that he personally came here for the sake of a small village. Then Caroline apologized to him, because she had to die for his honor. But the dragon asked her not to worry human lives were useless for him. Killing them he would not be able to gain eternal honor. However, the humans were quite tasty, the dragon told her. Caroline, watching him, or rather the big lizard, who absolutely did not want to bow down or surrender to people. How the king managed to sign a contract with him, the girl did not understand. And then she asked the sacred dragon not to worry because the target would arrive soon. The dragon said that it was good because he did not like to be kept waiting for a long time. He had not seen his old friends for a long time and after he helped her kill the enemy, he would go in search of his friend Ives. Caroline was surprised to hear this name. Then the dragon asked if there was anything to tell her about Ives. At the same time Caroline said that she had heard rumors about Mr. Ives but just did not know how true they were and the girl said that it was rumored that the dragon died at the hands of the ruler of pride Merlin Lucifer. This enraged the dragon, because how could the demonic race become an enemy of Ives? If he completely controlled the dark creatures, how could some ruler of pride kill him? The dragon screamed. 
Caroline asked him not to be angry. There were rumors that the Holy See had sent the sacred dragon Ives to battle with the demon king Lucifer III, but that dragon never returned, which made Isram very angry, because it was his friend. But he hit the ground so hard with his paws that Caroline had to use magic to stay put. The dragon asked to forget her after he quickly dealt with her enemy, then he would go and find out for himself. All this was just the demon king, he wanted to see what he was capable of here. Then Caroline said that the enemies were almost here and now they can only wait for their appearance. The guys were driving in their carts to a city called Su Jeji, near which the mountain looked even bigger. A girl ran up to them and asking if it was Miss Alice Claudia and Mr. Merlin Lucifer. The guys were surprised that the girl knew them and introduced herself as Simon Ann. The girl said that she called them to help defeat the dragon. Caroline's shadow was nearby and now everything was under her control. The guys stopped the cart and the girl sat down with them. Then Miss Alice asked Miss Anne if the girl could tell her about what had happened, and shyly said that it had all happened a very long time ago. They had summer, but suddenly it snowed. A snowstorm mercilessly got them and it became insanely cold in the village. Then a ferocious dragon descended from heaven and made an ice mountain. Many villagers died, and the dragon forced them to bring him girls as a gift to eat, otherwise he would have destroyed their village. Because of the threats of this dragon, several of her sisters and friends were given to him. But since everything was not enough for this dragon, he had to eat and tomorrow. Miss Alice asked the girl not to worry, because they will definitely save everyone. The girl said that she had sent the task without hope of help and did not expect that they would actually come to her. But then Merlin asked why the girl had indicated them. Then she replied that she had seen something about them in the newspaper. Allison blog of the heroine who saved the town. Alice was already thinking that now she was famous, soon the whole world would know her name. Then Merlin joked with her that the fox was the savior, because in fact it was him. Alice told Merlin that it wasn't really her fault that no one believed her story. When they reached Anne's house, they saw that all the residents were pounding on the mountain to break it. Then the girl called her father and asked him why he was here, because it was very cold outside. But her father noted that he, as the head of the village, had to lead everyone if the dragon would not let them go. What did they have to do with all that ice? Merlin looked at the man asking if he was the head of the village and then seeing the two adventurers, the father stared at them intently, and the girl introduced them as the people she was calling for help. Alice turned to the elder and said that they did not come here at Anne's request to help them. The elder did not believe in it. Everything was useless and asked them to return, because they would not be able to cope with the dragon. It was not an easy monster and Merlin then asked to tell him what kind of dragon it was. The girl's father at first thought it was an ordinary monster. Then the elder found out that it was one of the six sacred dragons. Alice was surprised, so there was actually a sacred dragon here. But what did he want to do with this village? Did he just like it? Merlin was beside himself with happiness if the dragon came here by himself, then he would finish him off. Showing the mountain behind him, the elder reported that this mountain was made by a dragon and asked if the guys really didn't understand how strong this dragon was yet. The elder advised them to return. He had already reported everything, so he was waiting for help to arrive. Alice, looking sadly into the snow, thought to herself about the head of the village who was thinking optimistically. He really thought that these knights would come to the aid of such a small village, and others did not even want to help them. Then people came and said that sooner or later they would not freeze to death, saying also that this ice was very difficult to break. Then the elder explained that they could only wait tomorrow to negotiate with the dragon when they would give another girl, and hope that he would agree to unfreeze this one the mountain. And, hiding behind Alice, did not believe her father's words. Alice went berserk, asking the elder why he had to give his loved ones did he have no compassion left. Then the man replied that they had no choice. They just hoped that the families would agree to give their daughters to the dragon because they did not have the opportunity to fight with him. Alice was surprised by what the elder was saying. Merlin thought to himself that it was Alice who was at her own again, this little defender of justice. The hero Alice Claudia who did not understand that people were just trying to survive and he began to hope that other people were not as stupid as the girl. Sighing heavily, Alice said that it was just just a small ice mountain and she would destroy it. Then all the residents were surprised together with the elder if the girl could destroy the ice mountain, and Alice decided to try, taking her sword and stepping to the ice mountain that was in front of her. Alice began her attack on the icy mountain and took her sword and went on the attack. After her attempts and the strength she put into her entire blow, she realized that she had done almost no damage to this mountain, there was only one small crack in it. In horror, people looked at Alice and asked how she would fight Isram if she couldn't even break the mountain and thought that maybe if they gave Isram all the girls, he would leave them alone. 
Then Alice asked the elder not to give up. The same one asked her if they did not give up. What else could they do? This question took her by surprise and pointing her finger at Merlin. The girl said that it was he who would be able to defeat the dragon, because the young man had no problems with this. Taking Merlin by the scarf in which she gave him, the girl asked him not to forget that it was their responsibility with him. Merlin, looking away from her, said that he knew this and that it was all very troublesome for him. Approaching the mountain, he decided to examine it and touched it, fought and hit the mountain with his fist. Then at the same moment the mountain moved, but the young man realized that this ice was somehow hard. Alice also asked him not to fool around, because now they were in a terrible situation. At that moment, seeing that Merlin's hand broke the ice, all the people were surprised and the elder, looking at the top, saw how the mountain was collapsing behind Merlin and then Merlin asked who was fooling around here. After that, the sun finally came out and the snow stopped falling. All the villagers were insanely happy, and Alice was surprised. Then Merlin, flicking her on the forehead, told her to continue to train hard. Mount Ben Nevis that was surrounded by a blizzard and ice there was a dragon sitting in it, who heard that at last the opponent of Carolina had come, because he felt that someone really broke his ice. It was very interesting for the dragon, and he soared up, leaving behind only a whirlwind of ice and snow. Su Jeji Village Hot Springs Alice sank into the water and thought about how nice it was to sit comfortably in the hot springs. Merlin was also sitting in the water and thought that it was just a small village, so he would never have thought that there were such good hot springs here. Alice answered him that he advised this place and that it was very nice here. Then she realized that Merlin was sitting next to her and asked what what he was doing here was lifting a huge stone over his head. Merlin asked what she was doing, because he came here first, then the girl asked him not to look at her. They began to swear again and then calmed down, sat down on opposite sides of the same stone. Alice sat down in the water and thought that if Merlin had not broken the mountain, the residents would not have trusted them. They were both adventurers, and she was obviously above Merlin in rank, but it feels like it was Merlin who dragged her along and at that moment she decided to turn to the young man. Merlin asked what the girl wanted to know and then Alice asked how she could increase her strength. Merlin, bending his fingers, began to list that it could be herbal medicines, herbal dan pills, medicinal potions and pills and gin and so on. When she heard about herbal pills and herbal medicines, she asked Merlin if herbal medicines were not harmful to him. Then she stopped and thought that if some ingredients were mixed in there. The young man said that if Alice could get the hereditary dragon crystal, then the outcome would be completely different and she would receive both the flesh and the magic power of the dragon clan. Alice asked Merlin if this crystal was so powerful, but the young man said that, unfortunately, the chances of finding it were less than the chance of his winning the bets. Alice realized that they had no hope. They were sitting in the springs, and their things were scattered everywhere. Some were lying in a suitcase and Caroline rummaged through them realizing that she could not find this key here, but instead of the key there were only a lot of chest pads. She heard conversations about the key. Someone asked how the study of this mysterious key took place at the same time. The girl said that everything would be fine, so she had to trust her friend, and Merlin said that he really wanted to discover secret treasures. Becoming rich would be very cool, then the girl asked Merlin to stop dreaming at least once. Caroline stood and eavesdropped on their conversation. Then she realized that the guys had given someone the key and told about it. Apparently her plans were changing. This made the girl very angry. Night came, and the elder said that there was nothing important. He just wanted to talk to Mr. Merlin about Ice Room. The elder wondered if the young man was confident that he could handle this dragon. The men were sitting by the fireplace drinking a glass of beer. Merlin explained to the elder that he would be able to deal with this dragon ice room and asked why they doubted his strength. Could anyone besides him be able to help this poor village? The elder no matter how much he wanted to offend the young man, because if he was sure of something, then he knew that he could do it. The old man could only tell about the unusual things that happened in the village. Merlin was very interested in this and he asked what kind of unusual things the elder was talking about. Then the elder explained that before Isram's attack on the village, their priest had told him that there was a dark aura around Anne, as if she was possessed by a demon. Merlin thought that maybe the demonic race was behind the case with the Holy See. Then the young man asked if his daughter had ever been in contact with or bothered by the demon race, to which the elder replied that it was impossible there were no ties between their village and the demons. The whole point was that the next day, the priest was killed, the residents found him in a well behind the church, the elder said and shortly after that, the dragon suddenly attacked their village. Marlin said that, judging by these cases, the father doubted his daughter, but Merlin thought that she was clean. 
Initially, everyone agreed to invite adventurers who could help in the village, but Anne insisted on the two of them. Then Merlin asked if Anne had read the newspapers, because the young man thought to himself that even if Alice was popular, a remote village in the mountains could not have heard of her. The elder was very surprised, because Anne didn't even go to school, how could she read newspapers? Then Merlin remembered that the girl had lied, but why would she lie about it? Then the house began to shake, and the elder saw ice on the ceiling, which meant that the dragon was already here. Icerim flew to the village and destroying the house where Alice was, asked, looking at Alice, if the girl knew where a man named Merlin was now. Alice, looking at the dragon in horror, thought that she could not move. Icerim, looking at the girl, asked if she was really so scared that she swallowed her tongue, it seemed insignificant to him. Alice sat there, just opening her mouth and thinking to herself that she could not die here. She wanted to live and she had a lot to do, because she had never even met anyone yet. Then calling Merlin unknowingly with tears. Then Merlin came to the rescue, who began to fight with the dragon, standing up for Alice. He asked her if she was really scared, because it was so embarrassing. Alice shyly looked at Merlin, who turned in front of her at her first call. Merlin was standing next to Alice asking if she was really scared Alice was looking at him thinking that just now Merlin was so handsome. Then the dragon began to attack them, using all its magical power, but this did not frighten Merlin, and he calmly reflected his breath with flames. Merlin was saying that if heaven nor hell does not provide a path for survival, then it should pave this path itself and saying that they should have enjoyed the battle Merlin jumped towards the dragon. Alice, surprised, was sitting in a ruined house and decided to help Merlin somehow. At that moment, all the villagers began to run away. Seeing the dragon, one of the girls fell with her child and thought that it was their end, because the ice blocks were coming right at her. But then Alice appeared and came to the girl's aid, cutting the ice over her and asking the villagers to get out of there. Everyone was very grateful to Alice, and the girl fought to Merlin, to whom she left the battle with the dragon because now it was important for her to help the residents of the village safely get out of this village while the young man was fighting. Then someone called Alice's sister. It was Anne, who said that she was very scared because she did not think that this dragon would try to eat her. The elder, running out of the house, said that it was very dangerous there and asked the girl to return to her father. Miss Alice also asked the girl to return to her father. Then the girl asked her sister to save her, and in her hand, while she was hugging Alice, her Anne had a knife. Feeling the knife, Alice pushed the girl and standing next to the elder asked the head not to go there. Then he wondered what the stranger had done to his daughter. Alice explained that it was not Anne. Alice thought to herself that if it wasn't for Merlin's training, she wouldn't have dodged. The girl decided to ask who was in front of her. The girl's face cracked and then Caroline would appear in front of them, who said that she was very bored because she wanted to play longer. The elder and Alice saw in front of them not a girl but a completely different woman. The elder began to be indignant and asked the woman where she had put his daughter, and who was in front of him then Caroline asked if the elder really wanted to find out the truth, because now his daughter was in the dragon's stomach. The elder was broken, because it was his daughter, and he was in grief, not believing what the girl was saying. Alice also did not understand how this could be, then the stranger said that she was very sorry and she forgot to introduce herself. Then she told me that she was one of the four heroes of the former kingdom, whose name was Carolina. Alice remembered what Claude had told her, it was a thief tamer of dragons and the girl asked what she needed from them. Did she really come to avenge Bernard? Caroline was surprised that Alice was able to figure out who she was and then she rushed to her side to fight with her. Caroline told Alice that she was not here for revenge, she needed to return the key that they stole from her. Alice pretended that she did not understand what key she was talking about trying to restrain the onslaught of Caroline's blade. Alice said that she did not understand anything from her words. Seeing Alice's eyes, Caroline asked if she was really trying to fool her. She knew that she had a key, and therefore intended to set a trap. Alice realized that she and Merlin had fallen into a trap and asked if it was really Caroline who killed and maimed countless people. Just because of this, how could she even call herself after such a hero? Caroline said that his majesty didn't even need to know about these victims. The village was in a house, someone was running away, someone was crushed by beans, and someone, like an elder, was sitting and crying because his daughter died in vain. Then Alice could not forgive this girl, and they clashed in battle. Alice will never let her diabolical plans come true. Caroline asked if Alice was too presumptuous and tried to attack her. Alice was also not easy, she tried to attack his answer of a stranger. But Caroline was very strong and attacked Alice, that she flew into the house and hit with such force that it was already very difficult for her to get up. 
Caroline looked at Alice and realized that she had underestimated the sweet girl. She didn't think that a small knight could harm her. Caroline's face was cut and smoke was coming out of it. Then she went up to Alice and grabbed her by the throat and said that since she didn't have the key, it means her hubby had it. Then Alice hardly said that Merlin was not her husband. But Caroline didn't care, she wouldn't believe her words and asked Zoe to come out. A black hole appeared behind the girls and Zoe appeared out of it. After coming out of the black hole, Zoe asked why Caroline called him. Then she said that the girl did not have a key and asked to follow her until she checked the situation with Isram. The village was almost broken under the onslaught of the battles of Merlin and Isram. Merlin, fighting with the dragon, talked about how slow he was here, trying to tease him. The dragon also told him that it was Merlin who was aimlessly running around here like a mosquito, and went to attack the young man. But Merlin only defended himself from his blow. The dragon said that soon people would pay for all the terrible deeds, because he was one of the six sacred dragons, the ice holy dragon. Getting up, Merlin asked what was the big deal here, that he was a dragon, because as a pet, the same one was now looking after his house only. These words enraged the dragon, and he went to attack Merlin again, saying that Ives would never obey a man. Then Merlin, again dodging his attacks, attacked the dragon, asking if Ives could repair to the Demon King, the ruler of pride. So the creature that Caroline was talking about was the Demon King, it was impossible to say Isram. But Merlin, dodging only his blows, asked what was wrong if it was true, again attacking Merlin with his fire. He dodged him and said that magic does not work on him. There was a fierce battle going on between them. Only the dragon was attacking Merlin all the time and Merlin was constantly being driven away from him without using any force. Then the dragon flew into the air and Merlin, seeing this, was delighted with his attack. Then he directed fire at him. Merlin dodged and thought that if it wasn't for the curse, he wouldn't have to behave like this. Isram, seeing that Merlin had dodged his attack again, was very surprised, because the young man was the first to remain unharmed after his continuous attacks. Merlin replied that everything was quite fun, because he not only came to the right place, but also the battle was normal. Merlin asked him to attack otherwise he would be upset if he was weaker than the pet who was looking after his house asking the dragon to approach him. Isram started attacking Merlin by creating a whirlwind out of the air. Then Merlin joked whether the dragon fancied himself a fan, but he answered him that it was not all an attack. Then the dragon tried to bite Merlin. The same one joked again that the dragon tried to bite him like some kind of dog and hitting Isram in the face ordered him to sit down. Adjusting his gloves, Merlin asked if it was all, and there was not a single scratch on the guy, which annoyed the dragon very much, because he was already injured. Rising into the air, the dragon said that the young man was resistant to magic, but there must be some limit to it, and having gathered all his power he wanted to attack Merlin. He was only surprised, as surprised when a friend gathers all his power for a fake attack. The dragon said that now everything except him would turn into a blanket of ice and snow, including Merlin himself, and launched an avalanche of cold snow and ice directly at the young man. Caroline saw their battles from afar and realized that it was an ice explosion that Isram was trying to make. When the last time it was used, most of the sea was frozen, and the creature that forced them to instrument in this way remained a secret. Being high in the air, Isram used his weapon, namely an ice explosion that turned all the houses around into ice, as well as people and everything else. At that moment, Luja was cleaning the floor in the guild house in Rexham and then she saw that it was snowing. The girl wondered if Alice and everyone else were safe. Then a black hole appeared and Caroline came out of it, who hid in it to protect herself from an icy explosion. The girl shouted that even if Merlin was part of the Holy Sea, he could not escape death from such an attack and she would like to see how smug this guy would be now. The young man stood completely engulfed by the ice like a statue. The dragon was happy with his attack, because now the young men could not escape from him anywhere, and no one had ever avoided his icy explosion. Caroline, looking at this, said that if she hadn't left in time, she could have been dead. Then the ice sheet began to crumble and sneezing Merlin of the table stood in front of the dragon, insanely shocking both him and Caroline, who was watching the battle. Merlin again in his repertoire said that, however, the dragon had a powerful fan. The dragon could not believe how such a thing was possible, why the young man was still standing, because his icy explosion froze not only the body, but also the soul, even the demon king could not avoid it. The young man thought that if this was the case, then he was afraid for the villagers and even for Alice, because everything around could turn into one solid ice. But then Merlin said that he was just an adventurer who wanted to make money. The dragon thought that the young man was still trying to fool him and started attacking again. But Merlin said that the dragon attacked the wrong one by pulling out his sword and cutting everything in its path. 
the dragon flew away from the attack of the ball away, because he realized that the young man was strong. However, this little knife was useless if the young man missed, but Merlin, as everyone knows, never missed. At that moment, Isram was cut into small pieces and his head was asking why he was turned over. Then, leaving the battlefield, Merlin said that it was just a small knife and asked him to forget about it. Behind him pieces from the dragon's body fell directly to the ground. The young man rejoiced at the feeling, how long he had not experienced such a feeling. But then he felt the dark energy that emanated from Caroline. The girl was standing behind the young man on the head of Isram and he asked if this was the old lady who followed him here. Then Caroline got angry and took out her knife, saying that she would make sure that the young man became ill by plunging the knife into the corpse of Ephraim. The young man understood what she wanted to do. After cutting Isram and grinning, Caroline held a huge crystal in her hands, saying that he was finally hers. Merlin, looking at this, realized that it was an ancestral crystal, thinking that Alice's mother by chance was not the goddess of luck. Then he saw that Caroline started pulling the crystal into her mouth and asked if she really wanted to eat it right now and the girl swallowed the crystal. She immediately changed and turned into an ice queen who no longer looked like a human. After feeling the power, the transformed Caroline realized that this was how dragon power felt and it was unimaginable to feel such power. Her hair turned white and ice shards appeared on her body. The skin also turned whitish and Caroline herself got two wings and horns. Caroline talked about her powers, she could now not only see a panoramic view of the landscape for a thousand kilometers, but also hear the enemies breathing and blood flow perfectly, this must have been the true strength of the dragon. Experiencing this invigorating feeling, the girl thought that she had a feeling, that she was reborn, she was no longer undead and became a living being again. Merlin, watching this, thought that the girl was a little out of her mind. Then she asked what Merlin had said and wanted to take revenge on him and started attacking the young man. He dodged and then saw the huge destruction after her attack. At the same time, Caroline said that with the inheritance of the dragon crystal, and her powers had gone beyond the saint rank, so she had nothing to fear anymore. Merlin, looking at the girl, realized that she was one of those who had her head blown off when she received superpowers. Caroline, looking at him, told the young man that she could crush him right here and now, but she also needed that key. And then she told him that she had good news for the young man, because they were holding his wife hostage. If he wanted the girl to survive, he had to give up the stolen key, and if he was stupid enough to come empty-handed, then his wife would be killed. Merlin was surprised by Caroline's words and said that unfortunately he had bad news for the girl. Why did she think that Merlin would give the key for Alice? He believed that Caroline had placed too high a value on her place in his heart. Caroline began to attack the young man with her black snakes, saying that he was stubborn and she was beginning to like him. Since his wife didn't matter to him, then Caroline decided to kill the young man, pointing the sword at Caroline's neck and holding her at gunpoint. The young man asked if the key was no longer needed and asked why she didn't give the crystal first. Then she flew away and told Merlin that he could not even dream of this crystal, because now she was even stronger and ice from. Speaking about Merlin that he was very pathetic, the girl believed that he was no match for her and started attacking him again. Merlin, on the other hand, easily dodged all her attacks and believed that it was absolutely not scary for him. Caroline thought that even before his death, the young man was very annoying and she told him that she would never spare him by attacking him again with her black magic. Then Merlin realized that he was in absolute darkness. He was wondering if his senses of the outside world were sealed. Then Caroline explained to him that it was a unique skill, a death-bearing array of darkness, and no one could escape from here. Merlin, trying to wield his ball, realized that he might have also lost consciousness and again trying to attack. He thought that he could play with Caroline a little more. The girl attacked him again and thought that Merlin was not so bad, but here he was completely under her control, so she wanted to see how long the young man could hold out by repelling her attacks. Attacking him again, Caroline thought that he dared to call her an old woman, and now she would personally send him to hell. But Merlin continued to count and after counting to five, he took his sword out of its sheath and attacked Caroline so that he could defeat her. In this deadly array, Caroline could not only hide in the dark, but also control the perception of the enemy's time. Time was slowed down by five seconds. Did the young man understand correctly? Falling apart, Caroline thought only that the dragon's power was with her, that this could not be. Having destroyed the darkness, the young man thought about what was good about the dragon's power if the girl could not control it and had to go to hell and think about her mistakes. In his hand, the young man held a huge diamond. I think Alice is really the daughter of the gods of failure. Apparently, at the moment when Alice reaches the holy rank, it was not so far now, when she becomes a high-ranking adventurer. 
then getting an S rank task will be a matter of time. Merlin thought to himself, then the dragon's spell broke and all people were freed from the ice captivity, not understanding how they could still be alive. Merlin, watching all this, thought that, as expected, after losing the power of the ice dragon, everyone around was unfrozen. Holding Alice in his arms, Zoe thought about how stupid Caroline was, showed her strength shortly before her death, and it was a loss. Zoe was watching this guy because he had a desire to fight him, of course. He was talking about Merlin, whom he was looking at, but he didn't know if he could defeat him, even if he and his brother merged together. I had to focus on the task, and to begin with, bring in this girl. Here, a black hole had already opened next to Zoe, into which he was about to leave, holding Alice hostage, but then someone took him by the hand and looking back, he saw the young man he had been looking at quite recently. It was Merlin, who was asking where Zoe had lathered up with his wife. Zoe looked at the young man next to him and asked himself when this guy managed to catch up with him. Then Merlin realized that he was mistaken when he said that the girl was his wife and began to justify that she was not his wife, but was just a roommate. Since someone thinks that they are married he accidentally broke out this phrase. Then Merlin had only Zoe's hand in his hand and he disappeared into the hole that was next to him. Because for a teenage corpse he ran away very quickly. His majesty was beside himself with anger because it was impossible that Isram was stabbed really. In these few hundred years, such a genius was born who could defeat him and he called everyone useless garbage. Zoe was sitting on his knees in front of him reporting on the situation. His majesty said that as time went on, the situation became more urgent, and they no longer had time. Then Zoe asked his majesty not to worry about anything. Caroline's death was not in vain. She left them a clue to the location of the key. Now they had to wait for the husband of this adventurer to come and exchange the key for his wife. At that moment, Alice was sleeping in a dungeon and after a long period of unconsciousness, she woke up, but did not understand where she was. Remembering what happened to her, she realized that she was taken hostage and that it was terrible. She understood that she could not just sit here and wait, she had to find a way to escape from here. But then she saw some kind of bracelet on her hand and realized that she had no strength left and she could not use your power. This magic bracelet limited her abilities. Sitting in the cage, Alice thought about what she had to do. The only person besides Merlin who could save her was the master, but she did not know where the girl was. Alice wondered if Merlin would come to rescue her, but she didn't think about it. Probably he had already returned home and occupied her bed, so Merlin appeared to her in her head. If this key was from a priceless treasure, then Merlin would return to his rich life, and if the key turned out to be bullshit, then he returned and saved her. Alice, again turning to God, asked him not to give Merlin the opportunity to start all over again, but let him continue to live in poverty. Returning to the village, Merlin saw that there was a battle here. Alice was also here. Then he met an elder who asked Merlin where the ice dragon was, if he would ever return. Merlin replied to the elder that they could sleep peacefully, because he killed this lizard and for the same reason all the snow and ice disappeared. Everyone was shocked by Merlin's statement when, listening to their exclamations, he saw Alice's ball. Addressing the elder, Merlin said that there was one thing he needed to finish, but the elder, saying that the young man was their savior, would do everything in their power for him, asking what he needed to help him. Merlin asked me to lend him the fastest horse in their village. At the same time, Alice was still sitting in the dungeon and asked the Lord to hear her prayers. Then someone made a sound, and Alice asked who else was in this dungeon then. She saw a poor elf, whom she frightened. The elf was also very scared when she saw the girl. Alice looked at the girl in front of her and did not understand why they had captured the elf. Elf sat in the corner and talked about how she would be obedient and would do anything she was told, just so that her wrist would no longer be cut. Alice replied that the girl was not afraid of her because she had the same bracelet as the elf because she was also caught. The elf asked if the girl was also captured in order to take away her blood. Alice did not understand what the girl was talking about and why they had to take away her blood. Then the elf reported that a woman with purple hair told her that her blood was able to prolong the lives of demons. Alice remembered that Bernard had said that their leader was using the blood of an elf to prolong life. She did not think that they were willing to do anything to fulfill their goal of reviving the kingdom. The elf said that her father must be worried, because she had already been here for more than six months. When she was brought here, there were dried up bodies of elves in this cage and asked if the same thing would happen to her. The girl began to cry, then Alice tried to calm her down, asking not to worry, because she was also taken hostage and her friend would definitely come to rescue her. 
so they could get out together. The elf sadly asked Alice who would come to rescue them. Alice remembered all the cases that connected them with Merlin and, of course, said that her husband was on paper who would come to save them. But the words were not studied very convincingly and the elf felt it. At this time, in the library of Rexham, two girls were sitting in the library, one of whom was studying the key, and the other was looking at her. Looking at the key, the girl got into another world, a world that was made of fire. In this world, the being said that they would devote their whole soul to the almighty Satan, become henchmen of hell, they would let their souls burn in eternal fire forever. After these words, the girl flew out of this place. The second one asked her what happened. There was a key in front of the girls that was created in hell. The blonde approached her friend and asked what happened. Then the girl replied that this key was created in hell. The girl did not understand whether heaven and hell really existed and whether it was a myth or the truth. Then Alice's friend replied that she thought it was more than a myth. Alchemy was popular now, but it had to be the reason why theology was passed down from generation to generation for hundreds of years. Then the blonde was interested in the key that Alice gave them was it not from an ordinary treasure, and her friend replied that this key was not from him. In the old books it was written that the former emperor used the power of hell when he united the kingdom. This was probably the key to entering hell. The blonde thought that it was bad telling her friend that they were creating unnecessary problems for themselves. Then someone interrupted their conversations. There was a knock on the door, Merlin appeared on the threshold in a raincoat. He knew that Alice's friend Miss Da Vinci was here and asked how the case was progressing with the key that he gave them. He scared the girls very much. Miss Da Vinci reported that this key was not easy. This key could open the gates between Earth and Hell, and if it fell into the hands of villains, the consequences would be catastrophic and the country would come into complete chaos. The young man realized that the key was not from the treasure after all, he was offended for this. Then Miss Da Vinci reported that this case was far from the capabilities of an adventurer. She offered to give it to the royal family or the Holy See, but then Merlin said that this key would not be given to anyone. He will not hide. Alice was taken hostage by people from the former kingdom. This key is needed to free her from their time was running out while they were chatting here, and he asked to give him this key. The girls were surprised by what Merlin said. Then, thinking about it, Miss Da Vinci asked if they would not give this key to him. What would she hear in the guild that the Knights of the Red Bud were going to act and thought that Alice would soon be saved? Merlin said that he didn't think so, because they didn't care about Alice. He was sure that he could handle it himself. Merlin thought to himself that he didn't even know how strong the Knights of the Red Bud were. Miss Da Vinci agreed and asked them to return alive, thinking to herself that apparently Merlin's true love began to manifest itself and he thanked for the help and went with the key to save Alice, thinking only that if Alice was not there, he would have to pay the debt himself, and that was terrible. Then the blonde asked how the young man, being an ordinary adventurer, would be able to do this, whether he was sure that it was possible to trust these people, that if they did not return Alice when he gave them the key, Merlin replied that he would send them personally to hell. Miss Da Vinci asked Sir Merlin and said that she would not stop him, but I would like to warn him not to build an image of a romantic hero. The young man was already standing in the doorway saying that he was not a hero, and romance did not suit him. He just wanted to bring Alice home so that she would do housework. It was her turn next week, after all, and he would not agree with such a reason for skipping her work. At the same time in another place, there were so many different races in the world, and why should they fight when they could unite? The kingdom uses a parliamentary system. Every time there was a leader, they use voting to solve problems so that the main problem is parity, explained Alice Elf. Alice heard that it was difficult for people to become part of their kingdom, and then the elf replied that the lands of their united kingdom had dense forests, towering mountains, wide seas, which make it suitable for a habitat for any race. The girls became friends and sat talking in the cell because they had nothing else to do. Elf said that she would give Alice a tour when they returned home. Because they had so many beautiful places, it would be great so that they could get out of here and fulfill their dream. Then Alice asked the girl not to worry, because they will definitely get out of here and asked her to believe the elf. Smiling at the girl, they continued to talk. Elf reminded Alice about her little donkey, saying that he was a cutie and Alice remembered that they were talking about man-man. At that moment the door to the cell opened. Joey looked at them, saying that he saw how the girls had fun together and did they cuddle up to each other to warm up? Could he also join them? Because he was cold too. And if they wouldn't take him there, then he asked to forget about it and holding out a bowl to the elf girl he asked her to give him her blood again. Elf looked at Joey and asked him not to hurt her and take pity on her, but he did not understand why he needed to take pity on the girl. He came closer and closer to her and smiling said that if she was still alive, then she should have been grateful. 
Alice, defending the elf, asked if Joey thought about what he was already doing too much, to which he replied that it was too much when he was scolded and blamed for cutting off the finger of a neighbor's child. But it was not his fault. His brother said that only the strong can survive, and he was right. Joey shouted that he was just listening to his brother, why wasn't he forgiven, because it wasn't his fault. And then he started asking questions, the girl looked at him carefully. Then looking at them with his gaze through the mask, he asked did Alice really think that it was also his fault, and he hit the girl heading to the Alpha. Alice fell and Joey continued to apologize and said that he had already apologized. Why the girls could not forgive him and then he continued to beat Miss Alice Elf was already worried about her and Joey saw it saying that since she was worried about her, then why she was not worried about him. He reminded the girl again that if he didn't bring her blood, then his brother would scold and heading to the elf. Alice grabbed Joey by the leg saying that he wouldn't dare hurt her. Then he began to beat Alice again, asking why everyone was going against him, if the girl was naughty. Then she deserved to die, did he not apologize to her? Saying all this, he continued to beat Alice, so she was already very bad, an elf was watching all this. The elf stopped Joey by cutting her wrist, she forgave not to beat Alice anymore and if he needed her blood, then he could take her Alice was lying on the floor. She wanted to become stronger, if only she was like Merlin. These were all her thoughts as she watched Joey heading to the elf to take her blood. Having collected blood, Joey came to his majesty and gave it to him so that he could drink it. But then the bowl with blood fell, his majesty began to cough, then the twins began to ask if everything was all right with him. His majesty has already said that our elven blood could no longer support his body. Will their cause be crowned with success in this case? Zoe said that his majesty didn't have to worry. He had to not give up, because they were one step away from success. And when they got the key, he would become the king of a new era Joey supported his brother. The king was pleased with what he was told, because this pain that he felt was nothing compared to the one that was after the destruction of their kingdom. As soon as they get this last key, the kingdom will be under their control again and the infernal army will destroy all these scoundrels. Then his majesty felt that they had guests and asked Zoe to deal with them. Then the young man said that he would give them a warm welcome together with his brother. The knights arrived, one of them, addressing Sir Sahedin, said that these were the ruins of the palace of the former kingdom. Apparently the rumors about their activity in these places were true. Then weapons flew at them and Sir Sahedin alone reflected it with his ball, saying that perhaps it should have been a surprise attack and it was quite suitable, as for those who could get out of the graves. Zoe and Joey, who were attacking the knights, were looking at him from above the mountain. The knights asked to be allowed to demonstrate the true power of the knights of the red bud Zoe Joey only smiled in response. In the end, all the knights were defeated except for the only one who was still conscious and called for Sir Sahadin. The knight was thinking that even Sir Sahadin and the knights of the red bud could not resist these two monsters. They miscalculated and did not expect that the enemy would be so strong. Joey and Zoe were standing with their swords and discussing the fact that these knights were very weak. Then Zoe said that he thought it was the guy who hurt his brother's left arm. Then Zoe felt that his wound hurt, which meant that this guy had finally come. Merlin rode in his cloak through the mountains, on horseback, to get to Alice as quickly as possible. Merlin, riding his steed, saw Zoe Joey. Then the young man asked if they really came to meet him, it was very nice of them. But today then Zoe will not get off with just one hand. Zoe said that it was natural, because today he would take revenge on Merlin and asked if he had brought the key. Merlin replied that he had brought the key and asked where the girl named Alice was. Zoe, laughing, asked if he really wanted to see his wife and it was no problem. He has two options, the first to kill him, and the second to meet her in hell. Then Merlin corrected Zoe. He told him that Alice was not his wife and whether he wanted to die asked his Merlin. Zoe laughed at what Merlin was saying and saying that he was a strong opponent here, but he couldn't beat them anyway. Went to Merlin and called Joey, his brother, who also went into battle with him and they rushed straight to attack Merlin. Attacking Merlin and his horse, she could not stand it and Zoe thought that he, as he thought, the young man was strong. Jumping off the horse, Merlin said that it was not his horse, how he now had to return it. Zoe, looking at Merlin, saw that the guy was left without a single scratch. At the same time, Merlin, drawing his sword, asked if Zoe was ready for death, but then it was strange to him. He did not observe the second brother. At that moment Merlin felt that the water suddenly flowed up and holding his breath, it seemed strange to him. Then something snatched his sword. After a couple of seconds, Merlin saw that Joey was standing with his sword and shouting to his brother that he had stolen Merlin's weapon. 
Zoe was happy, because they took his sword, so Merlin would not be able to use his fast technique and they had nothing to fear. Merlin remained unarmed and stood waiting while Zoe was heading at him with a sword. He thought that now he could kill the young man with one hand. But this was not Merlin's only strength and attacking Merlin left Zoe without a second hand. Then Joey was very worried about his brother. Merlin said that it wasn't too effective, but for fighting with them, it could be suitable. He was holding Alice's sword in his hand. Then Zoe, calling Merlin names, grabbed him and blindfolded him with his bandage. He thought that maybe he wouldn't be able to kill him, but Joey could, because Joey was standing behind him and put a sword to Merlin. But then Merlin saw through his sword, shocking both Joey and Zoe, because they both didn't expect this the alignment. Freeing himself from Zoe's bandages and Joey's grip, Merlin grabbed Joey's sword to attack these two. Zoe realized that they were in trouble, then Joey rushed to his brother's defense and Merlin defeated him. Zoe asked why his brother had done such a stupid thing, then he apologized, but he hoped that they would be able to stay with him even after death and both brothers crumbled into dust. Only masks remained of both of them. All this was watched by the Knight of the Bud, who survived. He saw how Sir Sahadin was killed in a matter of seconds by these twins. But this young man who was so good with a sword and was able to kill two incredibly strong rank, was he really that mysterious guy the legendary swordsman Elginum? Advancing to his appointed place, Merlin saw that all the Knights of the Red Bud were defeated. Was that really all they were capable of? But then someone called him and it turned out to be one of the knights who survived. The young man did not understand if he really asked him for help and wanted to refuse. Merlin now had to save Alice, because this was the most important thing. Then the knight asked him to wait. Was he really in front of him, the one who fights with all his heart, which beats for justice? Without answering his question, Merlin went after the fox. At this time, the gates of hell were already resonating and it was necessary to get the last key, which must have already been nearby. His Majesty the Prince thought, looking at the gate that was collapsing right in front of him. Alice screamed for the bald man to let her go, because she was in a cage that hung over the magma. When he heard that the girl was addressing him like that, he turned to Alice. The prince said that when her hubby brought the key, he would become immortal and asked if it would be more fun for her to go to hell with her colleague. Then Alice noted that it would never be more fun for her. The elf next to her started crying, but Alice tried to calm her down by saying what would happen to them it's alright. The cage sank all the lower and then the elf began to cry more and more, saying that it was her fault she had to eavesdrop on her father and there was no need to run away and go out without his permission. Alice tried to calm the girl down, saying that everything would be fine, because someone should come and save them. In her heart, Alice was waiting for Merlin to come and save them, but then she felt that he was already here. Going straight to the prince, Merlin asked the old man if he was the boss of those corpses. Then the prince was surprised that the guy was alone and where were Zoe Joey. The girls watched everything from the side right from the cage, and the elf asked if this was really Alice's husband. Alice did not expect that Merlin, this selfish, insensitive blockhead, would personally come to save her. Did he really love her? Alice thought about it for a second, but then shaking her head, she thought that it was still impossible for her and Merlin. Then looking up, Merlin asked if she was still alive and what kind of a problem woman she was. Alice asked what he said and apologized to everyone, saying that he was clearly not her husband. They began to sort things out again, even in such a terrible situation. Alice asked to clarify the whole situation and told Merlin not to consider this salvation an opportunity to earn popularity points for herself, because she would never fall in love with someone like him. Merlin really did not understand what nonsense the girl was talking about and her popularity points were worth a maximum of a couple of gold. He came after her because of a joint debt. If she died he would have to pay the debt himself. How could he let a stupid girl take advantage of this? At the same time, Alice reminded him about the joint debt that it was solely because of his actions. Watching everything from the side, the elf thought that their connection was very strong, since they were quarreling even at such a moment. But then their cage began to fall right into the lava. The prince apologized to them for interrupting Merlin and Alice's little marital conversation. But then Merlin immediately blurted out to him that they were not married. But the prince did not listen to him and told Merlin that he could guarantee the safety of his wife. Then the young man needed to give him the key right now. Merlin, holding the key in his hands, said that it was very important for opening the gates of hell and whether it was true. The prince was surprised that Merlin already knew about this and looked at the young man point blank. Alice also heard that people's souls went to hell and if it really existed, then what would happen if these two worlds merged and she carefully watched from her cage what the prince and Merlin were doing from below. Then Merlin realized that it was more than a rumor and asked if the prince had communicated with the messengers of hell before. 
His Majesty was very surprised how the young man could know so much about it, since he recognized the being of the messengers of hell. He also had to deal with him. The young man said that he was very sorry that he refused their offer. However, if he has the opportunity to be the demon king, then why would he be so humiliated by submitting to hell? The prince was stunned to see that there was a demon king in front of him. Then why did this king interfere in the affairs of people? Merlin also said that it was difficult for him to explain why everything turned out this way. At that moment he was looking at Alice, noticing that Alice was also surprised. Then Merlin, looking at his majesty the prince, asked if he was really one of the fanatics of Satan. Then the angry prince told Merlin that the young man did not know anything, because the magnanimous Satan promised him immortality, and eternal youth, supreme power and an invincible army, saying that the prince would rule the contingent. But then the prince thought that not only the contingents, but all the worlds. Alice, sitting in her cage, shouted to Merlin that this key should never have fallen into these unreliable hands. But then Merlin suddenly gave the key to the prince, who was also surprised himself, surprised Alice and everyone. Merlin asked that everything be according to his will. If he wanted to do so, then let the prince express his determination to dance to the will of Satan. Alice was surprised that the young man so easily gave this key, and asked Merlin why he did it. Because it put a lot of innocent people in danger. An elf was sitting next to Alice, talking about whether the girl was sure that her husband was here to save them because it seemed to her that it was even more dangerous now than it was before and whether they could get out of here alive. All these questions were very interesting to the elf. Alice had already told the girl not to worry, even though Merlin looked like a weakling, but in fact he was quite strong, especially that fast attack of his and the elf asked what kind of fast attack. Isn't this a low-level skill that doesn't even need magic? The cage was swinging from side to side and Alice asked surely pull herself together. The young man, looking at the prince, asked, because now that he had the key, why wouldn't he let them go? But the prince snapped his fingers and said that he would never be able to let them go and they would never leave. And then the girls began to sink right into the burning lava, not understanding what was happening. Merlin saved them and when he saw that Alice was getting out of the cage with the elf, the young man joked about her that she had not been in this cage for so long, but had already managed to make a new girlfriend. Alice was angry at Merlin and asked why he gave him the key, because now they will be killed because of him. The prince threw the key up and said that giving the key to him was the grossest mistake and Merlin's arrogance would cause his own collapse. The key was heading straight to the gates of hell and Alice asked him to stop. Merlin is already all just amused by it. The prince was thinking that the invincible infernal army had to come out and unleash its fury and conquer this whole world in order to build a new kingdom for his lord Satan. Then the gate opened and a wild monster began to growl out of it. The prince thought that he had won and a new kingdom would soon be born. Even the Holy See would not be able to stop him, because soon the whole world would obey him. But then all the walls began to collapse, because the giant monster was trying to get free. Alice held Miss Elf through the wreckage and wondered where such a terrible smell came from. The elf asked Alice to hold her breath because it was dangerous. Turning to Merlin, he turned to Alice and threw her sword and said that the girl should cook because soon the guests will show up. Then a fiery army appeared, accompanied by this terrible monster they were coming out of. Merlin thought it looked pretty good, and the prince shouted that an ignorant fool was waiting for death, turning to Merlin. Then someone came out of the crowd and asked if it was Lucifer III, the ruthless Lucifer III, who was finally found by a girl who had horns on her head and had a whip in her hands. Alice looked at her and asked if she knew Merlin. Merlin was silent and just looked at the girl then she, Angry said that he was a cheater. Alice looked at Merlin in bewilderment. The guy himself also did not understand what was wanted from him. Alice thought that the girl had lost her mind as soon as she saw Merlin. She was wondering what kind of relationship she had with him. Merlin just quietly looked at her and tried to think of something, and then asked the girl who she was, I wonder if they even knew each other. Alice and the elf were surprised that the girl was a stranger to him. Then she asked all the guys to step back. By the guys she meant her army of fire soldiers, because she would deal with Merlin personally, and she rushed to attack him. The girl told Merlin that she would make him pay for what the young man had done. At that moment, the girl cut the stone, and Merlin managed to dodge. Merlin, evading, so asked if she was sure that she had not confused him with someone. But the girl screamed that it was definitely him, because it was him she was looking for. Then the prince started calling her, calling the girl the head of the hellish army of demons, saying that he had collected all the keys and summoned her, and the contract said that she had to listen to his orders. At this moment, the girl, addressing the prince as a brat, asked how he dared to poke her with his finger and a fire spot formed in the place where he had only recently stood. 
the prince managed to jump back and asked how she could have tried to kill him. The rule said that she should not have harmed the summoner. The girl asked not to get in the way and wait until she kills Merlin, then they will talk. The prince, hiding behind the stones, talked about her doing what she sees fit, while he quietly sits here and asks the girl not to hurry. Merlin looked at the girl and thought that there was something wrong here, because she was not the infernal follower who was called last time. Then the girl talked about the fact that Trist was there and how he could hurt such a cutie. Alice and the elf were sitting watching from the sidelines. Alice was thinking about what a libertine Merlin was, and then looking at his face, she did not understand at all what was going on in his head. Directing a fireball at Merlin, the girl screamed that it would be a lesson to him for what he did to Trist and directed streams of fire at him. But Merlin, dodging, asked if it was her whole attack. In place of the fire, fiery flowers grew, which began to explode. 